City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 11th of August, 2020. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed, or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, belief and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air? Thank you, members. Please be seated. <laughs> members, that takes us to item five. There are no apologies or leave of absence this evening. Um, item six is the confirmation of minutes from the 17th of July and the 28th of July. And I'll look for a mover. Thank you, uh, Councillor Sims, Second Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, any comments, suggestions? If not, back to the mover, Councillor Sims. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. There are no deputations at the time of the agenda um, and there are no petitions. Um, members, we do actually have uh, a long agenda tonight, so a reminder that we have three minutes to speak. When you hear the bell, um, you must finish or um, we can actually ask for a leave of the meeting for an extra two minutes. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Can I propose a reordering of the agenda? I'd like to suggest that we move um, motions on notice uh, to the front of the agenda and then deal with the other items afterwards. Uh, thank you, Councillor Sims. I'll put that to the meeting. I'm quite happy with the order of the agenda as is. Can um, I give an explanation for why? I, you can. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I'm just mindful of the fact that there are um, a number of uh, councillor motions on notice um, around which there's been significant um, public interest. Um, I know Councillor Kira's um, motion has generated um, a lot of interest. Um, there's a range of others as well. Um, and I think it would be a shame if we dealt with those in the early hours of the morning when we've dealt with all other items. Um, so I propose that we reorder the agenda so that they can be considered when the community is still engaged and following the discussion. So, members. So I will do it by a show of hands, those that want to bring motions forward. Can we speak to this? Um, no, it's not a motion. It's a request of the chair and I'm seeking leave of the meeting. So um, rather than debate it, um, I'll just sit by a show of hands, uh, those members that wish the motions to be brought forward, those that are happy to remain the agenda as is. Uh, that is, so we will leave the agenda as is. The majority is to leave the agenda as is. Um, the other thing that I will also request is that um, that we stick to debating the motion before us this evening. Um, I'm going to uh, 
move the following on block. So I will ask you to call out the items that you wish to speak to or that you wish to make a comment or amendment to. So members, as we go, if you want to call out an item, please raise your hand. I will stop after each one. So members, item 9.1, Councillor Martin, uh, 9.2, uh, um, item 10.1, item 10.2. So Councillor Martin, sorry, can I just check, did you put your hand up for 10.1 or 10.2? Um, 10.3. Ten point four. Thank you. We will. Ten point five. Ten point six. Ten point seven. Ten point eight. Councillor Martin. Ten point nine. Councillor Martin, is your hand up for 10.9 as well? Yes. Thank you, just checking. 10.10, uh, .10, I'd like to draw that one out myself. 10.11, 10.12, Deputy Lord Mayor. 10.11, uh, oh, sorry, 10.11, 10.13, uh, 14 and 16 all have voting. 10.15, Lord Mayor. 10.16, 17, no, we have to do that one as well, and 10.18. Thank you. So, members, um, if I can. I can look at that. So, let me check. So, Councillor Martin, could I just double check? Did you call 10.5? No. No. So, members, if I could have a mover to move on block items 9.2, 10.3, 10.5, 10.6, 10.7, and 10.11. Thank you, Councillor Abraham, today. Second, thank you, Councillor Canole. Uh, members, if not, we'll go send up to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you, members. Um, that takes us back to the agenda and I have item 9.1. Councillor Martin. Just a couple of quick questions for the administration, Lord Mayor. Um, APLA was invited last Thursday to note the installation of planned irrigation renewal, turf remediation and tree succession planning at Peace Park Town Clark's Walk, including uh, the replacement turf to be installed, as in future to be installed. Now, all of that work was completed before it went to APLA and I'm just wondering if the administration could advise why it's necessary to refer work to APLA and Council after it's completed. I will ask the CEO. Thanks Clinton. Uh, through the Chair, um, um, Councillor thanks for the question. Um, the work that was conducted on the Peace Walk was actually able to be done uh, without consideration of the trees at the site. So a lot of the work was uh, funded through our Capital Works program as it was. Um, it was only the um, item in relation to the tree removal and replacement that was referred to APLA and is now before you. And uh, am I to understand that Council will be asked about the 18 trees that are going to be removed? Thank you. Uh, through the Chair. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I see you. Uh, always on the scoreboard, man. Yeah, thanks, Clinton. Uh, through the chair, yes, that's correct. Thank you. Um, uh, look, Lord Mayor, um, I, um, I'm satisfied with that. I, I just wanted to, uh, to pull this out for one reason, and that it, it is that so, the- uh, Apologies, Councillor Martin, are you uh, moving the recommendation? Yes. Moving to accept, thank you. I'll just look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor um, Mackey. Um, I just wanted to draw the attention of uh, members to this item because it is pretty important. It was a matter of some controversy dating back uh, to about 2013 or 14 initially. 
Um, it is a PAC building um, uh, proposed uh, by uh, Prince Alfred uh, College for their old collegians. Um, and what was presented to Adler uh, on uh, Thursday of last week was not what was agreed um, by Adler in October 2017 and then not agreed by Council in November 2017. Both approved a minimum fit for purpose sports facility with a community space and public toilets of 375 square metres. Those motions are on record. Uh, it is in fact much larger, it's 410 square metres. Um, but that doesn't include the outdoor viewing decks, which are, by my estimate, and I'm, I'm not an architect, but I would have thought at least 50 square metres. So this is a much larger uh, footprint. Um, uh, now, it also didn't comply um, with the decision of Council and APLA from 2017, which asked that the building design concept, when it was presented, would go out to public consultation. What was presented to APLA was a proposal that um, the change of lease and a proposed change to the community land management plan would be consulted, but not the building, even though it was the wish of APLA and Council in 2017, and I'm not aware that they've been rescinded. Now, my purpose in raising uh, this is to alert members to the possibility that this is going to become uh, yet another controversy much as it was previously. But um, I am kind of hoping that the administration has taken on the view of Rappler, um, which was that there should be a review of uh, the site um, and a consideration of all of the issues associated that, uh, with that, with the potential to move it to something that is similar to uh, 2017. Now, I think there is the possibility with such a compromise and some agreement related to uh, licensing, liquor licensing, that um, there might be a happy ending and uh, it would be a great relief uh, to the residents of North Adelaide and let me tell you to this council to not have to go through another one of these um, acrimonious disputes over parkland buildings. It is close to resolution uh, and I ask members to just keep an eye on it because potentially we have a solution at hand. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak at all? Um, members, as you can see, the recommendation was that it be deferred for further investigations. That will come back into APLA and then into Council. Members, any other uh, members wish to speak to this? If not, I'll go to Councillor Martin to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to 10.1. Which is the Historian Precinct Shared Use Zone. Councillor Martin. Happy to move it, Lord Mayor. Look, I just wanted um, uh, to pull this just to thank the administration. Sorry, Councillor Martin, I'll just ask for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham, today. Uh, for providing the information that they did. It is clear that uh, a majority of businesses, 26 out of 16, have been consulted. And I am just delighted to know that this is going to reduce uh, vehicle access and pedestrianise the area, which is a great step forward, uh, because that's what we're about in the city, that is making the city more accessible to all modes of movement, um, including uh, uh, pedestrians, because we do have this inherent car bias in the city. Um, and I do appreciate uh, the administration supplying that uh, uh, illustration of the, um, uh, the mural that goes on the road. It looks sensational. Um, and I'm just wondering whether we can't have those all over the city. Uh, it might bring more people to the city. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak, members? If not, uh, Councillor Martin to sum up. Members to the vote, all those in favour, those against, thank you, that is carried. That takes us to item 10.2, Members South, Ward Streets and Movement Study Community Engagement Update. I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Seconder, Councillor Martin. Councillor, no? I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak? Right. Councillor Knoll. Members? Councillor Martin. Uh, can I move an amendment, Lord Mayor?
Um, I'll dictate it to you. I, I just haven't had time to supply it. It's a bit long, but um, uh, look, I tell you what, I can bring it up to the administration, if that's okay. Members. Oh, that's a very long amendment. Um, are you able to email that? Members, please. Lord Mayor, can I move? Can I move that we defer this to the next meeting, so that we can have time to digest Councillor Martin's clearly 400-word amendment? Yeah. <laughs> no, hang on, Lord Mayor. Me, excuse me, members, please. We are. Um, we've actually started taking the amendment, so we are doing that. Um, <laughs> Yes, I'll have to go over there and get it. Yeah, that's the chart. The administration keep them up to place. Members, thank you. Councillor Martin, uh, we can't get a seconder until it's um, typed up. So, um, so there's. I don't think we can speak to it okay. until actually members know what we're speaking to. Sure. Um, do you have copies of it, perhaps? If we could distribute copies to members, that might help. <laughs> so, Carly's just taken it to do some photocopies. Members. <laughs> members, please, if you, I don't mind, um, if you would like some chit chat, but please, can we not trade insults across yeah, the floor? I agree. I agree. Do you want to do that? Hey. 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 Do you hear that? Do you hear your people saying that to us? Councillor Moran, my people. Yes, your people. My people. Yes. Are you talking about my family? Are you, are you talking about yeah, my father or my mother? Who are my people? Councillor. Moran, I don't belong to okay, a faction. The point is that when Alex said something rude and offensive, which he has about I have been calling members to please stop trading insults across the floor. If we want to actually be informal and chat for the next few minutes, please do and don't throw insults across the floor. It is unbecoming. Um, may I suggest to members that if you have amendments, um, you can send them through to governance ahead of the meeting. It does actually help us in terms of uh, preparing for the meeting. Thank you. 
So members, you have before you the amendment from Councillor Martin. Yes. I will look for a second. Lord, uh, Lord Mayor, I'd suggest this amendment departs too heavily from the original motion, which is merely noting a report. There are substantial, substantial things within this um, uh, which are not even included, not even canvassed, the possibility of in the South Ward streets and movement study. It's not relating at all to the papers. Oh, Lord Mayor, it's a huge I'm, departure. I'm not Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I will uh, actually looking for a seconder. I'll just go to governance. So the report is for noting, um, given the uh, request, and it's not uh, time sensitive, can this be brought back on notice, Councillor Martin, at uh, the next meeting? Um, well, look, Lord Mayor, it's here because this is the presentation to Council of the South Ward uh, Streets and Movement Study, and it was to go away. Um, I foreshadowed this. Um, at committee and invited uh, uh, the council and the deputy lord mayor to work with me on this. I didn't hear from him, uh, and so I've now presented this. Um, so it is not unexpected, and the majority of the report simply asks for the administration to investigate, and moreover, it's, it's totally consistent with everything in the South Ward study. So I, I don't understand. He knew I was going to do it. I invited him to participate. Oh, it's not about yeah. he, Councillor. I'm just asking, given that there is a, yes, the original reports were for noting, whether we want to take this on notice. And I will look to governance, see whether... Okay. So, members, you have it before you. I'm looking for, uh, without wasting any more time, I'm going to look for a seconder. Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin, if you'd like to speak to your Yeah, look, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. And look, let me repeat, I had hoped that Deputy Lord Mayor would speak to me about this because I flagged that I would be moving this. Um, and it is about Southport, which is his ward. Uh, and I know he's been a champion of the Southport movement and traffic study. Um, and I sort of hoped that he would do this, but he didn't. So I'm, I'm now going uh, to propose that we recognise the need of the community as they're identified in this study. Um, it turns out, <laughs> psycho, uh, that is the theme music, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, now, uh, the, the needs in the community in relation to traffic and parking are well defined within this report. Um, what currently uh, works well in traffic and par parking, well, um, the people who believe there are problems or issues surrounding safety and amenities are substantial. They include 
uh, a variety of groups from uh, residents, property owners, visitors, employers and employees. And in fact, if you look at the report, uh, the majority, that is residents, landlords, business owners, either disagree or aren't sure whether it is safe to ride around the area on a bicycle, staff suppliers and uh, uh, clients have suitable access to their businesses, uh, and they're not sure whether it's safe to ride around on a motorcycle or moped, uh, along with issues related to there not being enough trees. Now, the administration has addressed the trees within its uh, recommendation to us, but none of the parking issues. Um, parking was a particularly uh, contentious issue um, with uh, people wanting more car parking, more paid car parking and less restrictions on current parking. While residents want there to be less car parking and the space previously utilised for car parks converted into gardens or bike lanes. Now, residents who don't have access to permits, and that comes up in the report, residents who don't have access to, perm uh, to permits discussed the difficulty of finding parks close to their homes, and they said it was very difficult for their guests to find any parking as well. Um, so um, it depends on the streets, of course, but uh, this is a fine grain survey, which has got volumes of useful information to a South Ward councillor who was anxious to represent uh, the constituency. Now, um, I'm suggesting that this is a way around helping businesses, particularly those who have customers that require parking for more than two hours. And these are nominated in the report. They include people like uh, hairdressers. You just can't do a, a cut and colour in two, two hours. That's, that's the truth of the matter. And that's not available. And on Gilbert Street, many of the businesses require client meetings. So uh, these include uh, uh, architects uh, and design agencies as well. Uh, and they say they're having difficulty uh, finding uh, parking for their uh, customers or patrons. And it's even more challenging for staff uh, who work in these businesses. Um, a majority of our residents and bus businesses within the South Ward say they believe more on-street parking is necessary. If I can just have half a second longer, Lord Mayor. What this amendment does is ask the administration to go away and have a look at these key points with the possibility of some of these measures assisting. But of course, if they don't, that will be in the report. That is all this does. It asks the administration Thank to come you, back Councillor and see Martin. how it might be done. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Oh, uh, okay, members. Councillor Kerr, sorry, I have you. Lord Mayor, um, I, look, I won't be supporting this amendment. Um, nothing substantive uh, for the pure uh, fact that we've been presented with something. Uh, yes, it's just a, an amendment to a report, but we do not know uh, what uh, the cost is of this report. We do not know of this extra uh, imposition on the report and on the administration is. We don't know if it's warranted. But moreover, uh, we should not be establishing a precedent where an amendment of this size and this depth is presented uh, at the last minute during council uh, without being emailed for councillors to digest. It's simply for that reason. There is not enough time for me to actually digest this, and this is not the right time for an amendment to be presented in this, in this nature. That is why uh, I will not be voting for this amendment. Members, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I don't actually have a view on this. I'll be interested um, in the debate. Um, I'm not keen to go down the path of having more discussions about what we can do to increase um, on-street car parking, with all due respect to um, Councillor Martin. We seem to spend a lot of time on this council talking about car parking. Um, I do want to uh, address this issue, though, around um, notice of the um, amendment. Uh, to be honest, it has been commonplace uh, during my uh, year and a half on this council for me to be ambushed virtually every meeting with a dramatic um, variation or amendment to one of my motions. Councillor Sims, we are talking to the amendment. Councillor Sims, we are talking to the amendment before us. Mayor, <coughs> the um, comment is directly related because Councillor Kira has indicated that the only reason he is opposing the motion is because of uh, the dangerous precedent that has been established. I'm simply making the point that it has been commonplace on this council for members of council 
to present um, amendments that are substantial without them being circulated beforehand. Thank you. Certainly never been circulated to me, and I've appealed um, on many occasions for councils to do that, and it's never been the practice. So understand councillors are concerned about um, the practice of an amendment being uh, tabled on the night, but that's been happening for a very long time. Okay, what, I, what I ask Councillor Sims is that they be provided to governance. But it'd be good for them to be provided to everybody. Correct. Or, Thank or, you. It would be good if they're provided to everybody, I but I did all members actually ask for, for members to provide them to, to governance. To all. So, Councillor Sims, you're not talking to the amendment. Anyone else wish to speak to the amendment? Councillor Kouros? I just have a question, Lord Mayor. I just would like to know how much work uh, would be required to comply with this amendment? CEO? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, as I've only just this moment read this motion myself, um, it's very difficult for me to confirm. But, Council, you would know the, um, the challenges we have whenever we talk about planning controls and changes to planning controls. I believe that you do need to be fully informed before we embark on this kind of work because, to my view, it needs to be thorough, it needs to be substantial and it needs to be accurate. To do that, I would like some time to consider the aspects of the, of the motion that's before you, but I haven't had a chance to absorb it at this time. Thank you. Um, are there any other speakers? Yeah. Deputy Lord Mayor? Um, just a question. How does the administration interpret six? approve such funds that will be required for any associated costs such as notification implementation and parking utilisation surveys with funds to be requested as part of the 2020-21 Q1 budget reconsideration process. How do we interpret that? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, that's quite vague, obviously, and um, it's very difficult to determine the true costs. Again, consultation can be quite a large scope from minor to major, and um, and I believe that Council would need to determine the, the level and degree of consultation or notification required and therefore should be advised of the, of the required funds. And can you give us just a ballpark figure of what a consultation costs, the average consultation for a whole board? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. We've been through that recently, I think. Claire, would you have any idea with the North Adelaide? We've done well, Clinton. I think that one's two hundred thousand. It's a substantial amount of money to do it thoroughly and to cover all aspects. Yeah, um, I couldn't give you the, the figure off the top of my head. Um, through the presiding member, I can't remember off, off the top of my head what it cost in North Adelaide, um, but in terms of implementation, um, it came down to um, signage. So I think that component was only around forty thousand dollars. I beg your pardon, Councillor. According to Councillor Martin, it was 30. My recollect recollection is 40, um, but Thank you. you can always ask. Thank you. Um, members, any other speakers? If not, I'll go to Councillor Martin to sum up. Oh, oh, Councillor Coral, sorry, you had a... Well, I have a question before. Yep. I, just wanna, um, I have another question. In, re in receiving this report, I can see that we've got the next step. So, um, in the next steps, we'll be going forward um, in developing um, more of a consultation with the community. Was that the point of doing this report first and no. then going out to the community or uh, with consultation regarding car park? See ya. Yeah, thanks, Clinton. Can you respond? Uh, through the chair, um, through the chair. Um, we're just uh, requesting um, tonight that Council notes the report and the outcomes of the community consultation um, and our plan uh, as outlined in the um, request to Council tonight is just to accept that those um, that feedback will be taken into our asset renewal programs, our Council strategies that we're already working towards delivering um, through existing budget considerations. Lord Mayor, take into account that um, 
what uh, this amendment is asking, it, it's, it's a whole lot of body of work here, and it's, I just don't um, think diving into it straight away is the right way in going about it. This is um, Councillor Martin's idea of how he thinks it could be solved. I would like to think that we, we as a council should be working together and with the community and working through ways on what they need and what the residents need and what the businesses need to um, solve whatever the problems that they feel is in their ward. Um, judging by the way that uh, the, the, the the, the North Adelaide parking was reviewed and the, the mistakes that had been made down that path and the angst that was developed from the implement, implementation that uh, Councillor Mark wanted to deliver for the ward, I'm not trusting that this is the right way to go forward. Um, I think at this point in time, I will not uh, agree with this, with this, uh, with this amendment, um, but I, you know, I think it will be something that we would need to obviously look at and review in the future. Thank you, members. Any other speakers? If not, back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Well, look, uh, th thank you, Lord Mayor. And look, it would be a blessing and it would save us considerable time at these meetings if the councillors read the papers that they were supplied with. This, this report, uh, you two, this report is actually a report about a public consultation. We consulted hundreds of people throughout South Ward. We held public meetings. And as a consequence of that, the administration is saying, let's just note it and we'll factor in tree planting into the area and maybe traffic somewhere. But there were very specific responses from the, uh, the community. And they said, we want these issues with business and residential parking addressed. Now, um, I don't agree with uh, uh, Councillor Kouros on North Adelaide parking. It is a shamozzle and it has been ever since she interfered in it. Uh, it was starting to work well. And this is not actually about making changes. Nowhere does it say that. It says, requests a detailed report, ask the administration to recommend, request the administration provide details. There is no decision being made. Uh, it is asking the administration to have a look at those things in the context of the consultation with residents of South Ward. Um, now, I think this is the opportunity for us to demonstrate that we're listening to what they're saying and providing a response. And I am sorry that I'm moving this to not uh, the Deputy Lord Thank Mayor you, because it is, it is his ward, I know. But um, it does require us to listen to what people are asking us for. Um, I, I get that it's complex. Uh, it's not as simple as the Happy Driver Month motion. I, I can see that. It does have a bit more depth to it. Um, but let me tell you, it's going to be a lot cheaper than Happy Driver Month or legal challenges to the Hutt Street Centre or any of those other wasteful uh, expeditions that we've been on in this council uh, or are about to embark upon. It is a request for information to the administration based on the consultation and the feedback of the ratepayers. And, uh, you know, everyone's free to vote against this. I'm, I'm happy for you to do so if you think the ratepayers, the businesses and the residents of that area are not important. Um, but I'll be voting for it. I'll be voting for I think that's a, a low blow, Councillor Martin. Um, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is lost. <laughs> Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. Would all those in favour of the amendment please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Moran and the Deputy Lord Mayor. So members, that takes us back to the substantive. Um, Councillor, uh, sorry, members, anyone wish to speak to it? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Donovan to sum up. Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor, and I think um, uh, Councillor Martin's points are well raised. However, we do have a huge body of work that's about to land in the City Access Strategy, um, and that will speak to some of these points, in particular around uh, safety of um, all modes of transport. And I think if we could get the network right within the context of the South Movement Study, in addition to the, the significant body of work that has been undertaken with the City Access Strategy, we should be prioritising the network 
um, as a starting point for the significant pieces of work that need to be moved forward. Um, and, and certainly um, parking issues will then be remediated through the projects that will fall out of that. So I would hope that we can look to that, get some movement on some of those big projects. I look forward to that landing in the council chamber soon, Lord Mayor, and, uh, and then we can look to what else might need to be enacted beyond that point. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Councillor Martin, are you about against? Thank you. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abrahimzadeh, Councillor Ho, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Sims, Councillor Canole, and the Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillors, that takes us to 10.4, which is the Adelaide High School proposed building expansion. Lord Mayor, if I could yes, call Councilor a uh, conflict of interest as I uh, am on the Governing Council. Thank you, Councillor. Um, uh, are you going to stay in the room or are you going to remove yourself? Uh, no, I will leave the room. Thank you. And Lord um, Mayor, uh, apologies. I, I also need to declare a conflict of interest as I uh, am an employee of the Department for Education. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Um, members, I'll look for a mover. Councillor Martin. Yeah, um, a, a alternative motion, Lord Mayor. Um, um, I wish to add um, the words after um, renewed landscape plan. Um, I'm just looking for the words. Can't find them, I've lost them. Um, here it is, yeah, add to the end of two, renewed landscape plan, comma, with effect from January 1st, 2050. 2050? This is point two after landscape plan um, with effect from 2020. 2020, thank you. I thought 2050 was a little... Oh, no, no, I did say 2050, yeah. Uh, I beg your pardon, I did 20, January 1st, 2050, yes, I did say that. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I'll look for a seconder for that. Alternate motion. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to that? Um, yes, Lord Mayor, and um, that's um, that's not entirely it. Um, there is also a reference to um, 2020, uh, 2050 at three. No, it's this. Uh, no, I don't know the second. I mean, you do. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Councillor Martin, I'm unclear as to uh, you're talking to I'm sorry, the uh, variation. I was distracted sorry, by the Chancellor Chair of pleading the Second Amendment. Um, the, um, the words um, uh, January 1st, 2050 also apply after approves with effect from January 1st, 2050 uh, at three. So that reads approves. Oh, so you're delaying the entire project to 2050? Uh, yes. Correct. Okay. Councillor Martin, if you'd like to speak to that. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, um, uh, this uh, is what it seems. Uh, it is a, a motion that is not ultra vires, um, but which seeks to approve the project in the second half of the century. And I do so. Um, because it was Council's intention back in 2012 when the Minister came here last, and it's noted in the papers at page 43, for those of you who haven't read the papers. Sorry, Councillor Martin, I will just, um, just ask you to stop for a moment. Um, Rudy, can you just advise us in terms of uh, something taking effect later on this century? Through the Lord Mayor, um, indeed, 
the um, alternate motion has heard it is taking effect from January 2050, which is actually locking in a future council. Um, so that would not be appropriate in the circumstances. The Lord Mayor can therefore rule not to accept that. So, Councillor Martin, you can choose to uh, not approve or to vote against it, but we can't accept that oh, well, if, if, um, alternate motion. If you are asking me then to vary it so that the council does not approve, I'm not asking you to, Councillor Martin. No, no, I'm no. just saying that I cannot accept uh, the uh, alternate motion before us. So, but what you're saying to me, Lord Mayor, is that a simple way forward is for me to simply say we do not approve. Okay, well, if, if that's acceptable, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to vary it to that extent. The effect is the same. That's an alternate motion. Um, well, it's the same in as much as um, it's not going to happen with either of them. So, if I could ask your advice, Brody, please. Through the Lord Mayor, um, does not approve, turns that part of the motion into a direct negative, which means you could vote it down. Um, that's just the current practice of the council. So I'm sorry we can't accept that one either, Councillor Martin. Okay. Um, if I could actually have the um, the, very, the uh, words removed from point two as well. Thank you. So, members, I will go back to the floor and I'll ask for a mover of the motion before you, which is uh, as written. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Yeah, just briefly, Lord Mayor. I think um, I think this is an excellent excellent redevelopment. Um, I think it's going to underpin educational opportunities uh, for residents of the city of Adelaide, but also in our surrounding areas as well, uh, for the years to come. Um, we know that the schools, the high schools in the city are in quite high demand. In fact, we saw when there was rezoning that occurred um, last year or the year before, uh, there was huge public outrage and clamour that some people had been moved out of the boundary for Adelaide High out of that zoning. And that just goes to show what high demand there is for this school. I want to commend um, the work that's been done on this. I want to commend the state government uh, for the huge investment in public school buildings and infrastructure that is occurring across South Australia at the moment. You've got hundreds of millions of dollars worth of new school buildings that are going in. And this is a fine example of one of those. It will allow more students to study more things at school. Uh, I'm so proud that at this point um, in our history, we can see educational opportunities for children, for young adults, for people that want to go on, whether they want to study at university or take or, or take another path as well. I'm so pleased that the City of Adelaide has the opportunity to support that endeavour. Um, and of course, there's the natural tension uh, with regards to parklands and what have you. But I've seen um, uh, those children use the ovals there. Um, next to Adelaide High, the ovals are in, are in excellent condition. The grass there is upkept. Um, uh, the verges are tidy. Um, all of the public realm there is in very, very good condition. And so I actually am very pleased to see that Adelaide High is a responsible custodian uh, sort of for that area of the parklands that they that they take care of and they do it very well. So it's wonderful that we're going to see an expansion of one of our premier public schools um, uh, in South Australia and that it's right here within the city of Adelaide. And I'd hope all members would support that expansion and, and, uh, and support the children that go to those schools, uh, to that school um, and for their futures as well. Thank you. Councillor Kerr, did you wish to speak? Um, Mr McCready, did you have any comments that you wanted to make? Through you, Lord Mayor, just uh, to note uh, the commentary at the committee last week. Um, first of all, the State Commission uh, assessment panel have actually determined this application and it has been approved. Uh, Council's role in the development approval process is limited to providing technical advice on matters such as traffic waste and encroachments. Um, there was also a question that was raised in regards to the heritage building. With respect to state heritage matters, SCAP uh, received advice from Heritage SA and through a mandatory referral as required under development regulations. 
Um, the portion of the listed building, I think that Councillor Martin was referring to last week, um, is to be demolished and was consistent with her TGSA to indicate that it has limited value and they do not object to the demolition of that portion of the building. So in effect, SCAP has actually endorsed the development. Uh, Heritage SA has dealt with the, the listed Heritage building. Uh, and the reality is it's actually building on the existing structure, so it's not encroaching onto the parklands. Thank you. Councillors, any further? Councillor Martin? Yeah, a question for the administration. Um, uh, Council, of course, is always anxious to receive appropriate rental for parklands. In this instance, wh what is the rental that the City of Adelaide is going to charge for that part of the parklands? CEO? Yeah, thanks, Tom. Through you, presiding member, uh, could you make it clear in regards to what part of the parklands are you talking about? A city works compound, or are you talking about building on an existing structure which is owned by the uh, effectively? The no, there's a, lease, there's, a lease, there's a lease attached to the papers presented to council tonight. I yeah. was hoping you could help me find the rent. I certainly could. I can answer it without even having to find it. Zero. 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 Correct. Zero. Okay. Um, and. Is it correct that the city is required as landlord to approve this? Through the chair. CEO. Yeah, thanks again, Tom. Uh, through you, uh, Lord Mayor, if I can refer you to the items before you. And uh, what you're looking at tonight is effectively to authorise the Chief Executive Officer to enter into a 40 to your uh, lease, which as you've already highlighted, the council has already given that decision in 2012 to actually advance that. So what you're doing now is actually endorsing that to proceed. Thank you. I don't understand. That is to say, this is an extension of the 2012 lease? CEO, uh, Mr. Crady, you happy to answer? Through you, presiding member, again to, to go through what was presented in the report clearly indicates Council's intent in 2012 and naturally the development of the master plan in regards to that school, which brings 300 additional students into that site. The site itself, is, as indicated, they are building on top of the existing structure with no impediment onto the park plans. What we're seeking from Council tonight and solely seeking is to authorise the Chief Executive Officer to implement that 42-year lease as actually endorsed in 2012. Okay, and Lord Mayor, I thank the Administration for pointing out that in 2012 the matter did come before Council and at that time the Council resolved to ask the State Government to look at its expansion plans in the context of another site, not this site. So they've come back to us and they've asked us if they can have uh, more occupation of the parklands um, with, um, with these buildings. Now they've had plenty of opportunity and, and look, I, I, I don't share uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor's uh, pride in uh, the Liberal government's uh, uh, participation in this. Um, but then again, I'm not a uh, candidate for the Vice Presidency of the party. Thank but you, Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, we'll stick to I, the item before us, please. Certainly, Lord Mayor. Um, they've had so much opportunity, the school, to acquire land elsewhere. Um, there was an entire city block in Grove Street, bounded by Grove and uh, Gurdjie Street, which was vacant for nearly 10 years, or on the market anyway, by Australia Post. It didn't seek to buy it. And the reason it didn't seek to buy it, even though it would have given it a bigger footprint and better capacity to serve the city, was that it didn't involve the parklands. And so it's not free rent. I don't, free I don't rent. think that's the reason they didn't, Councillor Martin. But... Well, Lord Mayor, I think that is the reason because it was pointed out to them many times over the years that that property was available, it would make a perfect site for mm -hmm. a high school. And in fact, I was on the board of the high school at that time when the matter was discussed from time to time. But uh, look, let me just say, uh, these parklands uh, aren't cheap. They are, as some people say, priceless. And every time we agree to one of these initiatives, we compromise them further. Now, this proposal does impinge on the parklands in very substantial ways. And those who read the papers will notice that there's no illustration that shows you what a four-storey building looks like viewed from the western side of the parklands. Done whatever. There's something close up, but nothing further away. There's no illustration in the papers to show you what a double story building looks like from West Terrace when you're looking at the extra story that's going on top of the new development. 
And the reason those things are not there, I put it to you, Lord Mayor, is because everyone would see what a damn ugly monstrosity it will be. This is just a further, a further devaluation of the parklands. And, and Lord Mayor, I know uh, that uh, my colleagues will vote in favour of this, but really, at some stage, at some stage, we do need to take a stand on the parklands, even if we're overruled by government, because this is going to be yet another incursion. Members, Councillor Moran. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Of course, we all applaud governments for expanding schools and so forth. I too was on the council. Uh, it is the reason, Lord Mayor, why the park plans are used for the expansion, because otherwise you have to buy the land. In the case of the Botanic High School, that was also gifted um, and is also on the park plans. Um, we love our public schools and uh, I have a great association with Adelaide High where I taught for, for some time. However, West Terrace is almost empty. It's a, it's a development site except for CMI and on the run. The rest, um, Rays, Outdoors, they're all, they're all up for grabs. Um, they don't pick them because we roll over every time and say, here, have a bit of a chunk more of the parklands. So while I applaud governments for providing more schooling, I condemn them for constantly using the free land that is our park lands and is priceless. Thank you. Members, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Sometime. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? Shame. Division. Yes, please. Yes, please. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Abraham today. Well, Councillor Kerr. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Councillor Ho. Councillor Kerr. Councillor Kuros. Councillor Canole and Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, members. We will continue. Thank you. That takes us to uh, 10.8. And I will, oh sorry, I'll just actually ask for Councillor Abraham today and Councillor Mackey to come back in the room. Lord Mayor, just for the record, I uh, want to declare that uh, my conflict is a material conflict of interest uh, with the item that you guys just discussed. Thank you, Councillor Abraham, today. And uh, Lord Mayor, also for the record, I declare that my conflict of interest was material, it relates to my executive contract with the public sector being with the Department for Education. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Um, members, we're moving on to 10.8, which is the proposal for Santos Tudan under Village to be held in Victoria Square. And I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Kouros, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Knoll, members? Councillor Martin? Look, I, I'll be brief. Um, it, this will be voted through by the team again, but can I just remind everybody, and we are going to have a discussion about Santos later, but in the last term of council, there was a discussion about council making available Victoria Square for the tour down under uh, and providing sponsorship even after the tour down under withdrew from any facet of the, the event being held in the city. Uh, and so we continue to sponsor the event. We continue to allow the city uh, parklands to be used by uh, the tour down under. And uh, the helicopters with the beautiful pictures of the surrounding areas that once used to give us great snapshots of the city, the cameras on the ground that gave us all of that promotional advantage of showing what the city looks like is gone. And in fact, the event now is a great publicity machine for the southern parts of South Australia and other regional areas. And yet, we continue to do this every year. I really hope at some stage we might have a serious think about whether we might not either reconsider that or try to leverage it in some way to get something better out of it for the city. Councillor Martin, members? Councillor Sims? Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I will uh, support this motion simply on the basis that 
My concern is if we don't support it for next year, it's too late um, for a, an alternate sponsor to be found for 2021. But I will be uh, moving my motion on notice Thank to look you. beyond when we that, get to point, that and we'll Absolutely. be dealing with, with that issue um, then. I do share Councillor Martin's concern um, about the association with Santos, as members know, and I'll be putting a motion forward later to uh, deal precisely with um, that matter going forward. I do think it sets, um, uh, it's not the right look um, for uh, this event to be associated with a fossil fuel company. Councillor, we'll get to that when we get to your motion, as opposed to the granting of an event licence. But I will um, support the event licence as a one-off on this basis, recognising that I'll be moving to uh, break that association Thank later you. in the meeting, if we get to it, Lord Mayor. Members? Um, I'll draw your attention to it is for the one year licence. Uh, it is in the centre of our city. Um, the discussion in terms of funding is a separate discussion, which um, I'm happy to have when the funding comes through. Um, and I know that the teams have worked very hard to leverage that funding to the best advantage for the city um, over the years. So uh, this is for the event licence in Victoria Square. Councillor Martin. Uh, just a question to the administration. What is the rent we receive? Uh, from the tour down under for their occupation of Victoria Square for what is it now? Seven or eight weeks? From bump into bump? I will ask the question, oh. Councillor Martin, CEO. Thanks, Christy. Could you respond? Yes. Yeah, three will be returned to the notice. So um, we'll send that detail around, Councillor Martin. Um, if there are no other speakers, I'll go back to Councillor Kouros to sum up. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Division, Division has been called. Council members, all those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Ho, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Carer, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Sims, Councillor Knoll and Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you members. That takes us to 10.9 which is the change to multi-year licence events for Gluttony 2021 and 2022. COVID-19 response for events. Um, I will look for a mover. Thank you Councillor Mackey and I'll look for a seconder. Thank you Councillor Kuros. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, uh, no, thank you. Councillor Kouros. Members? Councillor Martin? Uh, just a question for the administration. Uh, of uh, the CEO, in fact. Um, uh, this is not actually about gluttony, it's about all events in the parklands uh, in the uh, coming months. Uh, and I'm wondering if one and two were approved, but as a mere formality, the elected body was was asked to approve individual additional requests. Would that present a significant problem to it? Thank you. I'll ask the CEO to. Three Lord Mayor, so you're suggesting, Councillor, that each item would come back to Council rather than being delegated, is it? For in item three, which okay. is the not charging parkland fees. Yep. So that uh, uh, gluttony is approved, and this is a uh, uh, headed gluttony, but uh, the others would just come back for. Um, a mere formal noting of council, would that create any problems? Yeah, three Lord Mayor. So we're looking at where we are, we're able to, to remove red tape and to streamline uh, by having to report back to council. That would require considerable work. Um, the alternative to that is to provide the delegation. Sorry. CEO. Three Lord Mayor. So as we go through this COVID period, it is so variable and so challenging. Uh, we have no idea where things will go from week to week. So I think we need to be able to have the flexibility to respond as needed. The alternative to that is potentially calling special meetings or reporting back to you on a constant basis, which I think would not be helpful. Um, thank you, um, members. If not, I'll go back to Councillor Mackey. Uh, to... Oh, Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, we can get around that problem of uh, votes by meeting fortnightly, uh, and that would be easy then. We could give uh, approval every two weeks instead of meeting 12 times a year so, uh, for schedule voting meetings, of course. But look, uh, Lord Mayor, I won't be able to support this. It's, a, 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 it's not a serious issue, but um, it is, uh, as a North Ward councillor, a 
matter of some concern that events are sometimes scheduled in locations which drive the residents mad. Uh, we all love the events in the city, um, but uh, to not have uh, somebody to speak on their behalf in the event of something being scheduled at, say, Pinky Flat um, at short notice um, would create problems uh, for my constituents. Um, and it would be, uh, in my view, uh, a very minor concession to the administration to allow us when there were events of a nature that might disturb residents for them to come back to council. Um, in the absence of that agreement, then I'll just vote against this. Okay. Um, CEO, did you wish to comment? Yeah, through your Lord Mayor, just to remind council members that we have multi-year um, licences in place. Um, so that provides some certainty to council with these events. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, I won't vote for this either. I was going to vote for it till I heard the CEO uh, debate the issue, and uh, that made me very nervous. Um, when it's, uh, we've always, as the Lord Mayor and I always aim to be a nimble um, government, a level of government. We are the level of government, not the administration. Um, we are the council, they are the staff administration. And I think this council forgets that. It's not hard for us to get together, we're all pretty close. Uh, we can have a special meeting or once a fortnight meeting and we would indeed be nimble. But it would be a lovely council if the councillors just went away. That would streamline it incredibly, wouldn't it? Thank you, Councillor Maroon. Members, if not, back to Councillor Markey to sum up. Sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Council members, a division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Ho, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Sims, Councillor Canole and Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, that takes us to 10.10. Uh, .10. um, look, uh, members, I'm hoping to defer this item um, uh, in conversation uh, with um, Christy and with Claire. There's a little bit more work that we want to do, particularly around COVID. Um, so I'll look for a move from the floor. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Second by Councillor Mackey. Members, any discussion at all? Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thank you, members to the vote for deferral. Those in favour, those against, thank you very much. Um, hopefully we'll bring that back in next month. That takes us to item 10.12, uh, which is the resource recovery um, strategy and action plan. I'll look for a mover. Do I have a mover for 10.12? Councillor Martin, are you moving? Um, a variation. Noting members that this is for consultation. Um, it, there is a, uh, an alternate motion from Councillor Martin, I believe. Um, well, look, I'm, the, on the wording, I'm open to being guided by the administration. Um, but what I'm proposing is that uh, after uh, the word consultation. In number one? Uh, I'm just. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's in numbers one, two, and three, so just checking. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't turn the page. Yep, after number one, consultation, instead of a full stop, a comma. Um, something like with the acknowledgement uh, that the plan does not support um, the extension of red or yellow bin collection to businesses which currently do not have the service and inviting comments about whether the plan should include such services to all business generating residential waste volumes. Is that... Sorry, the Council of Martin, I'll just actually ask you to read that again so that we make sure we capture that. Okay, well, I was making it up as I went, so... <laughs> we With the acknowledgement acknowledgement that the plan does not support the extension of red or yellow bin collection to businesses. Which currently do not have the service. And inviting comments about whether the plan should include services or uh, such services 
um, to all businesses generating residential waste. Sorry, products. sorry, sorry, you're going a little bit too fast for us to, and inviting comments about whether we should have such a service. Is that correct? Yep, uh, uh, to businesses generating residential waste volumes, that's pretty key. Sorry, that changed again. So inviting comments. Uh, oh, yeah, just inviting comments, I think, about whether the, the strategy or the plan. Should provide. Should provide. Such a service. And if the, the first one is the strategy, so perhaps if we can actually yeah, um, just make it strategy rather than all the plan, because that's. Yeah, yeah. Such a service to businesses, and this is key generating residential volumes of waste. I will look for a seconder. I've got Councillor Sims. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, and look, if I can ask uh, before I start speaking a question of the administration, just so I have this clear in my mind. Um, one of the key target areas in this is business. Uh, and we do say to expand support for businesses eligible for curbside collection. What, what is the eligibility criteria? Thank you, Councillor Martin, to the CEO. Sorry. Three, Lord Mayor, we, we presented this to committee last week to respond to questions. Um, so I'm not sure why we didn't deal with this matter then, but Michelle, you may wish to respond further. Um, through um, the Lord Mayor, so we currently do provide um, waste and recycling uh, bins to businesses that have a generation that is the same as a residential or household size collection. However, there are limits um, if in terms of the, the number of businesses. So if you had a, say a multi-story building with a hundred businesses in there um, and each individual business provided the same um, as a, a residential household, there is a limit on the number of businesses per site. So, um, Lord Mayor, if, if I was setting up a business in the City of Adelaide, not in a multi-storey building, I could apply for them and would receive a red and yellow bin? Yes, well, and we do offer those services at the moment. All right. Okay. Uh, well, how many of the 10,000... Sorry, Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, how many of the 10,600 business ratepayers in the City receive such a service? CEO. Through Lord Mayor, we should take that on notice. Thanks. You asked us to ask it during the committee, and now you can't answer it. That sort of information through Lord Mayor wouldn't be readily at hand. Happy to research that for you. But. Well, uh, well, look, I'd be happy with you know 60%, 50%. So, through the Lord Mayor, I can answer that. Um, we currently have approximately 10,000 residential, 2,000 multi-unit dwellings, and half thousand non-residential premises are serviced. Okay, 10,600 ratepayers, as we know, business ratepayers, as we know from the documents. Okay, so look, uh, I, I've raised this because it is something that's been raised with me by businesses in North Adelaide for a, a very long time, and I've raised this repeatedly in committee, even when Councillor Kira was there, uh, and that is that there are a lot of businesses who are complaining that they don't get the service uh, and they believe that they should have eligibility um, for one reason or another. Uh, and they say that it is not fair that the business next to them, which may have slightly different circumstances, um, receive a red and yellow bin and they do not, even though they pay the same rates. And they say it is not fair that they don't receive a red and yellow bin when a resident receives the service um, and they pay lower rates. Uh, and so uh, many of them believe that our criteria is too strict uh, and that wherever it is possible, 
whatever that criteria uh, would look like, we ought to be providing business with red and yellow bins. Um, and therefore, uh, I'm asking, and this is the point at which I should ask for it, um, because this is a strategy that's going out to consultation and will form the basis of our policy from 2028, uh, from 20 to 28. And let me say, Lord Mayor, look, I, it's an excellent document. I'm really, really happy with it. It's got lots of important initiatives, but this is one of the glaring ones. This is uh, one we miss, uh, uh, many businesses just fall through the cracks. And so the intention of this is at consultation to ask businesses or give them the opportunity um, to say, um, yep, uh, it's a problem for us, and if you juggled your criteria this way or that way, it would be a good thing for us. Um, that is all it is. Uh, and in fact, if it comes back to council with no response, well, that's fine. Or if it comes back to council uh, with a response that's not satisfactory to the elected body, that's fine too. But this at least asks the question that a lot of my ratepayers are concerned about, uh, and who tell me horror stories too, Lord Mayor, about how, um, because they don't have a bin, they wait for bin night and they tear out where no one's looking and throw all of their waste, re recyclable or not, into other people's bins, uh, which of course is directly at odds with what this report is encouraging. That is the transference of a lot of waste that goes currently to landfill to recycling. Okay. So if you've got people furtively running around at night throwing bags of rubbish, mixed rubbish or even the wrong rubbish and bins simply to get rid of it because they don't have a service, we're going to end up with a, a compromised result. But look, uh, I ask members to support that. It is nothing more than asking business and, and uh, whatever comes back, I'm happy for the administration to say that doesn't work, we can't address it, it's the wrong criteria, at least it asks the question. Thank you. Councillor Sims? Members? I'll go to Councillor Moran first and then I'll go back to you, Councillor Sims. No, you're going. Yeah, I think we should support businesses. It's always been a bit of an anachronism that we haven't. Um, so I think to get that extra information, just because we don't have to in legislation doesn't mean we should. They pay rates as anybody else. So I support the businesses in the city and um, I would like to ask the question whether they would get the bills. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And um, I do want to thank administration for the work on this and just to reinforce the comments um, that I made in committee um, about the importance of making sure that we have adequate provision of um, green bins in public space and also increasing the provision of recycling bins in our public spaces too. And I really look forward to um, seeing the, the feedback that comes back from the community in, um, in that regard. I am, am pleased to support this um, alternative motion from Councillor Martin because I think it, he has identified a gap um, in the uh, proposed um, strategy and that is the lack of um, appropriate service to businesses and you know if we're going to be one of the, um, the world's zero waste cities. I think we adopted that as part of our um, strategic plan and rightly so. If we're going to be one of the world's zero waste cities then we need to actually do our bit to um, reduce waste from city businesses as well um, and absolutely having um, appropriate access to yellow red bean bins, I'd argue green bins too, um, but I'm really keen to uh, get feedback from businesses around whether or not they think that would be helpful and um, from the broader community too around whether that should be a focus of the council. I think it should be, um, but I'm always of the view that we should go out and consult um, and ask questions of um, our community. So I look forward to hearing what they've got to say and I thank Councillor Martin for um, really leading the charge on this. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Can I just suggest a variation that we include green bins? You can suggest. Well, Red mind. or yellow or green bin collection? Um, look, I'm happy to accept that amendment, but I, I read that report as saying that we would be making additional efforts to supply green bins to business. Is that a correct reading of the report? Lord Mayor, sorry, Lord Thank Mayor. Thank you. See you. 
uh, thread the Lord Mayor. So um, the strategy uh, proposes support for businesses in terms of all businesses helping them um, recover more. Um, but as you have indicated, it doesn't include either um, providing a red or a yellow or a green bin to those businesses where their volumes are of a commercial nature, so beyond a, a residential. So, uh, so it, it wouldn't include um, uh, green bins in in that. It wouldn't. It would not include. It, would not. it does okay. not include green bins. Well, I'm, I'm happy to accept the variation. Yeah. Uh, so I'll ask the seconder if he's I'm also happy to, to accept the variation. Yeah. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to that? I was only going to say that um, I was going to wait until this comes back in. Um, I was going to circulate it to my business database and network and share my thoughts on it, but I was going to uh, leave those thoughts for that um, and see what comes back with the consultation. Um, look, it's, it's encapsulated uh, what my concerns were when I moved that same motion on notice that we um, commit to being a zero waste city by 2030. Um, those are still my views. I think it's core business. I think it's business that we should be providing. Um, you know, I can only bring so many motions and um, and have them and have them not included in our strategies and what have you. Um, but given this was just a draft, I was going to do with it when it comes back um, at that point. But thank you, Councillor Martin, um, uh, for putting that in there. And we've got so much motion. Thank you for accepting my variation. The primary complaint I actually had from businesses is the green waste. It's not. It's not a yellow. Yellow is a, is, is neither here nor there because because yeah we have so much green waste in this chamber. Um, no, yellow yellow is is much of a muchness because the busy come and pick up their cardboard. I'm not sure what day of the week it is. I always trip over them when I'm running. But um, uh, yes, and uh, uh, red. Uh, there are a fair amount of red bins that service small businesses, as you highlighted. So that's not a huge concern. The concern is the retailers. If a cafe is producing a huge bag of, of coffee beans and they're putting it in their red bin, that's not something they want to be doing. Um, uh, so the green bin, the provision of green bin, and I acknowledge there is some some proviso in that, but um, if we're going to specifically ask them, hey, do you want residential style bins, um, notwithstanding that may be completely unfeasible, but um, at least gauging the interest for the provision of those services, considering they do pay four times the amount, um, in rates, then we may as well put green in there. So, I'm very pleased for that to go forward. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Cross. Um, initially, I was uh, uh, a little bit um, uh, confused in the sense that I know that both uh, most businesses, small businesses, do get a red and yellow bin. So the fact that mm -hmm. Councillor Martin was saying that that they don't was a little bit. Uh, thinking which businesses are not getting the, the red and yellow bin. But this makes more sense to include the green because that is what is lacking and that is what the, that we should be giving to businesses as well. So um, I didn't understand the first bit, but this makes more sense to be adding the green because they should be receiving their red and their yellow if they're producing that volumes of waste as a residential matter waste. So, I support this fully, so <coughs> green bins are really good. Thank you, members. Um, and again, just to reiterate, I think that's a great piece of work. Um, uh, it's it's going to see us well in terms of um, one of the pillars of our new strategic plan, which is environmental leadership, and we do hope that we can attain by 2030. Um, this will go a long way to helping both uh, the businesses and the residents. And of course, the consultations will come back in and we'll have a look at what the community uh, uh, thinks of it. And we also uh, will make sure that um, councillors have the appropriate links to send out to their own databases so that we can have, have some um, good consultation coming back. Um, members, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Oh, just briefly, Lord Mayor, look, uh, thank you for the, uh, the suggested the variation. I'm happy with that. Um, it will make a difference, uh, particularly to businesses uh, dealing in food and food waste in um, various quantities. Uh, and the Red and Bin, of course, will help a lot of those office buildings, uh, particularly on Melbourne Street, uh, where there are um, medical practices and other uh, um, uh, offices that generate 
what they believe is a, enough waste to warrant uh, this service. But look, we're just asking, and I think that's a great thing for us to be doing. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Perhaps if the record can show that it was unanimous, Deputy Lord Mayor, I think that will achieve the outcome that you're looking for. We can note that that was a unanimous vote. Um, members, uh, that takes us to item 10.13. Uh, so the uh, first is a procedural to um, endorse the motion before you, and then we will ask for nominations. Um, so thank you, Councillor Abrahimzadeh, and a seconder. I'm looking for, thank you, Councillor Canole. Councillor Abrahamzadeh, did you wish to speak? Councillor Canole. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I'd like to propose a variation which has yet been shared uh, with me. I, I wonder if it might be shared with me. So perhaps if I look to the CEO, uh, we're just looking for a slight variation to item four on the agenda. Uh, so item four of the motion. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. I just think it's important to clarify that when we talk about trial this approach in relation to the potential redevelopment of a central aquatic centre for Greater Adelaide, that the the intent is for the aquatic centre to be located within the city of Adelaide. Yep. And so if it read a central aquatic centre in the city of Adelaide, that would be satisfactory? I think in the city of Adelaide, or uh, would actually cover that? Oh, I'd like to propose that amendment. Um, so if I can actually ask the mover, if you're happy to accept that. And okay. The seconder, Councillor Knoll, are you happy to accept that? Um, thank you, it is also in, uh, 4.1.4, if we could change that in terms of Central Aquatic Centre to Aquatic Centre in the City of Adelaide. Are you happy with that, Councillor Martin? Uh, so thank you with that. I will look to the floor. If there's no speakers, I'll go to Councillor Albrecht today to sum up. Just very quickly, Lord Mayor, can I thank the uh, administration for the work they've done, uh, in particular the um, uh, item 5.1, I know that uh, the federal government and state government do a fair bit around family and domestic violence, but I know that uh, uh, local government does play a, a role in that space. Uh, and I'm uh, keen to uh, to hear the, um, the debate and, and the decision at the uh, LGA uh, AGM. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Members to the vote, uh, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, thank you. Um, have you. Can we record in the minutes that that was unanimous? Um, I also then will look for, we have two nominations. I'll do the first one. Um, so I need a nomination for the council delegate, Councillor Abraham today. Can I uh, nominate Councillor Kouros? Councillor Kouros, do you accept the nomination? Are there any other nominations? Councillor Sims? I nominate Councillor Donovan. Councillor Donovan, do you accept the nomination? Uh, members, any other nominations? If not, um, I'll ask a mover to uh, for Councillor Kouros to be the nominated um, council delegate. Need a mover and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Seconder, Councillor Noel. Members, any discussion? Back to Councillor Abraham today. Okay. Um, members to the vote, those in favour, those against. Thank you, that is carried. I'm also looking for a Deputy Council Delegate uh, for the LGA Annual General Meeting. Councillor uh, Martin. I nominate Councillor Kira. Councillor Kira, do you accept the nomination? Uh, no. Thank <laughs> you, Councillor Kira. Else. We have someone else. Just... I'll look for another nomination. Councillor Abraham today. I nominate Councillor Canole. You can, Councillor Canole, do you wish to accept the nomination? <laughs> Is that a yes, Councillor yes. Knoll? Thank you. Uh, are there any other nominations for deputy? Um, if not, members, I'll ask for a mover for Councillor Knoll to be deputy. Thank you, uh, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, well done, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Knoll. It is um, a really interesting experience. Um, I joined Councillor Donovan for a while last year, and that was um, uh, good to see the motions going through. I believe it was. Oh, it wasn't? 
Lord Mayor, um, members, 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 please, if a division's been called, a division's been called. Council members, all those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Thanks. So what, what am I, we've moved on, so I need to understand. No, I haven't moved on because I haven't called the next, the next yeah. item. So we're voting on the election of those two. We are voting on the election of Councillor Canole as a uh, deputy. So if oh. you all voted in favour, let the record show it was unanimous. Thank you. Um, I will now move on to item 10.14. Um, first, I need a move and a second for procedural. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Second to Councillor Abraham today. Uh, are there any comments? If not, Councillor Mackey to sum up. Thank you, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, there are three nominations. Can, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, may I please nominate Councillor Kira, Councillor Mackey, and yourself, Lord Mayor? Councillor Kira, Councillor Mackey, and myself. Uh, Councillor Kira, do you accept the nomination? Uh, yes. Councillor Mackey, do you accept the nomination? Um, no. Um, I will accept the nomination, um, being the member on the board at the moment. Councillor Martin. Uh, Lord Mayor, it's not clear to me. Is it possible to nominate someone other than an elected member if it's an officer of council? No, it is for a council member in the Charter of the Adelaide Festival. Festival Centre Chair, it, trust. it is a council member, member. Thank you. council representative. Um, so I'll look to the floor for another nomination. Councillor Moran? Uh, Councillor Sims. Councillor Sims, do you accept the nomination? Yes, thanks. Thank you. Members, any other nominations? Councillor Abraham today. I nominate Councillor Kouros. Councillor Kouros, do you accept the nomination? Councillor Kouros, any other nominations? That means we go to the ballot. Um, so we have Councillor Kira, myself, Councillor Sims, and Councillor Kouros. Is there remuneration in this? Uh, there is, which means that we actually have to, we all vote, and then we have to leave the room when the motion goes through for the nominations to be approved. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I'll do the same, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor uh, Kira, Councillor Sims, um, with Councillor Kira withdrawing, did you still want to withdraw your nomination? Well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll progress with my So members, I have myself, Councillor Sims and Councillor Kouros as the nominations. Um, I will hand over the chair to the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Sims and Councillor Kouros, if you would mind joining me outside for a moment uh, while that is moved. Uh, members, as we've got three um, uh, nominations for three positions, um, I'll seek a mover and a seconder that we endorse those names going forward. Thank you, Councillor Abraham. Today, seconded by Councillor Mackey. Members, do you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham today to sum up. I put that to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Can we please request that they come back in? Sorry, Lord, Lord Mayor and Councillors, I've just, uh, it's been requested of me that you advise of the nature of the conflict. Once you resume your, no, once you resume, we're done. Take your seats and no one else. So, um, members, just for information, that would be an actual conflict of interest because it's still subject to, of course, ministerial approval. Uh, members, uh, it is an actual conflict of interest uh, because the um, a board appointment is remunerated. As you'd said, Lord Mayor, it's an actual conflict of interest as the board position is remunerated. I do have an actual conflict of interest. Yeah. Councillor Martin. Uh, can we have a division for the newsletter? For what? Sorry? Uh, I can't call the division. I'll have, we'll have to leave the room no, again. So, oh, members, I'm we are sorry, going to. Consult the uh, chair. Um, we are going to, sorry, I've taken the chair back. Um, 
which is the statute amendment for local government review. Deputy Lord Mayor. I have an alternative uh, motion. Alternative that motion. Was circulated to governance um, at least. Oh, Lord Mayor, this is much too detailed for us to consider tonight. Uh, I haven't seen it before. How can we possibly uh, be expected to understand the extent of I this? I can read it out. No, it's just a file. It's just At, if I can um, make a suggestion that uh, if they are circulated ahead of time to governance that we do photocopies and leave them on members' desks so at least we actually have uh, able to read them as the item comes up. Um, so it's only part five members. It does look long but it is only part five uh, which is uh, contents in terms of the attachment A. So I will look for a seconder. Well, Thank you, Councillor Kouros. And I, I, perhaps, I, Deputy Lord Mayor, if you would like to talk to the amendment. Well, do, members, do members want a moment could you read to read? Yeah. Could, could we understand what S75G is ADP? Councillor. Okay, you pop up here and Yes. So, members, if you would like to take a moment to read, and then I'll ask the Deputy Lord Mayor to speak to you. The... Can you see the one behind you, Councillor Moran? Can we have the page numbers, Councillor um, so the amendment has come from the Deputy Lord Mayor, not from Councillor Kouros. Deputy Lord Mayor, would you like to speak to them? With pleasure. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, there are a few things in here that I think uh, should be tidied up. Um, uh, by and large, I think the local government reform uh, uh, action that's been undertaken by, by the government is not as much reform as it is um, tweaking. Nevertheless, it fixes uh, quite a plethora of issues. But, um, uh, there are a couple in there, particularly uh, Section 75G and ADB and, and the uh, other one that also refers to the CEO and not the Minister's panel, where I think it would be uh, better um, if the Minister's panel were to make a decision and not the CEO of any particular council. I think the CEO of a, of a council is a little too close sometimes to these sorts of matters um, uh, when it comes to a ruling on, on a member of their council. And, I think it would be better undertaken by the Minister's panel. Um, uh, if we go to uh, 123 on the annual business plan, um, I think we should resoundingly reject we should resoundingly reject the added levels of bureaucracy that are intended there. Um, uh, if you read if you read the comment uh, provided by the administration, it's uh, it's an absolute bureaucratic uh, merry-go-round where we are requested to um, justify any sort of rate increase and then it goes to the designated authority, which is probably the Essential Services Council of South Australia, and then they provide advice on it. And then um, if we don't follow their advice to the letter, then the minister um, uh, reserves the right to request us uh, to justify why we didn't follow their... It's just pointless, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, people want less red tape than local government and what less red tape uh, means is capping council rates and making sure that they don't go up more than inflation in any given year um, uh, and the release valve as it was put to me the other day for this idea if council rates do need to go up say if you're Norla, um, Uncle Paringa or Playford Council uh, if you do if you are building and expanding and building lots of infrastructure and you need to put up your rates then you just request it from the local government minister and I've suggested in here that the designated authority, the Central Services Council of South Australia, for example, could provide advice on that and whether or not that is necessary, um, picking up on the theme that the government has chosen to go with. Uh, I think that in particular um, puts the City of Adelaide in a leadership position. We often like to talk about being a leader in a number of things. Uh, well, how about being a leader for our local government, uh, greater local government family in South Australia and suggesting that they do what we have done um, uh, which is not increase uh, rates in the dollar. Uh, capping council rates, I think, would be an important measure that the government 
should continue pursuing. Now, regarding uh, the last two ones um, on there, uh, adding disseminating intentionally false or misleading information uh, would be important, I think, to include on the list of, of misbehaviours. Um, uh, I think it's something that needs to be addressed uh, in local government. It's possibly something that needs to be addressed in this council chamber. And lastly, uh, taking a hard line um, against councillors who repeatedly flout the rules, putting in place a basically a three strikes and you're out um, uh, measure. That is, if a council member is the subject of three successful code of conduct complaints um, or processes, that member is immediately removed from office. If I could just have 30 seconds with leave of the meeting. Leave of the meeting, members, for an extra minute. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, thank you for your thank you. If, an, if, a, if a member is found to have flouted three times in a single term, they should be booted from office. I think um, there are there are some measures in this local government reform package that uh, will um, hopefully address the very serious issue of uh, misconduct by members and, and misbehaviour both inside the chamber and outside the chamber. However, I don't think it's strong enough. I think we should send a very strong signal uh, to those councillors who repeatedly, repeatedly break the rules, and that if they continue to do that. Um, uh, and if there are successful code of, conduct, co code of conduct complaints against them, then they will lose their position. Those are not people who, if you, if you repeatedly breach the Local Government Act, you should not be serving in local government. It's a fairly simple concept. Um, legally, it is achievable. Uh, local government is entirely uh, under, under the auspices of the state government. If they want to put a law in there that says that, then they can do that. And I think we'll go a long way to restoring faith in the code of conduct process um, and also fixing member behaviour across South Australia. Thank you. Members, does anyone need assistance with page numbers for those changes? I can uh, quickly Lord read Mayor, them out if that helps. Lord Mayor, I, I would move that the matter be deferred till the next meeting of Council so that we can adequately oh, consider this. Uh, I'm, I'm allowed to move a procedural motion out for of. For a deferral? For a deferral. Okay, Councillor Martin, I am looking for a second. Uh, Councillor Moran. Sorry, um, Lord Mayor, can I just um, suggest... Certainly. I think is, it's a timing issue. Yeah, this is time sensitive in order to make the submission within the time frames we'd need to do with it tonight. Well, uh, no, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, may I suggest to you uh, that it is within the authority of the presiding member to convene a, another meeting of council at which this can be properly considered rather than on the fly. Um, these are very substantial variations. And what's more, there are others um, that haven't even been touched upon. Now, uh, I would like us as a, uh, a council to uh, debate this properly, and therefore a deferral is the only way we can do that to just, another day. Thank you. Just one moment, Councillor. Okay, so this, um, uh, the advice is that this is treated as an amendment and the amendment is to defer the matter. Um, so I have a seconder in Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Uh, yes, look, I think this needs to be um, thought carefully about. So an amendment at this time, a complicated amendment like that, um, I think we should workshop this and really speak. Obviously, Team Adelaide will vote this, so it's a fairly, it is in a way pointless to defer it because it will get up. And uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor's unbelievable additions uh, will sadly get up. I think the government, in their common sense, will refuse um, the three strikes and it's out. Uh, it's particularly ridiculous. Uh, if it, unless it applied, I would accept that as long as it applied to the state and federal government as well. But as it doesn't, it's, it's just mean as twaddle as most things that come um, the Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, members, did anyone else wish to speak to a deferral? Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I um, normally would suggest that we deal with this um, in um, the meeting, but what Councillor Hyde has proposed is quite a, a radical change um, to what I had previously considered. Um, and we have a, a committee um, next Tuesday. We could make that available uh, to talk about this in more detail. Um, and I think that would be worthwhile. And I assume that means we could then comply with the, the timeline because I understand this is time sensitive. Sorry, I'm just asking, um, uh, Sue, could you just tell us, um, sorry, CEO, just when it has to be submitted, what our time frame is? Uh, the bill is already before the parliament, uh, which reconvenes in early September. 
um, and the LGA requested input from councils by the 9th of August, so we've already stretched that deadline to be able to bring it to tonight's meeting. Through you, Lord Mayor, we can just seek a, um, an extent, a further extension, uh, but that can't be guaranteed. Yeah. Okay, members, sorry, I'm just trying to see whether we can um, uh, bring it in any other way. Councillor Kerr? Uh, can I speak to the uh, amendment? To the, the amendment? deferral? Yeah, to the deferral. Yes. I speak against the deferral. Um, I think plainly the, uh, plainly the matter is time sensitive to the extent uh, that uh, any mischief caused by not litigating this subsequently uh, is outweighed by, by the issue of delaying this any further. The proposals put forward by the Deputy Lord Mayor uh, are not actually that complicated. Um, they are, there, are, there are very basic points and I'm going to be happy to speak to those points. I think we can satisfactorily litigate uh, this amendment here and now in the Chamber. Um, thank you, Councillor Kerry. Councillor Moran, you had a question? Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Can I ask us through you to the CEO, why, if it's time sensitive, are we only just getting it now? CEO? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. We've gone, gone through quite an extensive process to get to where we are. Sue, can you help us with um, explaining um, why it's not only now? Certainly, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the bill was only introduced to the Parliament um, on, I think, the 17th or 18th of June um, with our timeframes for council meetings. Um, this is a very large piece of legislation, 200 odd amendments um, that needed to be um, reviewed, analysed. There was also input from the Office uh, of Local Government as well as the Local Government Association. Their analysis also needed to be analysed and um, council members were actually informed of um, that preliminary analysis within about a week of, um, uh, of the bill being introduced. And there was um, significant communication via e-news and also um, an entire portal page on the council members portal um, to communicate and to um, inform council members about it. Um, and then in order to meet the meeting timeframes with the bill that was introduced, was introduced on the um, 16th of July, um, our meeting uh, requirements are that I would have needed to um, prepare a report within about a week on a very detailed, important matter for Council. Through you, Lord Mayor. And um, was thank you. Members, if Council, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, it's very clear what members are trying to achieve by arguing for a deferral here, Lord Mayor. Um, they're trying to make it so that we cannot submit to this process. I think they're trying to frustrate our ability to provide input into this process. They're trying to frustrate our ability to provide input specifically that says we should have tougher penalties for members that misbehave. And I wonder why they'd be suggesting that. They're also trying to frustrate our ability to have input into, a, in, into this legislative process. Lord Mayor, that that's request, false, that's false that or misleading request, information. That request, <laughs> That requests we stop councillors from disseminating false and misleading information. Okay, thank you. I think we are not. We are. We actually are debating the whether we defer or well, not. Well, that's precisely why we shouldn't defer, Lord Mayor. Well, we that's will go to a vote whether we defer, defer or not. Um, I'm actually just seeing whether there's possibility of bringing this in before the special council meeting on Thursday. That would be good. Should we need to defer? Yep, through Lord Mayor, that's, that's quite feasible if that's what Council wishes to do. Okay. So, members? Um, members, I'm going to go to Councillor Martin to sum up and then we'll vote on the deferral. Well, look, uh, Lord Mayor, let me just say that uh, it is clear from the administration it can be deferred till Thursday. I do not understand the full impact of these amendments, and some of them are actually at odds with what the administration has recommended. Now, I appreciate that some members of the team have had a chance to discuss this privately before this meeting. We have not, and therefore we don't understand the full impact. Whoops, whoops, point of clarification. Uh, the slur has been cast that I have both uh, made uh, a decision on this by um, without resort to the facts, and so secondly, that I've secondly that I've done so uh, in a factual matter. Those those are both factually incorrect. Those are a sad slur from a sad Thank man. Thank you very much, Councillor Kira. Can we, if we can, please, members, Councillor Martin. 
Yeah, Lord Mayor, look, um, when members stand up and say that I have sufficient information that I can speak to these points, and they see the document at the same time I do, you can't blame me for thinking that maybe they've had an opportunity to view it before. That is that is all I'm saying. Okay, thank you. Well, in that case, it cannot be said that you are sufficiently equipped to deal with the basic points. I can read. <laughs> members, <laughs> Councillor Martin. Uh, Lord Mayor, look, uh, I would ask members to defer this. I, I recognise that they have the numbers and that these are going to be approved no matter what happens, but at least I would like to know what I'm being done on. I would really like to understand how I'm being done yes. and then they can do me. Thank you, Councillor Martin. So let's do this. Um, <laughs> if we can actually go I'm, to the vote, we will I'm, vote I'm on just, the deferral. Those in I'm favour? Just responding to over there. Those in favour of a deferral, those against, that is lost. Division. Council members, a division has been called on the amendment. Could all those in favour of the amendment please stand and remain standing for all names have been called? Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Sims and Councillor Moran. Now members, we have in front of us um, the alternate motion. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor has spoken. Councillor Kouros, I have you got down, I have you Councillor Sims. Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak? Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I won't be voting for this. Um, I have some really um, strong concerns about elements of um, this variation that has been presented uh, tonight. I guess chief among those is um, the change that really I think threatens the autonomy of um, local government, and that is the capacity for us to set our own rates. Um, and I'm concerned about the um, process that Councillor Hyde has proposed. Um, I do think that's an assault on the autonomy of local government and the capacity for us to set our rates and to do so in accordance with what we consider to be in the best interests of the community and the people that we um, represent. Um, I uh, also, Lord Mayor, am concerned about the failure of uh, the government to take into account, I think, some of the major issues um, facing the local government sector in a meaningful way. I know the advice of, um, of Ms uh, Rundell regarding the consideration of um, party, political party memberships and the declaration of those um, during elections. I understand that that's not part of the legislation. It may well be something that the government chooses to do later through regulation. Um, and that concerns me, Lord Mayor, because I do think that's a key uh, challenge for the local government sector to manage. Um, it does concern me if you have people who are um, members of a, a team or a faction or a political party um, that work together during, the, during an election campaign um, and uh, get elected and then um, work together when they're elected, um, when the voters don't know about that association um, during the election. Um, and I think an easy way to manage that would be to uh, require declarations of membership of political parties or factions or, or teams or, or the like, so that voters are able to make an informed choice. Um, and that's not covered within the, the legislation. And I think that's a, a big um, mistake. So on that basis, Lord Mayor, um, based on what's in this, um, and also what's uh, left out, I won't be supporting the um, alternative motion. I urge others to vote against it similarly. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kira. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm prepared to vote uh, in favour of this amendment, having seen it for the first time tonight uh, in the chamber. Uh, I think it is fair, it is it is straightforward. And I think that Councillor Sims, uh, with respect to uh, autonomy and with respect to rates, I think Councillor Sims raises a fair point, uh, and that is the question of local sovereignty uh, and ceding local sovereignty, um, which 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 is arguably the case in this instance. However, uh, I think there's a couple of uh, issues mitigating against that. Firstly, uh, there is a way out uh, for councils who seek uh, to uh, have a rate uh, increase outside of the prescribed CPI limit. Uh, there is a, a, a prescription in there. And may I say, in saying all this, may I just add, 
But these are submissions. These are submissions only. Uh, there are further checks and balances down the train from here. Um, but uh, on, on the matter of local sovereignty, uh, we have to balance. This is a balancing act. Yes, what Councillor Sin says uh, is a fair point uh, about losing sovereignty to raise rates. But we've got to balance in the interests of local government and rate payers, the long-term uh, well-being of the local government sector uh, in recognising that if we don't undertake these sorts of measures, if we don't uh, speak out now in favour of fiscal rectitude, particularly post-COVID, we don't do that. And we don't add the, what I think are absolute no-brainer provisions on uh, member behaviour, given the media uh, we have had uh, thus far this term. If we don't do this, there'll be every political impetus for the amalgamation of councils, the super councils, uh, and for essentially the wrecking ball to go through the entire local government sector. That is the uh, that is the other side of the equation that I submit we must uh, take into account. I think these uh, I think these measures in total, fiscal rectitude and dealing properly with member behaviour, are actually very uh, constructive suggestions that will be only for the overall strengthening of the local government sector and for the credibility of local government going forward. Members, Councillor Martin. Uh, Lord Mayor, look, I, I will vote against this. Um, I moved a deferral um, and I am now speaking. Um, I'm motion. sorry, Councillor Martin, you moved the motion to amend so you can't speak. This, this needs to be amended. I mean, it really is. Councillor, <laughs> Councillor Martin, I'm very sorry. Um, members, if not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor. Oh, sorry, Councillor Kuros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I thank Councillor Kira for pointing out that this is just a submission. So it's not a change, it's a submission. Um, and it, just to help some councillors in regards to this, um, them thinking uh, what they're thinking, um, I approached the Deputy Lord Mayor about my concerns that I don't think this is strong enough and pointed out some points that um, I feel that might be need to be considered. Um, and he uh, um, took them on board and I appreciate that. And, and my concerns... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, oh. My What's concerns... You have to discuss it. I, I have talked about my concerns, aren't I? Uh, excuse me, Lord Mayor, am I allowed to do that? Am I allowed to talk about my concerns of a particular document to another councillor? Yeah. You just said that you've done it, that the team hasn't discussed it. I said I did something with the Deputy Lord Mayor only. You're not in the team. So, councillors, please. Councillor Kouros is speaking. <laughs> councillor Kouros said she spoke to the Deputy Lord Mayor. If that is what she said. There are some concerns that I had that we really needed to have a more stronger policy in regards to uh, the uh, code of conduct. Um, I actually believe that we need to have a third party involved and that having the Minister's panel that has been suggested in this document is a really great idea. Um, and it's really great to have a third party to have a look at in regards to the conduct of the councillors. Um, I feel that um, it, these, that's what these amendments are, and I feel that it's really required to ensure that we um, that all councillors uh, act in accordance and the code of conduct is really adhered to. And at times, I've been feeling that this does not happen currently, and it needs to be a lot stronger. Um, so I appreciate um, the concerns on the uh, the changes here, but they're not that many, and they're not that detailed. Um, so I do support this, they're only minor. Um, we have been looking at this document for quite some time. We have had uh, a workshop on it, we had discussed it, we had questions that we could have asked and raised on it to administration. We've gone through it, uh, it through the, uh, received information through emails. Um, so I've had read, read this document many times and um, you know if there was more that anyone wanted to add to the submission there was plenty of opportunity to do so. Um, so a deferral on minor matters was not completely necessary. Thank you Councillor Kouros. I have Councillor Abri today. Oh, Councillor Moran, did you have a question? No. Oh, sorry. Did I have Councillor Moran first? Thank you, Councillor Brigham's name. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, Apologies. look, I, I don't like the fact that we are accepting... Um, oh, apologies, Councillor Moran. Governments are saying that you can't speak because you seconded the amendment. My apologies. Um, Councillor Abraham's name. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I do rise to speak uh, in favour of this amendment. 
Um, one thing that did uh, stick out to me, Lord Mayor, and that is the point around code of conduct. I believe that that, uh, that point there uh, will actually increase uh, accountability for us uh, as elected members. I think um, we as elected members, we sometimes forget <coughs> that we are community leaders, that we are there to set the example and that we're not above the law. So there should be uh, um, uh, adequate punishment if we do step out of line and uh, breach legislation. So I do uh, commend this, uh, this amendment to the Chamber. And just reminding everybody, this is for local, the local government sector, not just for the City of Adelaide. Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I don't support any of the items other than the final one, disseminating intentionally false or misleading information. That makes sense. Um, I don't think we need to be referring anything to the Minister's panel at this level. The CEO does a great job and is, is, uh, is able to streamline things and avoid further red tape. Uh, we definitely don't need to be looking at a great cap. Uh, we are the ones with information that is relevant to our domain and deferring to um, a minister on where we should be setting our rates uh, is contrary to us managing our own affairs. Um, and in regard to the other matters that I've referenced without going back to s 80 b S86, um, there was nothing in there that I think we need to be elevating to another level when we can manage it in-house ourselves, but I would support the final one. Thank you. Uh, so, members, I'll go back to the... So, you have a question, Councillor Marshall? Yes, I have a couple of questions. Um, I'm looking for some clarity around these matters. Which uh, could the administration advise? Which of these amendments have been discussed at committee in terms of the amendment proposed? Uh, CEO. Three Lord Mayor, none that I'm aware of. Oh, it's the first time tonight, okay. Um, has there been any discussion of 62 at page 256? Uh, that is, that there is a punishment for councillors uh, if in the event they disclose a reasonably known matter was confidential and, and um, uh, what was the basis of that conversation at committee? CEO, I will pass to you. Can you please clarify the question again? Thanks. Well, um, it seemed to me that this was brand new and I'm asking, was there a discussion at committee about um, the disclosure of matters that were reasonably known or possibly could have been known to be confidential? Could we have that discussion? I, I just can't remember it. Through the not to my knowledge. Okay, um, thank you. A and at uh, 279, page 279, um, did we discuss at committee putting into this submission that council should meet from 2 p.m.? Uh, I can't remember that. Thanks, Sue. I believe when this, uh, through you, Lord Mayor, I believe that when the uh, CEO in Introduced the item that uh, he flagged that for members' information. Not not in council debate, but, but it has no, actually come in through council. It's been voted on, Councillor Martin. Oh right, okay. And, and, and moreover, um, uh, at uh, eighty-one, page two eighty-one, did we discuss at council uh, or committee um, that all council meetings should be by Zoom? See ya. Uh, sorry, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, I don't recall that being a position of council. Sorry, what page was that, Councillor Martin? Uh, that is on uh, page 28181, giving the authority to the presiding member and the CEO to make all council meetings Zoom meetings. Um, I'll go to the CEO. CEO, did you wish to, to respond to that? Because it is uh, under the emergency management order that we're able to do it. So. Just need to clarify the question, Councillor. Yeah, yeah. Look, uh, I'm uh, happy to read it to you. Um, at page 28181, and I can't remember us uh, discussing it. Actually, it might be the wrong page. Sorry, what I is do. this section? I do apologise. It's um, page 28181. Section 19. So, members, it's section 90, if those of you... Uh, it know. is 90, not 80. That was my typo. So, uh, currently, section 90, among others, 
uh, provides for emergency health measure electronic meetings meetings to be held in public except in circumstances uh, and the uh, the explanation says that it would enable us to meet at council by zoom is that correct can't find it Sue, can you help us with this? Yes, through you, Lord Mayor. It's page 14 of attachment B, which yep. relates to section 90 of the Local Government Act. The proposal here was um, highlighted by the Chief Executive Officer in introducing the matter at committee last week from my memory. And this is not, um, this uh, proposal does not propose that all meetings be by Zoom. It proposes that the government consider whether provision should be made That's for right. um, an ability to um, provide for elect electronic participation um, should there be future circumstances such as emergencies where that might be necessary um, or if there were a direction um, under the health and safety uh, provisions brought in by this Okay. I thought um, that a member not attend, then that would give an option for that member to attend electronically that's rather than not attend. Yep, no, that's um, the point. Thank you. That was the one I, I don't remember us discussing that. But. Thank you, um, Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, just one final question. Uh, when this matter is voted on uh, and there is a division, uh, may I ask that the submission to the state government record what the vote was? Uh, you can request that. I think I'm not sure. I think I have to put that in the uh, in the motion. So, members, members, please. I am talking to the CEO. Through Lord Mayor, that would be a departure from our current practice and would require it to be included in the recommendation on the resolution. Okay. Um, now I will go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up, um, and just with a question whether you want to take this in parts, given that there's some. Um, Split support within the. Okay. To you to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, oh, cover off. I suppose I'll just make a comment on that on that last point. Yes, yes, it absolutely does include. If we've read our papers, um, uh, you know, the Zoom, or well, well, the electronic meeting capability. Because what happens if um, what happens if there's a natural disaster in January, when we're not scheduled to be here? Um, and let's say we don't have a quorum because a number of councillors are perhaps one day in the future living overseas, overseas or interstate. Living overseas? Yeah, not living overseas, councillor. They're on holiday, which I think you've got scheduled for next month. But um, uh, if, if, we, if, we, if we make allowances for that, that's important to ensuring business continuity in case of an emergency. Um, there are many improvements to come out of the COVID-19 pandemic and making allowances for electronic meeting during natural disasters, I think perhaps we can entertain as one of them. Um, similarly as well, uh, submitting that we uh, should be able to uh, make the meeting time uh, before 5 p.m. I think is a very good is a very good step. Um, uh, I think it's, it's very, very sad um, that we had uh, two members um, in this chamber, the ones who no longer work full time, hold the rest of us here, hold the rest of us here, um, uh, you know, force us, force us. Deputy Lord Mayor, we are talking to the amendment in front of you. To meet, to the, meet at this time, there's a lot of content. The alternate motion the, as opposed in a, in a, to in previous attachment, motions. In attachment A. In attachment A, there's a, there's a lot of content. There's a lot of good content, and I think uh, the team have done a fantastic job pulling it all together. This just tidies up a few things um, uh, around the edges. Of course, um, uh, just to, to Councillor Donovan's point regarding the Minister's panel as opposed to the CEO, of course, we have a wonderful CEO at the moment, but some councils might not have wonderful CEOs, and perhaps you never know, circumstances could arise where there is a CEO uh, whose contract renewal is approaching. Uh, they might not want to discipline a councillor. Um, if you know that that may be that may be a question. The 62 councillors in South Australia that may be a situation that may arise. That's why that's why the discussion I had with Councillor Kouros was that we should remove it and put it at arm's length. And so 
I think those those first couple of sections there in the amendment um, uh, speak to that important check and balance. That's why it's there. Um, uh, regarding uh, rate capping, well, I suppose if you're not voting uh, for this, then you're voting to not support lower council rates. Um, regarding 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 Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, the Deputy um, Lord Mayor is speaking. Perfect timing. Councillor Moran, Deputy Lord Mayor, behavior, is speaking. Perfect timing. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Perfect timing, perfect timing, because if members vote against this, they're voting against supporting stricter penalties for misbehaving elected members. They are voting Councilor against Moran, supporting that. You are. Um, uh, and I would be very happy to come down to North Adelaide, if I could have 30 seconds more, Lord Mayor, come down to, Lord, uh, to North Deputy Adelaide. Lord Mayor, please wait. I need leave of the meeting if you are to have extra time. Members. Sorry, I do need to see hands if you want some extra time. That is the number. Thank you. Very happy, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, and and I'd always be happy to entertain, you know, putting on there exactly who voted for this. Um, uh, I think it's going to be a point of great discussion um, around the city of Adelaide. If you're voting uh, against tougher penalties for misbehaving elected members, you're voting against lower council rates. Um, I think that's something that North Adelaide ratepayers in the city might want to know about. In fact, I might even put out a newsletter about it. I might even put out a newsletter about it, Lord Mayor, to let everyone know that some of their councillors do not want tougher penalties on misbehaviour. They do do not want lower council rates. And I think it would be read with great, great Councillor Moran, interest. if you need to be quiet while the other members are speaking. Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, if you do not stop, I will ask you please to leave. Well, I will not stop, so you better ask me. Please. Well. Get the security guard in, Sammy. Oh. Don't say what you can't proceed with. You let I can proceed away. with. You, you Councillor you Moran, can you please stop? Councillor Moran. It's one rule for us and one rule for It is not. It is the same rule for the Chamber. Yes, it is. It is I mean, look what you're doing now. It is the same rule for the chamber. I'm frustrated and angry with the way that we constant interruptions do not help debate. If we could actually stick to the debate of the motion in the chamber, it would be much appreciated. Members, we will go to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. That is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please stand and remain standing till all names have been called? Yes, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kara, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Kunal. Members, that takes us, I think we've got just a few few more and then we will go for a break. So 10.6 uh, is the 2020 LGFA annual general meeting, which is held at the same time or the same day as the LGA general meeting. Uh, the first a procedural, then a nomination. So for procedural, if I could have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Canole. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Members? Councillor Canole? Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, thank you, that is carried. I will now look for a nomination and that's a council representative for the 2020 Local Government Finance Authority Annual General Meeting. I'll ask for nominations. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Lord Mayor, I nominate Councillor Kouros. Councillor Kouros, do you accept the nomination? Thank you. Members, are there any other nominations? Well, Councilor... Quick question, Lord Mayor, is this another paid position? Uh, not to my knowledge, it's, it's... It's not. Thank you. Um, members, any other nominations? Uh, if not, I'll ask someone who moves that Councillor Kouros be the. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, Councillor, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, someone? Someone. Members to the vote, those in favour? Uh, no, it's not a paid position. Uh, Lord one Mayor, one moment. moment. One moment. Thank you. So I was just doing the council representative. Thank you. Um, so that is Councillor Kouros that has. Uh, did I do the vote just then? Sorry. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. I now call for nomination for the Local Government Finance Authority Board, um, and uh, which is whether we put forward a nomination for that. Now that is a 
a paid position. So we have to decide whether to put forward a nomination. Councillor Abraham today. Uh, I nominate uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Deputy Lord Mayor, do you accept the nomination? Can Councillor Kouros nominate for this in addition to being the representative uh, of the AGM? Yes. I'll refuse the nomination and nominate Councillor Kouros. Councillor Kouros, do you accept the nomination? Councillor Sims? I nominate Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, do you accept the nomination? No. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other nominations? Thank Deputy Lord Mayor. I nominate Councillor Moran, Mackey and Sims. Councillor Moran, Mackey and Sims, do you accept the nomination? Uh, there's no point. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Thank you, members. Um, if there are no further nominations, I will ask Councillor Kouros if you would state your conflict. I uh, have an actual conflict. Thank you. And if you'd like to leave the chamber for the moment, Councillor Martin, is that a question? No, yes, it is a question, Lord Mayor. If you accept this position on the Local Government Finance Association and the Local Government Association, do you have to advocate for the Council's position at the LGA, for example, on rate capping and the like? This, this is actually to put forward a nomination. It doesn't mean you're appointed to the board. No, but if you are appointed, does that mean you have to put forward Council's position on those things? Uh, no, it's not the President of the LGA. This is actually for the Local Government Finance Authority Board, so their deliberations in terms of policy positions. Okay, thank you for that. Well, I would assume there are policy positions because it's a board, so, so I, but I can't tell you what they are. Um, so, members, uh, I need a mover for Councillor Cross. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Seconded, Councillor Canole. Uh, members, if not, to sum up. Uh, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, could you ask Councillor Cross to come back in? Um, and also the third part, which was part of the procedural, just noting that there's a call for motions for the annual general meeting, um, which I'm sure will come through on your newsletter and everything else. So if members got um, motions they'd like to be considered. Um, number 17, 10.17 is the nominations for the LGA president. Um, members, I'm the only member that qualifies uh, for the nomination of LGA president as I'm on Garrick, and you have to be on Garrick or Sarah to be, or Garrick actually, to be nominated, uh, but I'm not seeking nomination. Uh, so therefore I'd like to ask for an amendment or a variation, sorry, that we note the report. If I could have someone move that we note the report. Oh, lots of hands. Um, thank you, Councillor Kira, second Councillor Martin. Uh, members, not go to Council Kerr to sum up. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Thank you. Um, and 10.18 is the APLA business plan and budget, and I'll look for a mover, Deputy Lord Mayor, look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Canole. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? No, Councillor Canole, no members? Councillor Martin. Yeah, just a, a question for the administration. Um, the 2019-20 budget included $100,000 to be spent on seeking World Heritage listing for parklands, and I believe an additional allocation at a later time. Was that money spent? Um, I'll go to the CEO. I was going to answer yep. that one. <laughs> Thanks, Clinton. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, indeed, Councillor. The um, expert report on the World Heritage listing was commissioned through APLA and uh, I think they're expecting the, that report to be returned to them soon. Uh, following the um, receipt of that report, they'll bring, um, or administration will bring a report into um, committee for discussion with council. And uh, further, Lord Mayor, no allocation has been sought for 2021 and it, it is proposed that APLA uh, does not pursue World Heritage listing of the parklands and the city squares. That is um, actually not correct, Councillor Martin. The um, allocation of funding for 2021 is in the council budget. For? For the World Heritage bid. Okay, and, but the business plan says, and do correct me if I've got it wrong, that it's been determined by APLA that it will pursue World Heritage listing in association with uh, the hills, isn't it? Uh, right. that's, that will be, that is the point of the report. So once the report comes through, then that will be pursued. 
I see. And, and how does that affect then um, Council's uh, endorsement of World Heritage nomination for the city and parklands on the 18th of the 10th, 2018? Um, that is it's not part of the budget business and um, business plan, but I will ask the CEO whether Clinton wants to comment on that. Thanks, Clinton. Uh, sorry, Councillor, through the chair, could you please repeat that question? Yes. Um, uh, on the 18th of the 10th, 2018, uh, I understand that there was a uh, an approval by Council of the Parklands Authority pursuing World Heritage listing for the parklands and the squares. Subsequently, it's now determined that we are not doing that, that we are pursuing a listing of the parklands. As I read it, I'm happy to be corrected. Yeah, the so parklands it, and it, the hills. That it, isn't determined yet. It was, um, so the World Heritage listing, if you don't, sorry, if, um, as chair, I'll respond to that. So um, it went to the minister for consideration. He asked whether we would consider, given that the Adelaide Hills already had a World Heritage submission and a bid that they were looking at, whether we could look whether there would be a combined or a separate bids. And that's what the research and the report is looking at. And, and will that ever come to council? Or? Uh, it will once it's been through our plan. And will pursuing heritage listing for the parklands in association with the bid for the hills, will, will that dilute our representation? Uh, that is the point of the research that has been done. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and just one further question, Lord Mayor. Um, I note that there's no funding for the Adelaide Parklands Prize because it's a biennial event. However, I understand that the Parklands Prize is at the end of this year. That is correct. It was deferred because of COVID. Um, but I believe it's back into its normal um, timing when we go back to 2022. So uh, the deferred event is funded uh, by council? Uh, the deferred is, it is the event that was supposed to happen earlier this year. It's just been deferred to December because so of COVID. So the funding from the previous financial year. Correct. Yes, thank you. Yep. Member, are there other, any other questions on the business plan and budget for the Adelaide Parklands Authority? If not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members, I am going to uh, suggest we take a break before we get to the next items on the agenda. Um, I, there are um, some uh, light refreshments in the Esther Jacobs room. Um, I think we'll take, uh, it's 10 to, so if I say we'll be back here by half past eight, is everybody happy with that? Oh, oh sorry, half past yeah. Members, do we want a half hour break? That's twenty past seven. Yeah. Uh, twenty past eight. Yeah. Half hour break. Yeah. Half hour. Half hour break. Half hour. Half hour. Half hour. Half members, you're all saying different things. Okay, I uh, will be back here at 20 past, half hour break. Thank you, members.
advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority in confidence. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder, Councillor Canole. Does anyone wish to speak to the um, to the motion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, I need a mover and a seconder for a motion to exclude the public for item 12.1.2, which is the recommendations advice of the audit committee. In confidence, a mover, Councillor Knoll, seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Um, members, does anyone wish to speak? If not, Councillor Knoll to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Uh, those against? Sorry, can I just see hands? Councillor Sims, are you voting? Oh, sorry, Lord Mayor. Yes, uh, Thank you. Uh, we look for a motion to exclude the public for item 12.2.1, which is the Lounders Boat Shed Cafe. Mover, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, seconder, Councillor Mackey. Uh, members, anyone wish to speak? If not, Councillor Abraham today. Summer. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Move for a second for a motion to exclude the uh, public for item 12.2.2 Brown Hill and Keswick Creek Stormwater Board board member appointments. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. And a seconder, Councillor Ho. Councillor Mackey, oh, does anybody wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Mackey to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Move for a second of four, uh, 12.2.3, which is e-scooter mobility services. Look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. And a seconder, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Abraham today. Oh, sorry, members, anyone wish to speak? Councillor Abraham today, sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, item 12.2.4, Capital City Committee update. Look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Seconder, Councillor Kouros. Members, not Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members of uh, the public and staff, thanks for attending this meeting. Um, those not associated with items 12.1.1, 12.1.2, 12.2.1, 12.2.2, 12.2.3 .2 and 12.2.4.
a quick, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm just going to open the doors. Apologies. And we will recommence the streaming. Uh, no, I'm going to 13 first and then I'll go to 14. Mm -hmm. um, so, members, uh, this is my presiding member's report for the 11th of August. As you're aware, our new 2020-2024 strategic plan commenced on the 1st of July with our vision to make Adelaide one of the most livable cities in the world, which I already think it is, but I think we should be number one. Um, this is underpinned by our four key outcomes, which includes environmental leadership. So I just thought I'd give you some of the updates of uh, the work that we've been doing in the last month. In the past two council terms, we've been particularly active in our city greening efforts. So in 20, since 2014, 14, we've planted more than 1,500 street trees and more than 800 parkland trees through our regular works. In addition to that, it's worth noting that the external projects run by government agency, including DIPTI, have also planted trees in our parklands as a result of key projects. The Torrens Junction project, for example, delivered 1,100 new oil replacement trees as part of their landscape upgrade. Um, so part of the reporting that we're looking at uh, going in through um, APRA is so that we can actually bring in the numbers of trees on a regular basis. Um, as presiding member, I've been working with other APLA board members to deliver the first strategic plan, which is required under the new charter. This will be further discussed in next month's meeting. However, we've highlighted four key objectives uh, being culture, management and protection, the environment and advice. And I look forward to presenting a draft to council in the coming months. At tonight's meeting, we'll consider, uh, we did actually consider the new draft waste management strategy to align with Cedar of Adelaide's sustainability goals, improve waste management and achieve the council endorsed motion becoming zero, the, world, the first zero waste city in Australia. Um, we also uh, endorsed the City of Adelaide's submission to the inquiry into urban greening space and the submission outlined benefits, opportunities and challenges in relation to urban greening in the City of Adelaide with a focus on climate change, greening, water management, native uh, biodiversity and urban strategic planning. Um, it also provided advice on the resource allocation to urban green space. In the past month around the environment, environmental uh, area. I also met with the Minister of Environment and Water, the Honourable David Spears MP, uh, with regards to water quality of the River Torrens, the World Heritage bid for the Adelaide Parklands and the Zero Waste Initiatives. Uh, we welcomed participants to an online series of carbon neutral Adelaide business forums, which is being run to provide easy access to information on energy and emissions management for local businesses. I met with the Executive Director, Climate Change and Sustainability Services from Ernst & Young, and a um, bit of a stretch, but I hosted an afternoon tea for the success, successful bidders of a tea and tour at Lake Temple from the Water Aid Ball. Um, so if I could have someone move that that report be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Sin. Second, Councillor Mackey. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against? Thank you. Um, Members, I also did a formal report uh, as a presiding member's report, which would be item 13 that was distributed to you. Um, uh, just as a, um, a bit of a preamble to that, which is a um, looking for an amendment to the charter. Um, the, the report will change the ability for APLA to set its own agenda and meeting structure, which includes speaking time, workshopping, and the number of times that you can speak. Uh, the report will not change the composition of APLA, which is dictated under the uh, Adelaide Parklands Act. It will not change the key functions of APLA, and it won't change things such as quorum, voting weight, requirements to host meetings in public, distribution of genders, minutes, recordings of formal votes of the board, which is also covered on, under the Act. Um, it also will continue to have such things as deputations. Um, so that is um, just a quick overview. Uh, it was discussed with APLA on several occasions and went through unanimously um, through the APLA board last week. So I will look for a mover. Sorry, Lord Mayor, a question. Certainly, Councillor Sims. Can I just get a little bit more background on, on what precisely is being uh, proposed? Is there um, a reduction in the number of uh, APLA meetings? Are no. they moving to 
a committees or are there restrictions on the number of Nothing. times people can speak? Or no, no. What, what we're taking is away is the restrictions. So at the moment, uh, the charter has a clause which says we have to use the local government meeting regulations. We're trying to change that so it's in keeping with the other uh, subsidiaries set up under section 42, which basically means that um, instead of having to put up a hand and speak once, we work as a board. So they can speak as many times as they wish, they can ask questions, it's informal until we get to a recommendation. So all the advice will come to through to council in exactly the same way. Okay. And, but we have made sure that we, uh, in keeping with the Act, it's in public, we take deputations, so all of those things will still remain. And it, yes, Councillor Martin. Uh, can we have the same regulations for council, please? I would love to bring that into council. Actually, Councillor Martin, that would be great if we could change the Local Government Act to that, because those meeting regulations make it quite difficult. Um, so it really is, um, we worked through with the Appler Board, um, because a lot of them were struggling with the formality of the, uh, the regulations or the meeting requirements under Local Government Act. So I will ask for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Mackey, and a seconder. Um, thank you, Councillor Kouros. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak to it at all? Councillor Kouros? No. Members? If not, Councillor Mackey to sum up. No. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. Could I actually have that recorded as unanimous? Thank you. Um, thank you, members. Um, that takes us to council member reports, uh, item 14.1. Um, so I'll look for a mover, Councillor Pinnell. And uh, I'd also like to uh, seek leave of the, of the uh, council uh, to make a statement. Yes, I'll just ask for a seconder for the council. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Yes, Councillor Connell. Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank the meeting for granting me the leave to make this personal explanation in relation to my register of interest. Since the last meeting, the administration has arranged for me to take legal advice about the content and my register of interest obligations. The legal advice confirms and reinforces that my register of interest is accurate and up to date. Accordingly, there is, has not been any need to change or vary the information contained in the register and similarly no legal requirement to include additional information of the same kind in my ordinary return for the uh, 219 to 220 uh, year, which uh, a return I am due to provide to the CEO by the 28th of August. I trust that this is now satisfactory uh, and brings to end the, the speculation about my register of interests. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Canole. Um, members, there any other members wish to speak to council reports? If not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Councillor Canole? Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor? Um, I believe that was unanimous. So if so, I'd like that recorded as unanimous. Thank you. Um, members, that takes us to item 15 on the agenda, which is questions on notice. Um, I will take the questions on notice as read with leave of the meeting. Members, by a show of hands, we'll take those as read. Uh, thank you, members. Um, we will take 15.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 as read. And of course, the answers to those questions are on our website. Um, item 16 is questions without notice. Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. A question of clarity around the information uh, concerning the job losses here at the City of Adelaide. Have the two associate directors referred to in 4 at 15.4 been included in the total reduction of 48 full-time and permanent staff and 159 in total who've been removed, or are they additional? See you. Yeah, three, Lord Mayor. Associate directors aren't permanent members of staff, they are contracted members of staff. Uh, and they are covered in the question which asks then uh, whether or, or what the number of full-time permanent and contract staff are. They are included in that total of 48. Yep. And the correct. total of 159, it's not 161. Thank you. Um, has the CEO reported to or discussed with the Lord Mayor these sackings, uh, which uh, began some months ago? CEO. I'm not sure. Um, 
not sure who that question is directed at. But... <laughs> Three years old. Now, which seconds are you referring to? Uh, well, the job losses, uh, the 159 people who've gone. Have you discussed any of those with the Lord Mayor? 159 people over what period of time are you talking about? Since the beginning of February, according to the uh, response to the question on notice. Through you, Lord Mayor, um, the management of staff is entirely the responsibility of the CEO. Um, as such, um, I've taken decisions based on um, the best advice I've got. And so those actions have been taken by myself as CEO only. Um, I'm sorry, I, I don't think you understood the question. It was, um, have you uh, discussed or reported with, uh, reported to uh, or with the Lord Mayor those job terminations, those separations? Uh, it's not a question about whether you have the authority to do it. I'm asking, did you discuss it? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, I've had a number of discussions um, about the general intent, but no specifics. Okay. Um, the Local Government Act uh, requires the CAO to, to consult Council on major staff changes in service delivery. Sorry, it is. Uh, I think these uh, questions may be better on notice, Councillor. I think they've been asked and answered. Uh, no, well, I'm, I'm asking these arising from the answers that were given to the questions on notice, and they are very lengthy questions on notice. So I'm trying to uh, determine whether or not in this case um, uh, the CEO um, is relying on his authority to do that through the Local Government Act. CEO, if you want to take those on notice, I'm happy to take those on notice. Yeah, through the Mayor, we'll take those on notice, thanks. Okay, so if I ask any further questions, they'll be taken on notice, is that correct? Depends what the questions are, Councillor. This is, um, it's not an interrogation of no, the CEO. No, no, asking... um, so we've had three questions. If you have a further question on note without notice, then we'll see whether we take it or not. Oh no, Lord Mayor, look, I intended to raise these questions in a motion on notice I lodged, which you rejected as being not appropriate. Correct. Um, because you said that this is a matter for the CEO. So I can't raise it there, and so I'm raising it here now. Then you okay. put them on notice, Councillor. Okay, all right. Um, in response to the answer at five um, in question 15.6, is the, if the developer is still only hoping to submit a plan to SCAP next month, and seven months notice is required to the city as part of uh, the project delivery arrangements before a start can begin, does that mean the earliest date for the start of construction of the Central Market Arcade redevelopment would be June next year? Thanks, Ian. Sorry, could you just repeat a bit of that question through that all? Yeah, sure. Just repeat that question. In response to the answer at five to question 15.6, if the developer is still only hoping to submit a plan to SCAP next month, and seven months notice is required to the city. Uh, uh, this is after the city has considered the plan, by the way. And seven months notice is required to the city before a start can begin. Does, does that mean that the earliest date for the start of construction of the Central Market Arcade redevelopment would be June next year? And to be honest, it's hard to ascertain the earliest start because there are so many moving parts to the approval process. Um, the pre-lodgement process and then the, the finalisation of the details. So I'm not in a position to answer the earliest date, to be, to be honest, Council. Well, um, look, the reason I ask this is because market traders, uh, market arcade traders are asking me and others, um, will, if these delays follow, they be offered an extension of their lease arrangements? Um, through the Lord Mayor, we're in extremely close consultation with all the tenants of the Central Market Arcade as well as um, ACMA itself, uh, its new chair and its new board members. Um, and and those, that, those consultations, discussions, conversations are extremely positive, um, extremely positive. And we're in, in regular contact with obviously the arcade tenants, um, both in writing and verbally. Um, Tom McCready, myself and others, uh, are down there regularly. So uh, as the situation evolves, we'll be keeping people informed. 
Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm pleased, Lord Mayor, that there is such close contact, but I was asking if the project is delayed, will the leases for the central market arcade trade uh, stall holders or stall holders be extended? Uh, and I couldn't discern an answer there. Uh, to the Lord Mayor, it's a hypothetical question, so we're in that situation, it would depend on, on whether the developer or the approval process takes place. But um, obviously, from our perspective, if um, we, we would like to keep the, the tenants in place as long as possible and also support them, which we are now, for those who may want to lish, uh, lose, uh, sorry, move early to, uh, to the premises. Okay. And look, Lord Mayor, um, this one is urgent. Uh, it has been raised by a number of ratepayers with me. On Saturday, the advertiser reported that the Southern Cross Arcade would be raised and a tower constructed in its place with the footprint running back to James Place. Is the administration able to advise publicly whether the development includes the demolition of the adjoining Sands and McDougal building or any other heritage listed building? And if so, which? Through you, Lord, Lord Mayor, I'm happy to get that information and provide it to council members. Uh, and will that information be public or, or confidential? I'll need to assess whether it is confidential. I see. And Council recently completed an expensive but uh, welcome refurbishment of the public conveniences in James Place. I've been asked, will those be affected by the redevelopment and how? Through you, Lord Mayor, I'll include that information. And will that be confidential as well? I'll take advice. Okay. And one final question, and this has come from a number of ratepayers, as the administration knows. Um, could the administration provide details, and I'm happy to accept an estimate, of the number of complaints it's received about the new waste collection contractor in the City of Adelaide, and how it is responding to the persistent complaints that garage doors have been damaged, trees have been damaged, bins have been crushed, and bin lids have been ripped from the top of bins. CEO. <laughs> Through you, Lord Mayor, there's no chance I could have that information to hand, so um, I'll have to take it on that. No one in um, your team could answer that? Uh, and I ask this sincerely because there are a lot of people who are very agitated about this. So, that, so Councillor, um, the CEO said he will actually take that one on notice and we'll distribute a response to you once we've had a look at what is coming in. Thank you. Um, thank you. Members, that takes us to item 17, which is motions on notice. And we start with 17.1, a Councillor Martin motion on notice mental, no, meeting, mental health, <laughs> meeting health and safety. Um, I know, sorry. Um, so, Councillor Martin. Um, and I'll look for a second. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, Councillor Martin and Councillor Sims has seconded. Councillor Martin. Yes, look, thank you. Um, look, uh, you are right. Um, mental health is an issue, as is physical well-being. With uh, the way in which these meetings are dragging on, now I acknowledge this one's not bad. Uh, we started at five thirty, and we've been. Oh, the clock uh, doesn't work. Yep, and it's still only five thirty. Uh, no. Yes, it's at nine. It is a miracle. Uh, look, time, time goes. Time yeah, just time like stops. Flies when you have fun. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. Um, we're in. We're in a bubble. <laughs> but look, you know, I, seriously, I say to you that people's. Uh, health and well-being is put at risk. Uh, we have uh, one elected member who, on medical advice, doesn't believe that they can attend these long meetings uh, in the early hours. And some of our meetings, Lord Mayor, have gone to one, two, and I think we had one at 4 a.m. 3.24, uh, there was one. 3.24? Yes. Uh, well, I was 20 oh, 3.19, my apologies. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, we have another who's required to start their day at 6.30, no matter what time we finish. And uh, we have another councillor who's worried about their employment. Uh, they have to be at peak form early in the morning. Uh, and uh, to not be at this time is putting uh, unnecessary pressure on them. And, and frankly, Lord Mayor, uh, I've got to tell you, my health uh, suffers from this. Uh, whenever we have one of those long meetings, and some of them are extraordinarily long, then uh, I find it 
it takes a couple of days to recover. But uh, quite apart um, from the um, interjections, um, and, and I do know that there's no attempt to address the interjection. Uh, and uh, look, Lord Mayor, I take it all in my stride. Earlier this evening, I was called a dick. Um, I, and, I'm sorry, I did not hear that. No, um, no, Councillor no, Kerr, if you'll let Councillor Martin finish speaking. It would, be really, it would be really good because this, this is the, the kind of abuse that's not appropriate. Um, but uh, quite apart from the legitimate concern of elected members about these uh, meetings, I am worried too about the impacts on our staff. Now, I know this evening there are not many staff here, but there are staff who are important and who, after completing, if not a full day, then certainly a very long day, have to make their way home. A and frankly, uh, I would be concerned if it were a member of my family who was driving home late at night in these weather conditions, or even alternatively, I would be concerned about a family member getting in in these COVID times to a, a vehicle that's operated by a taxi driver or Uber or whatever. Um, now, I understand there is a political imperative here. I get that. I do understand that. But the problem for me is that the political imperative appears to be being placed before the health and well-being of elected members and staff. And so I Thank ask you, with this motion for the support of elected members in postponing where meetings go to extraordinarily lengthy hours. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, to me, this really is uh, common sense. Um, I think the, the new uh, meeting structure, from my perspective, has uh, not been successful. Um, I really lament the fact that we're about to be moving into what I regard as the business end of the meeting. That is the proposal from the actual elected representatives of this council, those that have a mandate to represent the community, and we'll be speaking in front of an entirely empty chamber. And I noted um, earlier, Lord Mayor, there were members of the public that were here um, who I assume were interested in some of the items that were going to be coming up for discussion that have had to leave. So is the war of attrition that um, this council has become. Now, I see Councillor Hyde Gafori. I understand it serves his interests to um, deal with his unpopular proposals in the dead of night in front of an empty room. But it doesn't suit um, democracy in this uh, council, Lord Mayor. Um, so from my perspective, it's been a very, very disappointing um, development. I think it, it really has changed the character of the level of government that is most closely connected to the people, to the community. Um, and I think that's a real shame because the community have been disenfranchised by this change. But more so than that, it has achieved nothing in terms of improving the outcomes or the culture of um, this council. Uh, yeah, and sorry. it's made, in my experience, uh, people far less attentive. Uh, people are frustrated. I see um, you know, people talking while others are talking. I see uh, the constant eye rolling um, when uh, certain members dare to raise questions. Um, and not to mention, of course, the impact uh, that this new structure has on you know, those of us who work other jobs or um, who don't have the luxury of sitting on paid committees and boards that we can use to supplement our council um, uh, salary, as some members of this council do. Um, it does, I think, place an undue burden on um, some councillors. And um, Lord Mayor, it's not good for health or wellbeing. And this is really well documented. There's a lot of research that shows that working uh, late shift has um, a negative impact in terms of risk of developing cancer, uh, risk of developing heart failure, stroke. Uh, Councillor Hyde's laughing again, but again, I'm just citing what the research um, says. And so, you know, it's really not sensible to be sitting here till three or four in the morning. I do fear for our staff, um, who many of whom are expected to get home in the early hours of the morning and then to work a full business day. Um, to me, this is just pure insanity. And in any workplace, if you're meeting for five or four and a half hours, you'd say, let's adjourn and meet again. So I think what Councillor Martin is proposing is very sensible. I fear this will be voted down. I can't fathom why. 
Um, but whether or not this has been a success, the proof is in the pudding and I urge members to consider the empty chamber before them. Thank you. Members, any other speakers? I will just, um, sorry, Councillor Knoll. Yeah, just a couple of words. Um, uh, I, I pick up on the word uh, culture and I, I dare say culture is how we react and interact. It has little, little to do with, with the, the length of time of the meetings, but the way that we, we uh, treat each other is certainly something that's more on a personal level rather than a time issue. And if we did, if we were a bit more respectful, and I say that to many councillors, that this would go a lot quicker and we wouldn't need to have the length of time uh, for these meetings because we are dealing with the issues at hand rather than necessarily personal attacks. Um, this also does free up the rest of the, uh, the rest of the month. So that's very critical for me because we're now discussing things, we're now in, in, interrogating the, the, the very important issues and maybe these are important to us, but all the other things, the budgets and all the other things that we included in these meetings, they're important to the, uh, to the constituency as well. And I think we've got to remember those sort of things as well. And I do also note that uh, when we're talking about uh, uh, ill health and late shifts, they usually refer to continuous late shifts and that pattern uh, uh, is what actually creates illness rather than necessarily a late night because there would be a lot of young people who would have a lot of problems uh, with their weekends. And, uh, you know, and to work with that, again, if we work together, uh, even without uh, you know, a variety of opinions, etc., uh, we will get out earlier. And I think we just need to uh, keep that in mind. And I, I, I do appreciate that uh, it is, a, it is a, um, you know, a full council and full chamber issue, not necessarily any particular individuals, other than a couple of us that may be a little bit quieter. Councillor Connell. Um, members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Well, I think it's very unfair, Lord Mayor, for Councillor Sims to, um, in a roundabout way, blame councillors Moran and Martin for causing cancer in the way I think that's a bit that's a bit distasteful. Um, uh, of course, I think that's of course we. I think that's misleading, Councillor. Deputy Lord Mayor, we're here, here at the well, he wants talk to, draw to the motion. The comparison. We're here. Let's let's remember why we're here. We're here because we can't start at two p.m. effectively, and we can't start at two p.m. because we are held hostage yes. by the two members of council yeah. who do not work full time. And maybe we'll we're here because and so Lord Mayor, when it comes to oh, no. when it comes to health point, and point safety, point of, order, when it comes order, to actually order. members, members, if you could all please sit down, Deputy Lord Mayor, if you continue oh, and please actually stop casting aspersions on your fellow members, we are talking to the motion before us. Well, the motion before us, the motion before us is a farce, Lord Mayor. The motion before us is an absolute farce because uh, the mover has no credibility on health and safety. No credibility on health and safety. We will be here well into the night because, because of previous actions. And I will not be held hostage. I will not be held hostage and have to and have to move meetings. Councillor Moran, you can speak. You can actually speak in a minute if you'd like to. Just stop him saying that. That is not right, true. This is, this is, this is so my time. He doesn't know whether uh, Phil Martin and I work or don't work. Yes, I do, because okay. it would be on your register, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't be. The I same as uh, France has complained. Members, members, could you sit down, please? Me oh, Councillor Moran, if you wish to speak, I'm very happy to, for you to raise Lord, your hand and speak. Deputy Lord Mayor, we are speaking to Moran. we are speaking to this motion as to whether we want to adjourn the meeting after four and a half hours or not. Yes. Or no, so for or against, that's it. And Councillor, sorry, Lord Mayor, Councillor Moran just made an outrageous claim that France has failed to declare tens of thousands of. No, we are talking to this members. motion, Deputy Lord Mayor. It must be withdrawn. Deputy that Lord claim Mayor. must be withdrawn. Members, I heard it. Members, members. So because I don't declare an income on my members' benefit, it does mean that it's not mean that I don't work full time, just as France doesn't have to declare that. That is not an offensive thing to say. It's what France Councillor Moran, it is not your turn to speak. If you would like to put up your hand, I would be very happy to call you to speak. That is not how you operate in the council chamber in terms of interrupting constantly is not acceptable in this chamber. So that's, you think that's acceptable, do you? 
Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, if you are all going to constantly interrupt each other, we are going to be here well and truly late. Well, thanks to you guys, because you want one meeting Thank you, Councillor Moran, that is quite enough. Uh, excuse me, Councillor Moran, would I you like to repeat that for the Chamber? Yes, I would. I think the way this meeting is being conducted is a disgrace. That is not what you said. Exactly. And Councillor Moran, you are being disruptive and your behaviour is not acceptable in this chamber. I've never seen a council like it. For the record, I'm quite fond of your charity. I don't think you're in disgrace. But back to back to the topic at hand, adjourning meetings. I mean, this is this is going to turn what's one meeting probably into three meetings. Probably into three meetings. And it's going to turn it into three meetings because members continually abuse the process of the chamber, bringing questions into the chamber that should be asked in committee. Bringing constantly bringing those questions into the chamber when they've got the opportunity to ask them online. And if it's a matter of the public interest, committee is broadcast publicly as well. That's the forum for it. But instead, members engage in filibustering and trying to grind down their opponents. And that goes to Councillor Knoll's point about culture. That's what culture is, or, or, or isn't, rather. That's not what good culture is. And so um, I think this, this motion is an absolute farce. Um, it's rehashing uh, a previous debate, uh, a debate that's already been settled and voted on many, many times. Uh, councillors know what the answer is going to be here. I'm not going to be held hostage. Um, I'm not going to ask other uh, councillors to come back at other hours because I think they do actually have other commitments on other days of the week. You'd never know how long you'd be here for, Lord Mayor, and that's why this should be voted down. Thank you. Members. If uh, the CEO would like to make a comment. Through you, Lord Mayor, I just want to make something really clear, and that relates to the fact that I'm fully aware of the workplace health and safety requirements for staff. And I need to state clearly that we are not in breach of the workplace health and safety requirements at all for staff. And I have taken measures to ensure that um, staff's workloads are managed appropriately um, in and around council meetings. So I just want to make that clear for the record. Thanks. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go to Councillor Martin to sum up. And uh, what measures has, may I ask, the CEO taken to ensure the safety of staff and elected members travelling home in the early hours of the morning? Through you, Lord Mayor, I have taken appropriate action to ensure staff um, are managing their workload and are comfortable with the current arrangements. That's all I need to say. Uh, Councillor Martin, are you summing up? Oh, yes, look, I will, Lord Mayor. And look, I think um, the motion, which let me remind it, everyone, um, uh, contains the farcical words that Council, uh, according to uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, the farcical words that Council recognises the risks both to the health and safety of elected members and staff and to the quality of decision making after four and a half hours of continuous meeting. Now, that is not a farce, that's a recognition of the circumstances. And look, uh, I can't help but observe that what's happened here in the last 15 minutes illustrates that perfectly. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better response from the Deputy Lord Mayor, or Councillor Canole or Councillor Moran. We're all tired. We have been working all day long and we are here until this hour. Now, I know Councillor Coros is shaking her head, um, uh, looking scornfully at me. Um, but, but uh, Lord Mayor, can I just point of clarification? I mean, he's speaking on my behalf here and he's speaking for every councillor. Can you just speak? Councillor Corus, thank you. Sit down. Councillor Martin, please finish summing up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. So Councillor Corus is sitting there shaking her head, but it Im impacts on her as much as the rest of us. We are in a position where we're under enormous pressure to make decisions in circumstances that are less than ideal. As Councillor Kouros, Councillor Martin is summing up. And I would ask members to allow Councillor Martin to finish summing up. Thank you. Councillor Martin, my apologies. Well, I do apologise also for interrupting Councillor Kouros. Um, <laughs> 
not speaking, but look, I thank her for her contribution. I need say no more. This is a perfect illustration of why meeting beyond 10 o'clock at night is a foolish option for this council. And as to the suggestion that there's committee for questions to be asked instead of uh, our time being wasted by questions being asked, uh, I remind this meeting that matters were brought to this council, as indeed every council meeting, that have not been considered at committee. Indeed, motions that are circulated to others, but not to me. And so when I ask questions, I have a legitimate right to do so. When I ask why something is happening, I have a legitimate right to do so. And it is not appropriate to put pressure, as some of the councillors are, on saying, well, you're to blame for this, you're to blame for this. If you'd meet at two o'clock and allow us to have the rich person's council where people with uh, 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 child rearing or, or parent care or other other responsibilities during the day would be precluded from even attending a meeting or standing from standing for council. If you if you argue that, then you have misunderstood what this is all about. This is actually grassroots government. It's about representing people, and it's open to everyone, not just rich people. It's open to people from every walk of life. And I think it's a, a ludicrous proposal to say, meet at two and it fixes it. Members let's, to the, let's consider the health and safety of everybody. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. <laughs> Council members, the division has been called. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Donovan, oh, sorry, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Sims, and Councillor Moran. <laughs> it was lost. On oh, my apologies, the <laughs> motion was lost. Uh, Seventeen point two, protecting historic and significant buildings. Uh, Councillor Martin. Um, look, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I am uh, persuaded by the arguments that the administration put almost um, for withdrawing this. Um, I, I will withdraw it if the administration can just uh, uh, provide me with the information that the document proposed for October uh, and, and we will not meet, uh, well, no, we have one meeting before October. Um, uh, will that include a discussion of council's position on state heritage listed buildings and possible demolition. And if that assurance is given, I'll just sit down and withdraw it. See you later. See you later. Yeah, thanks, Clint. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, um, just to be sure on that, Councillor, could you please repeat the last part of that question? Thank you. Uh, yes, in the explanation from the administration, it suggested that a paper on these issues is being prepared for consideration of the elected body in October. I'm asking if that paper is including uh, the uh, uh, um, consideration of Council's position on state heritage buildings and their demolition within the city of Adelaide, um, then I have nothing to say. Um, but if that is not the case, then um, I'll continue. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, we can take that into consideration in preparing the report, report for October. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Martin. And yes, that was um, um, the overlap between the two. Um, so we go to 17.3, which is Councillor Moran. I'd just like to ask a question first, Lord Mayor. Um, in the administrative comment, it says, as part of the budget process, Council resolved to have no increase in fees and charges, which included on-street parking. So that makes mine ultra-virus. That, right? that is correct. So, okay, thank you. So are you withdrawing, Councillor I am. Moran? Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, we go to 17.4, uh, which is uh, rate relief, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, do you want me to seek a seconder? I will look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Thank you. Um, look, before I begin to speak, could I ask uh, the administration a couple of questions? Um, could the administration advise elected members how Council's financial performance in 1920 improved in the 12 weeks to the 30th of June? CEO. Thanks, Claire. 
Through the presiding member, um, I suggest Councillor Martin that you um, review quarter four um, financial report, which stepped through um, why the preliminary end of year financial position had improved. Oh, look, I've, I've done that um, uh, for the sake of the administration. I'm aware that there are at least four members who didn't attend that committee meeting. And so I'm asking for you to confirm that the organisation's operating deficit has been reduced to a forecast 19 plus million to 10 plus million, and that our borrowings for the period have reduced from 73 million to 51 million. That is a $22 million reduction. Is that correct? See ya. Thanks. Through the presiding member, I'd really encourage any council member um, that wasn't at that meeting to um, contact me and I'm more than happy to spend time and talk you through that report. Um, the numbers that Councillor Martin um, has quoted is correct for a preliminary end of financial year for um, uh, quarter four report. Thank you. Um, Lord Mayor, the administration talks in the, its comments about this proposal that um, this is going to cost about $14 million, growing with inflation and associated costs to $6 million, $16 million, borrowed over 10 years at 1.5%, uh, which was understood, by the way, when this was first proposed and uh, rejected by the elected members. Now, I note uh, the administration says council might want to consider delaying this until we find out what the federal government is doing. And I have to say um, that I don't see any reason for us delaying this because um, uh, the community is hurting. There's not a doubt in the world about that. Um, I have ratepayers, as we all do, who suddenly in uh, their older years have children returning home, jobless, uh, and their arrival is placing enormous stress, financial stress and other stresses on families. There are ratepayers, self-funded retirees who have investment properties in the city, who were expecting income to keep them going through their retirement, but who are now required to give rate assistance to the people in there. And so their incomes have reduced to very little. And I know businesses, and, and uh, there are people in this room who I know have businesses and who will, I'm sure, agree with me, um, who are struggling. Uh, you know, people are really hurting. Um, Lord Mayor, after the elected members voted down uh, a rate increase, uh, a rate cut rather last time, I, I went up and I, I sent a letter to um, a thousand business rate payers. Uh, in some cases, uh, delivered it and spoke with the, uh, the business people. And one of them said to me, a very well-known person, known to all of you, said to me, Phil, you're the first person who's ever come here and talked about this. Uh, and just having the chance to talk about how desperate we are is a good thing. But I need help. My turnover is down 50%. And I tell you, that man had tears in his eyes when he was telling you that. And he said, I get nothing from the federal government and I have nothing from your council. I need help now. Now, I know that person has written to some of you and said, approve this. Um, he, um, I would hope, will get the assistance that he thinks he needs. Uh, and I do believe that this is, if it's agreed to, not premature. Um, it isn't the case that there is plenty of assistance out there right now. Um, it isn't uh, the case that our business is more important than the, the vulnerable businesses, uh, businesses of our ratepayers, and this is not a vacuous idea. Helping our ratepayers at this time is the single most important thing that this council can do. Lord Mayor, can I have uh, a minute longer, please? Members, leave the chamber. Yes, you may. Thank you. Now, the simple truth is that if this is approved, this assistance will flow to businesses in October, November and December. And as I understand it, most of them are expecting a torrid time. They are not expecting a great Christmas. They are not expecting an increase in sales. That $14 million cost will put $14 million into the local economy. 
Um, and look, let me say, we are in the eye of the storm. We are right in the middle of the eye of the storm. This is the time that we need to act and we need to actually help ordinary people who are struggling. They will remember this. They will be grateful. If we do not do it, they will remember and they won't be very happy. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Oh, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'm wondering if uh, Councillor Martin would agree to take this in parts, and that is to break the motion into sections whereby he separates out the 100% uh, rate reduction for those who are unemployed um, from the 50% uh, reduction overall. So, as I understand it, it's being proposed that. Um, I mean, I'm happy to take it in parts if you're asking that from the chair. If, if that's agreeable, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that would be good. So, so what's being proposed is that um, we vote on um, yeah. one and then two, three, four. Correct. Yeah. yeah, I'll accept that. Thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And look, I want to commend um, Councillor Martin for uh, proposing this. I absolutely agree with him um, that residents and ratepayers are experiencing a huge amount of stress um, at the moment, a huge amount of stress. There's no question about that. And um, my concern, however... I'm sorry, um, Rob. My apologies, Rob. Sorry. The one, two, three, four are for noting. The, the main thing is actually in the top bit, which says approved, so you can't separate that. Yes, that's why I was asking. Yeah, no, I my apologies. To. I was... I, misread just one word. Um, so it would be very difficult for me to take that in parts. Um, Lord Mayor, can I help you and, and suggest um, that it be very to the extent that it says that council approves um, one residential ratepayers uh, claiming a 100% rate waiver if they received federal government job seeker payments for the quarter one of 2021 as written and then um, the rest resumes, um, approves a citywide rate reduction, and then 2, 3, 4, 4.1, 4.2, 4 4.3. That would achieve it, I think. So the difference is we're saying that council approves, and then one residential rate payers claiming a 100% uh, rate waiver, uh, and then we probably have to insert and will be eligible if they received uh, federal government job seeker payments. And then it resumes, approves a citywide rate reduction as printed. And following um, the exclusion of one, the inclusion so of two, three, four, four point one, four point two, four point three. Sorry, sorry, Robert, um, just one moment. So we'll have a look at that when we get to the voting part. But if you'd like to continue speaking, right. yeah, my apologies. That, we'll start you. the clock again. I, th I think the intention's clear, thanks. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, as I was saying, I do thank um, Councillor Martin for um, putting this forward. I absolutely agree that residents and ratepayers are under um, huge pressure uh, at the present time. Um, and I would really like to see us provide a 100% um, rate waiver for people who are unemployed at this time, owner occupiers in the city. These are people who um, may well be asset rich in terms of owning their own home, um, but who uh, are going to be um, facing significant financial pressure because they've lost their jobs. They don't have an income coming in at the moment. And I am very, very concerned um, that there are going to be residents in the city that are going to be plunged into poverty from September if the government doesn't increase the job seeker payment. And we know you can't live off um, just $40 a day. So the reason why I'd like this dealt with in parts, Lord Mayor, is so that we can provide immediate relief to those people. Um, I know that's been costed at about $200,000 by our administration. My concern with uh, providing a 50% um, rebate for all residents and ratepayers across the board that isn't means tested is that we're potentially uh, giving out $16 million um, to residents and ratepayers who may not necessarily need the money. 
Um, there are many who would, and um, I'd really be keen if we're going to spend $16 million for us to put that towards a more targeted package, look at something that's a bit more scalable um, rather than uh, simply spending the, such a huge amount in what is, what is in effect a one shot in the locker kind of a proposition. Um, I'm also conscious, Lord Mayor, that this discussion is happening um, when there is increasing media speculation about job cuts within the organisation and there has been a media focus on um, our financial situation. And um, I, I'm not sure that at the moment um, foregoing such a significant amount of uh, rate revenue would be sensible for us. So keen to do this in parts, definitely let's provide the 100% uh, relief to those who are unemployed who are in need at this time and then let's look at what we can do to provide more targeted relief um, for those who uh, require it and are experiencing financial hardship. I'd suggest Lord Mayor by beefing up council's hardship provisions so that we can really get bang for our buck in terms of helping people who are vulnerable in our city. Thank you. Councillor Kouros. Thank you Lord Mayor. Um, what, I understand what Councillor Martin is trying to achieve. I get it, right? And yes, everyone is hurting out there, but it's just the logistics of this, how this would work. You're, what he's asking is 50% of rebate to the ratepayer. So the ratepayer will receive the notice on this rebate. So the way I look at it is that we've got 5,000 owner occupiers who will immediately get that rebate. And then you've got 10,000 or almost 11,000 who are non-owner occupiers where, where he's talking about are the unemployed because nothing is differentiated as a ratepayer. So it's up to the owner to pass on the saving to the tenant. So the, the, the landlord is already achieving, is already receiving income from that tenant. Um, so I really, we're looking at, um, it just really doesn't all stack up to actually everyone receiving, working out who's got the hardship in regards to this rebate. And on top of that, sorry, and on top of that, you're talking about commercial owner getting the rebate. You're not talking businesses getting the rebate. It will be really up to the property owner to actually give that rebate to the, t the business owner who's got it incorporated under a lease agreement. And then I don't really believe that it will be administration's job to actually police whether they actually have done that. Because our association as a council is to the ratepayers, which we have them listed here. So I really don't believe that we're going to be achieving what Councillor Martin is wanting to achieve. So I'm, I'm, I'm really questioning that. Thirdly, um, as rightly Councillor Martin has pointed out, the majority of the elected members are business owners. And I did my own calculation on what my saving would be if my landlord happened to pass on the uh, saving to me. It would be approximately a $500 saving for that quarter. And let me tell you, that $500 will not help the business. And then, I mean, of course, with my own properties, if I receive that rate back, rebate, I would be happy to pass it on to my tenant, but my tenant has told me I don't want it. So I really understand his intent. I understand what he's trying to achieve. Sending out newsletters to business owners and fearing them and telling them that these people do not want to give you a rebate is not really helping the situation for the pain that these businesses are feeling at the moment. Can I have extra time? Would you leave the meeting? Yes, you may have I think as a council that if we're really looking to support the businesses, we really, really need to look at this formula that Councillor Martin is trying to achieve but apply it in a way that is achievable because I don't think that what he's, what he's trying to achieve here will support the businesses in that quarter. Um, so I really, I really urge elected members to really think about this and really think about what 
it really is that we're trying to achieve and to be giving out rebates to everyone it's actually not going to be achieving the support that small businesses need. Councillor Kouros, um, Deputy Lord Mayor and then Councillor Moran. Thanks Lord Mayor. Um, I too spoke to businesses who received Councillor Martin's newsletter about um, rate rebates and they too had tears in their eyes except they were tears of disappointment and anger when upon explaining to them what the proposal actually was and they understood that it wouldn't be of benefit to them uh, that it would be uh, of larger benefit to other people who perhaps didn't need it as much um, and uh, then understanding that alongside the contents of said newsletter they were very upset so i thank councillor martin for getting those people in touch with me um, uh, so i could put the record straight as he instructed them to do um, what this motion achieves is not what i think the intent is um, uh, the intent while it may be uh, noble in some regards uh, is completely corrupted uh, by what is going to be the administration of it as councillor Kuro has highlighted um, uh, yes perhaps owner occupier rate payers will receive the benefit of a 50 percent reduction uh, non-owner occupier rate payers by and large generally speaking uh, will not uh, and the commercial rate payers generally speaking will not because those rate notices will go to landlords and property agents. A lot of people pay rent in the city and that rent includes uh, the outgoings. The outgoings are not then passed on to the commercial tenants. Um, uh, so the odds of them getting that rebate passed on to them in this environment, I'd say are slim to none. Um, and so what, while it perhaps didn't set out to do this, you get this perverse outcome um, whereby we are spending millions and millions of dollars enriching landlords and people that own property within the city. Similarly, so if a councillor Sims is really keen on 100% rate waiver for people who are unemployed, and again, a noble aim, um, if, uh, if, if you're applying that, that premise to, a, to, a, to someone who's renting, um, all you're doing is giving their landlord money. I mean, it's, there's a lot of ambiguity in that section one there um, about that. So I think, uh, I, look, I think I know a lot of landlords. They're generally uh, good people. Some of them will be passing it on. Some of them don't need nor want it. Um, and they will pass it on because they want to see their tenants thrive. I think there are lots and lots that won't though. I mean, there are lots of businesses in the city that wouldn't even know that this has occurred because they don't get the notice. They don't get the rates notice doesn't go to them. Um, and so I think you, you end up, as I said, with this very, very perverse outcome where you're enriching one section of the society, um, uh, a section which, and I will admit, landlords haven't had much support in this pandemic. Um, and some of them are, are, are set up well, and some of them are not and have mortgages. And I think when the a deferral of interest uh, uh, comes, when that wave comes later in this year, um, uh, that is going to hit property uh, prices and, and landlords hard if I could have just another minute. Members? Um, uh, so I admit that landlords haven't necessarily been taken care of, but we sh this this motion doesn't intend on taking care of them, but that's exactly what it's going to achieve. So when we're, when we're in the first recession that we've had um, in probably almost three decades, I don't think it's good business practice for us to uh, spend our rates um, uh, supporting people in this way because the support's not going to get to where it needs to be. And just to touch on the financials, of course, we did see uh, a better deficit or a less worse deficit this year. Um, it did reduce um, by a number of millions of dollars. But we re-timed $42 million in projects. $42 million in projects we took from last financial year and put in this financial year. That's why the books look better. It's not by some miracle of accounting practice. The books look better because we shifted costs into this year. So you can't rely on that as an argument to say, we've got all the money we need and so we can just dish it out um, uh, to the wealthy and other people and enrich, unduly enrich people in the middle of the recession. It's not right at all, Lord Mayor. Uh, I have Councillor Moran. I really can't believe what I'm hearing. Earlier in the day, the Deputy Lord Mayor threatened uh, that we would be tarred with anti-rate cuts and we were rate increases and holding him hostage. Now, a perfectly sensible motion for three months to reduce. And the seminal word is ratepayer. 
Rental people don't pay rates. That's up to their landlord to look after them. Um, and, and as the Deputy Lord Mayor quite rightly said, nobody's really looking after the landlords. As he said, they're not really being taken care of. Um, surprisingly, Councillor Kouros, when she spoke to her tenants, said they didn't want the money. I've never met such a tenant that didn't want any money. So I take that with a great deal of uh, caution, that, uh, that statement. The owner-occupiers will get a 50% decrease. That's very clear. Um, the commercial rate payers will get it. You have to be a rate payer. There's no confusion, as Council Kura said, oh, how will they know? Da, da, da. You have to be a rate payer. Ergo, a voter, a person that we should be looking after. The rental owner looks after his rental property and his tenants. We look after the people that pay rates and have a vote. And this will target all of them. It's not confusing, this, this pat nonsense that, oh, I see the noble cause, but of course I won't vote for it. May I remind Councillor Kouros that she voted for this exact motion at the last council meeting. And I joked with my colleagues that she will not be voting for it this time. Council because last time she voted. Um, Lord Mayor, I did not vote for this last council meeting. It's actually in your colleague's newsletter where I did not vote for it at the last council meeting. Actually, he forgot to include Councillor Donovan not voting for it either in his newsletter. Well, that's not what I read on the council minutes. It had your name there. Very surprised. We all commented on it. Uh, okay, so that's fine. So you have voted twice not to give business owners and owner occupiers a little bit of help for three months. Twice Councillor Curris has done that. that would definitely be in my next newsletter. I actually gave her a bit of credit for voting for it first time and then took that away because she just went with uh, her factional bosses, of course. But this is a very easy motion. It's to reduce 50% through the crisis of the pandemic for three months. Be very careful, people that represent business owners, because we will be shouting this for the rafters if you don't give this simple relief. And I don't know the business owners that the Deputy Lord Mayor spoke to because I'm pretty over North Adelaide. I'm pretty there all the time. I know personally the business owners. I know personally the people that rent and run business. Uh, sorry, the building owners and the business owners. 30 seconds more, thanks. Um, excuse me, leave of the meeting. Um, I know them very well, having lived there for 30 years, and I don't know anybody that read the Phil's newsletter and said, oh, that's a stupid idea, I've got tears in my eyes. That, the very people, well, I don't know who you know in Findon or Prospect, Mary, but the ones that work and live Councillor in... Councillor Kouros, please. The ones that live and work in North Adelaide want any relief that they can get. And unless, it's all very well to say, I'm not going to vote for this because it's mucky, it's not this. You're not putting up anything else, are you? You're just knocking down people that have good ideas. If you said, I'm not going to vote for Phil's motion because I've got a better one, perhaps for six months instead of three months, I could understand it. But you're not putting anything in its place. You're just smirking seat warmers. And it's about time that you voted for motions that were good motions instead of following each other like silly little sheep. And I assure you, you, we Councilor will Mayor. be pasting North Adelaide businesses with another you, newsletter Councilor and who voted against this. Councillor so, sorry, sorry, Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran said that Councillor Kouros um, uh, failed to support a motion that would give business owners a rate rebate. I think she meant uh, commercial uh, rate payers, not business owners. I think that confusion is at the heart of the problem. I'd also ask her to withdraw um, uh, the comment about silly sheep. I think it was. No, there's something else in there as well. Councillor Knoll, um, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Knoll. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the new chairs. At least we got those through there. Um, it's an interesting conversation we're having. I mean, um, uh, here we are at council, and I suppose if we look at the the, uh, the, the broad, the, the recent history of all of the uh, various motions and, and various uh, conversations that come from uh, um, attempting to uh, uh, 
I could use the word crucify uh, us, this particular council for deficits, etc. In the first instance of this first one and a half years, um, then you know, and now we want to uh, throw money out uh, blindly. I mean, we looked at uh, this job job keeper. I mean, job keeper was done in a, in a flash of a moment to try and stabilise an entire economy. Now, we're not in that position, nor are we able to give that level of, of assistance to so many people. But nor can we afford to give away money uh, when it's not needed. And it's not like we're asking, uh, we're going to, this is going to deliver any, any uh, uh, you know, knockout blow for, uh, for people who need help. Uh, we do need to spend a moment, and not, far, not long either, and uh, we do need to come up with something else rather than just a blanket throwing out a few, uh, you know, in a case of $500, $300, is all sorts of uh, numbers according to the value of, of the properties, etc. Those are not going to be numbers that are going to make any difference between bankruptcy or not, between staying open or not. Um, but we can possibly do it by being more targeted. Uh, and Councillor using Kouros and Sims, thank Sorry. you. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, doing a, a, using a different mechanism uh, to be able to deliver at least something a little bit more substantial uh, to a, in our narrow group of people that we can assist because that's the whole name of the game and I think we need to keep that in mind. Uh, I've been asking and so has Councillor Sims in regards to hardships and, and how we do that and this is going to come out in the next rate notice so that the people do know how to uh, achieve this and it's not complicated because the first thing is that if you've got a problem uh, that's a way to do that. that. That starts to exclude those that, that uh, don't fit the criteria. And a, and a, a stat deck or uh, you know, a job separation certificate is not complicated. So that's a step one for helping yourself and it enables the council to target those individuals that can and, and uh, would be uh, you know, able to get assistance. So if we're doing things like that, then we are we are getting to the heart of what we need to be delivering. Now, I mean, it's up to it's up to the administration, and then we probably need to give direction in some fashion uh, to to ask them uh, so that we are able to find ways to give some target assistance. And it can be it can be right relief. It can be some other mechanism where we target the businesses rather than necessarily the rate payer, because at the end of the day, the business is the one that requires the the, the, the people and the and the, the customers. Um, and they in turn make the uh, stabilize our economy. So I think that it's really critical that we uh, look at things like that. Um, and uh, you know, in a lot of conversation for those that aren't uh, on their death knell, um, they are asking us, and it's just 15 seconds for me. Um, it's those uh, those other ratepayers and business people are asking us to keep some of our powder dry, so that we are able to promote, we're able to uh, uh, create events, create uh, uh, spectacles, or or um, you know uh, extra assistance, so that we bring people to the city because that's the single item that'll save the uh, the business people, the rates, even our you know ourselves is bringing in enough people, and you do that by encouraging them to come here. And we do that as part, assisting with business, and this now becomes a partnership because that's the one thing that will make a difference. And I think this throwing a, you know, a, a few dollars your way, you know, a couple of bucks, uh, you know, so you get towards a cup of coffee, that ain't a trick. And I think we need to be very cautious about that because it's far more important that we survive, but we assist them to survive in a real way. And then also bring people to our city, and that'll mean that we are back in action and, and we're actually working again properly, rather than you know a few hundred dollars across the whole city. Thank you. Um, CEO, you wanted to make some comments? Yeah, three more, Lord Mayor, before some up occurs. I just think I've got a, a CEO kind of duty of care just to say a few words, and I'm going to be very careful not to enter the debate. Um, my comments would apply to any kind of motion like this. So I just want to make that clear. You know, I, I do recognise the really challenging situation we face and that of all of our ratepayers. So that's not lost on me at all. But from a financial perspective, I have grave concerns uh, with regard to the potential impact on our financial sustainability if we pr proceed with rate reductions in whatever form they may take. Um, I really caution Council to recognise the impact of a decision like this. How is this not entering the debate? This is arguing directly against the motion. This is the definition of entering the debate. Through you, Lord Mayor, I just would like to finish. You are recommending that we don't go to this motion because you feel Three of them I haven't finished and I, I'd like to clarify. What I'm, like, what I'm liking to say to suggest to you is that 
Um, first of all, we do have rate hardship provisions that are being well used and well applied. But secondly, I urge you to consider it as a minimum seeking the advice of our audit committee. Our audit committee have are charged with the responsibility of providing you with advice so that you can seek the advice of that audit committee to ensure that you've got a well thought through um, and a well scoped option that can withstand scrutiny within the public domain. Um, without that, I don't feel that you've got the information you require to make such a substantial decision. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mackey. Um, thank you. Through you, Lord Mayor, um, a, a question of Councillor Sims, just for clarification. Um, uh, Councillor, in, in your uh, uh, representate your presentation earlier, am I, am I correct that what you would be proposing is a um, a waiving of rates for uh, for one quarter for city resident owner occupier residents who have become unemployed as a result of COVID-19, which would uh, come at a cost to the budget of two hundred and thirteen thousand. Um, thank you. If I might just uh, speak to that then briefly, I'm I'm quite persuaded uh, by that, and I take nothing at all away, Councillor Martin, from uh, your intent. I'm also persuaded uh, by um, Councillor Canole's uh, desire to keep some tinder dry uh, for additional targeted interventions as we understand better the journey that uh, we are really realistically only at the beginning of uh, in terms of, of COVID, uh, the economic uh, recovery journey. Um, and so am I correct then, if I might through you again, Lord Mayor, clarify. So that is a discrete element that would be uh, considered separately within the if I take it in parts, I yeah. think that's the intention. If I may Councilor elaborate, Sims. Lord Mayor, I think what had been agreed was that Councillor Martin's motion would be taken in parts and that that uh, segment will be carved off. And so therefore we no, we'll can do it the rest separately. separately. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, members, I, I think it's really clear that we're, we're all wanting to help. Like, um, you know, we all know nobody's dealt with COVID, nobody's dealt with a pandemic before. We know that our residents and ratepayers and businesses are all um, hurting everybody's in different circumstances. Um, I think that there were multiple options that were put forward in the budget papers, um, which, you know, went from, you know, here to here in terms of um, recovery and also rebates and ways that we can actually help businesses. Um, I, I actually do think that referring it to the audit committee and the expertise that is in the audit committee is actually something that um, should be considered by the council. Um, we know that the COVID, it's, we're right in the middle of it. We haven't even got through the other end yet and it is going to be a long tail to recovery. And I think that we need to be very focused to keep the businesses going. We need to bring customers to them. That's the very best thing that we can do. And we also need to be able to continue to deliver services. So if we add, you know, too great a deficit to the current deficit, that's going to impact um, uh, on our services and on, on our ability to deliver uh, for the city, not just now, but in years to come. So um, keeping the powder dry, as you you said, um, Councillor Mackey and Councillor Canole, I think we do actually really have to have one eye to the future. And we also know that the federal budget is coming through shortly, which they are going to address things like ongoing job seeker, job keeper. Um, there's been a lot of advocating for increases or to maintain the increases to the job um, seeker levels. And to keep, I think they've already announced that they're going to keep JobKeeper going to at least March next year. I think that was the announcement, wasn't it? So, um, so members, uh, I think we need to think very carefully about what we're doing here. Um, I am also um, 
persuaded towards uh, looking at that in sections so that we can um, have something very targeted to residential, it then, uh, then it comes back to what are we going to do for our businesses. Um, and so there are the ratepayers, the owners, and your argument, Councillor Kouros, is the, the same argument that I've been actually having all week in terms of um, the owner is not necessarily the business tenant and therefore you know we're actually then going to have to do another tier if we're going to then look after the business tenant as opposed to the owner um, and the uh, the residential ratepayer. So members um, I am going to hand back I think everybody has spoken that wants to just double check I will hand back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And look, I disagree with you and the CEO on this. Um, the audit committee's full title is the Audit Review Committee. It doesn't make recommendations to council. It reviews the decisions councils have made. And I, I do think that that's uh, a, a derivation of the idea of audit committees that we ought not pursue. But look, having said that, um, may I just say, uh, I am disappointed. I know businesses will be too, because um, uh, Franz and um, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor are sitting there smiling, but we've coughed up more excuses, no action, more excuses. And you know, that's the last thing they want. You know, one of the business people said to me, no more promotions, no more fire pits, no more bands, no more flashy lights, help us financially. And that's exactly what this proposal does. Now, I, uh, I must say the, uh, the arguments that have been put by some elected members will probably um, um, give cause for despair among uh, business owners as well. Um, I have, uh, during my life, uh, rented six commercial properties, residential and commercial. And in each case, the rates and other charges are paid by the tenant. That is standard. That is standard in rate agreements, except in the central market, as Franz would know, and indeed all of the central market has received rate concession. Isn't that right, Franz? All of them are much better off than the rest of the community because, uh, not rate, uh, rent concession, rent free, rent, free rent. And indeed, that's part of the problem, you know. Another businessman said to me, how is it you give all those people in the central market free rent, but you can't find anything for me. And there's no answer to that. Uh, additionally, they want them all to receive a rate reduction, not targeted assistance. And uh, you know, those documents that were circulated uh, by the administration in the budget process proposed um, accommodation, hotels, uh, licensed hotels, gyms, um, this business, that business. Um, that sets up an awfully expensive process for the administration to administer. Awfully expensive. As, but, a, point, as a point of clarification, it, it set up a number of scenarios, um, not just looking at um, hotels and gyms. So that was one of the scenarios. No, I, I, look, Lord Mayor, in your enthusiasm to interrupt me, you overlook the point that I'm trying to make, and that is that by targeting some businesses, you make decisions about who you include and who you exclude. And in the process of doing that, you alienate more people than you please. You alienate more people than you please by trying to pick winners. With a process like this, there would be a substantial benefit to ratepayers. And, and I, I do want to know how uh, Councillor Kouros um, with four businesses on her register of interest or four addresses is only paying $500 um, or expecting a $500 reduction on a $1,000 rate bill for, th for three months. That's an extraordinary result. And I'm having what she's got. That, that sounds a sensational deal to me. The truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is that for many businesses, this is substantial. There's a hotel that I have mentioned frequently in this place that is paying $37,000 a year in rates. In a quarter, a 50% reduction is a very sizable reduction. And let me tell you, when I was in there last week, uh, they needed it. May I have a minute, Lord Mayor, please? Members? Yes. They needed it. There was no one in there. No one in there at six o'clock at night. And that is so for so many businesses. So, uh, Lord Mayor, look, 
Uh, I don't buy the stuff that, um, you know, uh, rates are, are paid by the landlords. That's not true. In most cases, they're paid by the tenants in commercial properties. And, and we have in this city um, some 10,000 commercial premises. Um, when it comes to residential, there are 5,100 owner-occupier properties. That's 15,000. There are another 10,000 owner non-owner-occupied premises. And those places are required to provide relief to their tenants. That is what the federal government has asked. Give them rate relief. In fact, it's mandated. So they too are suffering. Now, don't pick winners. Uh, don't get into the business of this business is more worthy, that one's not, this one is. Just do the right thing. Do as the Lord Mayor suggested. In this eye of the storm, help people just help them. The amount of money involved is less than the reduction in borrowings that we sh showed in our committee meeting last Wednesday. Less, less than the borrowings that we said. Members, we're just making sure that the parts, separated parts, uh, make sense. And you've looked at the rest of the motion that continues underneath. Yes. Yeah, I think that's right. I think I think that I think that achieves what we're trying to, just making yes. sure we haven't repeated ourselves in the second bid. Yes, I'm happy with that. Okay. Um, so members, we're going to take it in parts. We'll take part one and then the remaining two, three, and four. Uh, so if I could go to the vote on part one, which is approving the 100% rate right waiver for residential rate payers. Um, those in favour? So it's uh, part one. This is for the unemployed. Uh, correct. So that part there. Part one. And those against? Division. division. Uh, that is lost. Council members, the division has been called on part one of the motion. All those in favour, please stand. Remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Sims, and Councillor Moran. Thank you, members. We'll now take the remaining parts, which is part two, three, and four. If I could just get you to scroll down. So, members, uh, all of those in favour? Oh, so have you made it just part two? Can I double check? So, part two. Uh, 2.1, 2.2, 2 2.3. Uh, so members, um, it's just been renumbered. So part two, those in favour? Those against? Division. That is lost. Division. Council members, the division has been called on part two of the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Moran. Um, members, that takes us to um, item 17.5, uh, Councillor Martin, which is the revocation of remote conferencing, Zoom. Um, uh, look, yeah, Lord Mayor, um, I will be brief about this. I'll just hold um, for a second, uh, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Councillor Kuros. Councillor Martin. I uh, will be brief about this. I, I do know that the team's predisposition is to not support this, um, but I have raised it because there is a view among many. Um, there's a bit of laughter and people implying they're not going to vote um, against this. Um, and I do look forward to seeing the vote, Lord Mayor. I do look forward to seeing that. Um, the difficulty with uh, Zoom meetings, Lord Mayor. Ladies, excuse me. Sorry, Councillor Martin. Look, I'll wait until Councillor Kouros finishes. Well, it's Councillor Moran and Councillor Kouros. It's like... Oh, well, I've just only been interrupted by Councillor Kouros. So... Councillor Moran. See what I mean? It just goes on and on. Uh, Lord Mayor, um, I won't uh, spend too much time on this. Uh, suffice to say that uh, Zoom meetings uh, may be useful to some people. Uh, particularly those who are travelling interstate uh, for business uh, and perhaps even those overseas um, and especially the people who want to live overseas. Uh, you don't need to actually 
be in this chamber. You could live in the Bahamas or Saudi Arabia or anywhere for that matter uh, and only turn up for elections. Um, but putting that to one side, um, the debate, the questioning uh, and the general discussion that occurs at committee by Zoom is almost impossible. Almost impossible. Yes. Councillor Moran, could you please stop? Councillor Martin, you have a minute and 48 seconds left if you would like to Thank continue. You. Yes, I'll just finish, uh, I'll just wind up. Um, Lord Mayor, um, uh, there have been complaints tonight that um, committee has not worked, that questions are not being asked. Um, and the reason for that is it's bloody difficult. Um, moreover, uh, that difficulty is amplified um, by the inability to ask questions at particular points. Everybody has to wait until they're given the opportunity to speak, which may or may not be in proximity to the issue that they wish to raise. And uh, the practice that we have in meetings of asking questions of the administration face to face as matters arise has gone. We just do presentations now and afterwards um, there is a response. A response that is complicated further by the absence of by the absence of um, illustrations. Um, in fact, just last week, I wanted to draw attention to a matter on a map which had been supplied to us, but it was not available. There was no capacity to show the map other than holding it up to the camera. Now, that's an entirely unsatisfactory process for me. Um, uh, let me reiterate, I expect this to go down. Um, the team is committed and moreover demonstrated tonight that they'd like to see more meetings on Zoom, including council meetings. So, yeah, and as Ron says, yeah, um, it is the absence of democracy. Thank you, Councillor Karras, did you wish to speak? I do actually. Um, I just want to point of clarification. I um, actually voted um, against this motion last council meeting. Um, I ac <laughs> um, it, it actually uh, we did, didn't, it went through because some of the councillors had left the meeting. So unfortunately it was uh, um, lost. Um, but just in reiterating what I said before in the previous council meeting to why I think we should continue Zoom meetings because we are an elected body and people are expecting us to get together to have these meetings, to have robust conversations, to be able to speak to administration for them to, oh, oh my God, am I going to cry? I'm being interrupted. So um, th this is really important for us to continue. <laughs> Um, to um, be meeting face to face. Oh, did you? Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad you did, Phil, because we're here to entertain you. Um, so it's really important for it to continue to meet in the way that we do. And even though it is a, a very unusual council, um, uh, I think uh, we have all got different viewpoints. And uh, we all um, do get frustrated at times, and uh, but uh, we are here uh, to represent our ratepayers, and we should meet rather than be on Zoom. Thank you, Councillor Cross. I have Councillor Abraham today, then Councillor Sims, and then Councillor Mackey. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll be brief. Um, I am, yes, yes I am. I'm all about efficiency, uh, Councillor Martin. So uh, to, to Councillor Kouros's uh, uh, points, we can do all of that, Councillor Kouros, on Zoom. We can meet on Zoom, we're virtually meeting. We can question administration, question each other on Zoom, and we make decisions on Zoom. So we can do all of that uh, on Zoom. Can I take this opportunity to uh, thank Councillor Kira for bringing this uh, to the Chamber uh, in, in the first place? for bringing the chamber into the 21st century. Because as we know, well, we don't know when the, uh, if there is ever going to be a, a COVID-19 vaccine, we don't know how long this new norm is going to last. We just don't. Things are going to be awkward. We're gonna to have to stand a couple of meters apart from one another and not shake hands. That's, that's the new norm. As awkward as it is, it's the new norm. So, um, uh, to, and, and, and to that point, you know, while, while we are talking about social distancing and all the rest of it, let's not forget who we are. We, we are community leaders. Yes, Councillor Martin. We are, each and every one of us, 
as elected members, we are community leaders, so we should be amongst our community. We should be talking to the residents and ratepayers. We should be out there a little bit more. And I believe the Zoom meetings, that those electronic platforms will give us the time that we need to spend back with our community. Do not support this. Thanks. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And look, I, I welcome the fact that this seems to be a conscience vote matter for Team Adelaide. I think that's good. Um, but, uh, Lord Mayor, um, I will be supporting this. I didn't support um, the shift to uh, Zoom meetings by um, default. Um, the government, state government, has already provided provision for the use of Zoom if we need to for public health um, reasons. It was never intended that Zoom be the default um, method of meeting for this council. And indeed, if we need to return to Zoom because uh, there's another outbreak um, of COVID-19, then that's entirely appropriate. And um, of course, I would support us doing that. But we shouldn't, as a default, simply be meeting online. And um, I think quite the converse to what uh, Councillor uh, Abrahimzada has said is that it actually breaks the connection with the community because it deprives us of the opportunity to have members of the community in the public gallery being able to give deputations to the committee or to the council. Um, and so I don't think that that's a, a positive um, innovation. Councillor Abrahimzada said, um, Councillor Kira has brought us to the 21st century. That's a phrase that's never been used about Councillor Kira before, I'm sure, Lord yeah. Mayor. Um, but um, I, uh, I don't think this is a change for better. And I'd urge members to support Councillor Martin in undoing this. Thank you. Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. I, I, I will be brief. I'm, I'm appreciative, Councillor Martin, of you uh, bringing this rescission motion. And I regret that uh, the length of the, the meeting at which um, uh, the, the current situation was brought on um, meant that I, I had to vacate the, the meeting along, I believe, with a couple of others um, and I'm grateful to Council Kouros for your maintaining your your position and um, I look forward to supporting the motion. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor, I'm sorry I actually am going to need you to move that way a little bit because I can't sorry, see you Mayor. behind Rudy so I'm very sorry but thank you. I'll just maybe get Rudy to move this way for the next um, No I'll, I'll, I'll shift over in a moment yep. Lord Mayor. Um, uh, it's interesting that we, we're still fielding conspiracy theories that um, a former Deputy Lord Mayor Hussam Abiyad is somehow <laughs> Sorry, trying, can you stick to this? Trying to be the architect of a comeback. It's just, um, uh, it just astounds me, Lord Mayor. In fact, I think he's occupying some space rate free in Councillor Martin's head. Uh, no rebate required. But, Deputy Lord but look, Mayor, um, stop it. Um, uh, this, uh, look, I, I won't be voting for this. I won't be voting for this. Um, and as, as chair of the committee and the person who, and I had to do have great sympathy uh, for the role, uh, for you and the role that you have to undertake, sort of hurting the cat's lord men. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the ways that councillors Moran and Martin can find new and interesting ways to disrupt the meeting when it's not held in person um, with the sort of uh, online shenanigans that we've seen at the last couple of committee meetings never ceases to amaze me. Nevertheless, um, uh, as, as, this, as this motion um, uh, directed us to be able to do, I spoke with the CEO um, and discussed uh, what I thought was a good a way to use it going forward and that is whereby we have committee meetings that merely consider recommendations that come through to council unchanged. Uh, we are only interrogating those recommendations and the reason I think that's actually better done over Zoom is because it removes all the personality out of it, it removes the politics out of it and uh, members can actually focus on the content that's in front of them and the content of the reports. Um, and I think that's quite useful because unfortunately members have proven themselves unable to do that um, during this, uh, inside the small confines of the Colonel Library. Um, and it has caused the degeneration of, of, of many a committee meeting where we're 
arguing when we shouldn't necessarily be arguing, and we're arguing things that aren't even in the report, and they just members have a slanging match across across the chamber, and that's not appropriate. Um, uh, where we have committee workshops, uh, well, committee as workshops, we're doing a deep dive, a deep policy dive, and I think in person that's far more conducive. Um, and actually, uh, uh, positively, there are less uh, uh, slangs that, that, that get cast across the chamber. There's less of that behaviour because people are actually having a more thoughtful discussion um, uh, about a particular topic. Um, so that's why I won't be uh, supporting this revocation um, uh, motion. I think as well, when we're thinking about a well-being, work-life balance and what have you, I mean, look, I, it's obvious I chair them from work because I work from early hours in the morning to late at night. I'm still working here and multitasking at the moment. Um, uh, it allows me the ability to do that and still at some point to have a personal life as well, Lord Mayor. So uh, I think from a wellbeing perspective, it'll be better uh, for members as well. And for those that can, it'll get them out to the communities, Councillor Abraham today said. Thank you. Members, I'll just remind everybody that uh, we are only able to use Zoom um, while the emergency management orders are in place and then we have 28 days after that's lifted and then we are no longer because it's not in the local government act that allows us to do that remotely so even though we've done this this allows us to continue until that order is lifted and then we would actually have to go back to normal processes unless it's changed in the local government act council kira wasn't there a process set in train with the original motion that would enable us to continue Use it still doesn't it. allow us to do it if it's not um, for council. Yeah. For council. Yeah. No, that's okay. I think it's under. Um, I am going to go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I um, I'm surprised to hear that the motion of Councillor Curas is that we continue Zoom meetings for the remainder of the term. I, I understand that it's uh, for committee uh, uh, workshops and discussion forums, but my understanding is the Act doesn't allow that. Uh, my understanding is we are meeting by Zoom because of the emergency public health provisions and no other reason. And I'm happy to take advice from the administration. No, that is actually what I just said. That is what is allowing us to do this. And then when it's lifted, we it, we have 28 days and then we have to go back to normal okay, meeting and protocols. And that's my understanding. So the motion that we're ask, I'm asking to be rescinded says for the remainder of the current term, that is until 2022. It is technically not correct. It cannot happen. And well, I'm asking it, that, that it can only happen, but it can it, it can only happen uh, while we're still under the emergency provision. Sorry, Jenny is just going to clarify that. Sorry, members, I'll just clarify this. So, <laughs> Lord Mayor is absolutely correct. We only have the notice allowing us to have electronic meetings. However, there is a provision in the Act, Section Seven A of sorry, Part Seven A of Section Ninety, that allows for committee meetings, which is what. Councillor Kira's motion allowed for them to continue as long as we have a procedure which would need to be brought back to council to consider, so the, which it hasn't been done yet. So that will come back at a later stage once, but it's still under a notice and then we have 28 days anyway. So have I just confused you? Um, well, that's as clear as mine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, look, I, Oh, look, I, Lord Mayor, look, it's getting late. We're all tired. Um, we are going to have another small break in a minute if we get to the vote. Members, those in favour? Those against? Division. Was that lost? That was lost. Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Okay. Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Sims, Councillor Moran. Yeah. Um, members, we have got only a few um, left, but I wouldn't mind a comfort break. Can we break for 10 minutes? Can we make five? 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 No, sorry, we've got five. Five minutes. Thank you, members. We'll be back in five minutes.
Councillor Kerr, the next motion is yours, so I'll ask you to take your seat. Um, not touched with you. Um, Councillor Kira, 17.6, um, driver support package. Thanks. Uh, move is printed and seek a second. Okay, look for a seconder. Members, Councillor Knoll. <laughs> Councillor Kira. Oh, thanks. thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, Look, uh, I will. I'll try to be brief on this. Um, this this is uh, this is a uh, this is a serious and very timely motion. I would submit. Um, I think, Lord Mayor, you very much touched on uh, the, the the nub of this earlier when you commented in relation to to rates. Um, when you commented uh, that uh, what businesses need right now more than anything is patronage. They need, we need people going to our businesses and that is what this motion is about. Uh, this motion is not specifically about cars uh, per se. This motion is about people uh, and it's about encouraging uh, those people who, as we know, uh, for, for obvious reasons, are no longer coming into the city. Uh, they're working from home, they're working remotely, they are reluctant to come into the city for whatever reason. This is about a specific uh, effort to encourage those people back into the city uh, where uh, they will uh, support our businesses. Uh, this is not uh, something that's anti-bike, uh, it's not anti-bus, uh, it sits alongside uh, all of those other modes of transport, but it is recognising that the absolute lifeblood uh, in terms of people patronising our city is via uh, automobiles, via vehicle. Uh, so I put to, uh, I put to, I look forward to the uh, debate, but I put to councillors, uh, this is needed now more than it was needed before, but it's desperately needed now. Um, what we had, uh, what we had was weeks of, uh, of poor coverage in relation to proposals around parking. We've had a negative, uh, we've had week after week uh, of negative messaging being sent out, rightly or wrongly, uh, about parking and about the, the, the supposed difficulty of coming to the city. Uh, this is a concerted effort to send a message uh, that people who drive are welcome and will find it easy uh, to come to the city that way. Thank you. Councillor Knoll? Uh, reserve your right. Uh, Councillor Sims? Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I've really heard it all. Um, what is next, Lord Mayor? Drivers Month. You know, I've got news for um, Councillor Kira through you, Lord Mayor. Every month in the City of Adelaide, unfortunately, is Drivers Month because we have a bikeway that is yet to be completed. We fail to appropriately invest in alternative forms of transport, and this council has spent inordinate amounts of time talking about car parking and obsessing about cars. And now this obsession is in its zenith, Lord Mayor, when we have a proposal from a councillor that we should be even driving in bus lanes at certain hours. Now, Lord Mayor, councillors may recall some months ago at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, I proposed that we install some pop-up bikeways as a way of encouraging cycling during the pandemic, as many other cities have done around the world. Indeed, it's what Paris has done. That's what London has done. That's what New York has done. Berlin has done. Bogota, Melbourne, Sydney. Well, councillors said no to that, Lord Mayor. What do we have instead? Drivers Month. The red carpet being laid out for gas guzzling motor vehicles. What an absolute joke, Lord Mayor. 4.6 metric tonnes of carbon dioxide are produced by each passenger vehicle each year, Lord Mayor. And Councillor Kira is proposing that we try to incentivise more of these coming into our city. Now, earlier this year, we uh, adopted once again, and we have it as part of our strategic plan, that we're going to be one of the world's first carbon neutral cities. And whilst you've got Paris, whilst you've got London, whilst you've got New York, whilst you've got Bogota, Melbourne, Sydney, all looking at separated bike lanes, all looking at exciting initiatives to try and open their city streets up to people, you have the city of Adelaide rolling out the red carpet for cars. 
putting out signs encouraging more cars to come into the CBD, having a lotto to try and encourage people to come and drive into the city, giving away vouchers, encouraging people to drive rather than use alternative forms of transport. I mean, what on earth will Councillor Kira come up with next, Lord Mayor? When um, I propose that we plant some seeds in the parklands as part of Council's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, I was accused of look at me politics, Lord Mayor. I won't say what kind of politics I think this is. It's probably not polite for me to say so in this meeting, but I think uh, residents and ratepayers will make their views pretty clear. This is a loony idea and it needs to be opposed, absolutely. Um, Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I think this one's pretty straightforward. We know that if we prioritise walking, cycling and public transport, that it not only has all of the obvious health and wellbeing benefits, but it eases congestion and it leads to an increase in property values and an increase in retail and hospitality. So it's completely counter to the suggestion by this motion. We also know, as already mentioned, that cities around the world are prioritising walking, cycling and public transport for all of those reasons, health and wellbeing, and because it directly benefits the economy. It benefits business to be prioritising those modes of transport. We also know that from the Heart Foundation today, they bothered to write to the City of Adelaide, unusual move, the peak body for health in Australia bothered to write to us to oppose this motion directly. I think that's pretty clear evidence as to how we should be moving. We also know that were we to create, what does the motion say? Um, banners over major roads titled Happy Drivers Month, that this would cost at least in the order of $65,000, and that's based on estimates from previous banner purchase by the City of Adelaide more than two years ago, so it's probably a whole lot more than that. It would also cost for our staff to devise this random program, so we'd have to assume the cost of the banners coupled with the staffing would have to be well over $100,000 for Councillor Kira's thought bubble. Now, we all have thought bubbles at different times and we, are, we have the responsibility to take those thought bubbles, to talk to administration and to get some realistic, evidence-based feedback on those thought bubbles. Were Councillor Kira to do that in this instance, he would have received from, from administration all of the feedback about how much parking we have, about how these sorts of strategies have zero evidence to back them up, about how they would actually do the direct opposite of what he is intending to do, that being bring business and to improve the city's economic outcome. Directly opposes, we know that from the evidence, that this will not assist. What we do know from council administration is there are a number of things that we can do that involve walking, cycling, public transport and cars. Of course, there are things we can do. We know from Nudge Behaviour that we can use our Park Adelaide app. We can look at ways of showcasing how there is an abundance of parking, which may be a current perception that there isn't sufficient parking within the city of Adelaide. We can use the app to show that we can use known techniques to encourage greater uptake. So there are already things being proposed by administration that will assist with ensuring that those who choose to travel by car can do so. What we know from other peak bodies, even the RAA, is proposing that we focus more on just another moment. Members. Even the RAA, thank you Lord Mayor, is proposing that we focus more on walking, cycling and public transport because of course that is what eases congestion for cars. So if more people who choose to travel by alternate means travel by those means, it means that congestion is eased for those who choose to travel by car, which will of course be a part of the city's transport network into the future, no question there for some time. So let's use the evidence, let's use the advice from our transport uh, uh, planners, let's use what we know already from all of the, all of the administration effort that has gone into um, the parking situation in Adelaide. Let's knock off driver support package based in nothing evidence-based 
and uh, I highly suggest that we vote this down because it will be costly, it will cost well over $100,000, it will have negative impacts for the city both in terms of um, health and wellbeing and for economic outcomes for the city. Let's go back to what we know works and let's continue to develop that. Thank you. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor and then Councillor Brown. Um, I circulated a, um, an amendment, but I might suggest it as a variation if we could. Um, it's a variation. As a variation, uh, and, and in, in, in varying it, could I suggest a removal of four as well, if the, if the mover and seconder are... Um, I, no, look, I'd, I'd want to, I'd keep that, because um, it says we're feasible. I, I would as well, but I don't think it's going to get up. All right, fine. Um, look, um, I'm, I'm happy with that, and what I all I all I change would be uh, the um, sorry, where's the ex uh, marketing uh, on number two instead of um, instead of experts uh, by marketing and media. So it's the marketing and media team within the administration. Oh, I guess yeah, that makes sense. So. At number two, instead of expert, uh, marketing and media. Yeah, that's it. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to accept that uh, variation. And so, Councillor Canole, as the seconder, are you happy to accept that variation? No, noting that, noting that the banners uh, has been removed and left up to marketing and media. Oh, gosh. What a huge waste of your time. Yeah, I was going to vote for it. I'm not saying emotional. you <laughs> okay, um, Deputy Lord Mayor, could you just tell us what promotional street side material is? So well, I'm not a marketing expert. So, uh, so <laughs> but, but we don't actually, um, sorry, I've been asked the question because we don't know what it is. Uh, for example, we've got a number of uh, light poles in the city that have space for vinyl banners on them. Given there are no events, nothing happening in the city, those light poles are actually bare at the moment. That, that that happy drive. <laughs> I'm, that I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy to elaborate. Then summing up, Lord that, Mayor. That provides. If I could, oh, sorry, Councillor Donovan, if I could ask you to turn your microphone <laughs> off. Um, Councillor Canole, did you accept that variation as the seconder? Okay. So, Deputy Lord Mayor, if you'd like to speak to that. Um, yes. Yes. I'd like to. Thank Councillor Kira for bringing this this motion to us. Um, Councillor Kira, in many ways, is my spirit animal because he he wishes to see he wishes to see business thrive in the city, um, and he's fearless when it comes to uh, putting the point for business to thrive. And I take Councillor Donovan's points um, as well, but uh, it's not a competition. It's not a competition, and thank God it isn't a competition, because if it was a competition, cars win every day of the week. Most people get around by cars, and I'm not going to be lectured or interjected by Councillor Sims who doesn't have a driver's license and doesn't understand, doesn't understand what everyday people in, in, in not just the city of Adelaide, but greater metropolitan Adelaide go through every day. If we want to talk about health and wellbeing, well, what would help my blood pressure and my heart if, is, is, if, is if traffic moved a lot better. And, and uh, I think parts of this motion, and if I could find a car park easier, Lord Mayor, um, are in the city, uh, because it is tough sometimes. And I think encouraging our administration to look at all means of car accessibility um, uh, is a good thing. And I think promoting, uh, promoting to the average punter out there, and sure, it'll be it'll be great, it'll be great, um, and maybe 50 years in the future, we're all going to be in self-driving green-powered electric pods or Futurama-style tubes that run around the city that shoot people to and from their destination. Um, but right now, right now, the average car per household is is two or two and a half, depending on where you're situated. 
two and a half cars per household. Those are people that live in those households in the suburbs and we want them coming in here into the city. We need them coming in here into the city to support our businesses. Those businesses who pay for this building, who pay for our councillor allowance, who pay for all manner of things. We need them to thrive. Um, and for better or worse, their customers move themselves around Adelaide in a vehicle, in a car. Now, um, uh, sadly, our public transport is not as good as a, one would hope. And that's the reason of decisions made uh, by governments probably 70 years ago um, now, and that's unfortunate. We have a situation where people move around by car, ergo, we must cater towards that. Now, there's nothing in here that is going against uh, uh, moving people over the longer term to different modes of transport, reclaiming space for pedestrians, which we actually did in a motion, a recommendation earlier in this meeting, and all those sorts of things. Um, uh, but what, what this does is says to the punters out there right now, the city is open for business. The city is open for business, and we want you to come in here and spend your money. I think the promotional activity will go a long way because sadly, uh, we've seen a lot of negative press coverage and people come to me confused, thinking that we're expanding paid on street car parking, thinking that we're making it more difficult. Could I, one minute. Yeah. Members. Thinking, three minutes is the limit. Thinking, thinking that we're making it more difficult, uh, more difficult for them, whether they're workers or, or customers, to come into the city. This sends a very strong message that that's not our aim. Very strong message that that's not our aim. Um, uh, and as well, uh, I've suggested, and I'm glad the suggestion has been taken up, I've suggested putting in their uniform parklands roads. That actually came up in a workshop that we had. And even if we disagreed on the speed limit in that workshop, some people thought it should be 40 in the city, some people 50, what have you, we all definitely agreed that parklands roads should be uniform. There is no reason why Glen Osmond is 60 and Hutt Road is 50. It's confusing. And of course, speed cameras like to hang around on Hutt Road as well, Lord Mayor, and have pinged uh, many people who, who have complained to me about it. So that tidies up that um, uh, unfortunate situation there. The bottom line is we need to bring people into the city. Um, at the moment, they're in a car, for better or worse. Um, they're in a car. This is about supporting regular South Australians so that they can come into businesses and spend money. We need to support our businesses in this pandemic. And of course, we've seen record car usage now as well, relative to public transport usage, because people don't feel safe necessarily on public transport. We need to be catering for that. Thank you. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes. Um, I rather object to this uh, issue being made. I'm oh, sorry, Anne. I'm sorry. Oh made as a conservative versus green issue that if you don't support this you're somehow shooting people out of electric cars into the air. I'm a conservative politician um, and I do agree with car access to the city uh, very strongly as I have last term with Councillor Antic and this term. Um, I do not agree with um, I'm not completely on the same page as Helen and Rob. I'm coming from a different direction. This is a dumb idea. Now, I know from your faces you think it's a dumb idea too, but you have to support your little mate. Um, but I, I would urge you in this case not to do that. This is really a very, very crazy idea. The red carpet is already rolled out to the car in Adelaide. We have the cheapest off-street car parking in Australia. We have the most number of car parks, off street car parks in our council area than any city in the Southern Hemisphere. I drive in um, in the morning and I'm not going to tell you where I'm going to, but for my daily nine to five, I drive in at peak hour at eight o'clock. And I don't really understand why that's so funny and I find that very offensive that this young man keeps saying that I don't work, I don't do anything and I've got plenty of time. He knows nothing about me, nothing about how I spend my time and I think Lord Mayor, as, um, as a Lord Mayor, you should really stop this sort of bullying. Um, I drive in at 8 o'clock, the streets are fairly congested, our car parks are fairly full. The car is welcome in Adelaide, very welcome. Do we really want to go to what Perth did 20 years ago and put big signs at every access road to the city saying, your car is as welcome as you are? 
it was funny then and we poked fun at it and thought what a backward pace Perth is to say that and yet this young man wants to do exactly that in Adelaide. I agree with the uh, inclusion of the uh, the speed speed zones during the park lands. I'd probably suggest 50 but 60 is okay. We have been suggesting that for time and time again from the council and the, the government doesn't like that because it doesn't match up with the roads at the other side. There is a logic to what they're saying. However, I, I would be happy to vote for that. This is, we can have incentives to people to come into the city. This is not a good one. It's ex, as Helen said, it's expensive. It's not targeted. People won't understand it and we'll take a lot of stick in the media. I can't, I can't, I cringe to think what the headline would be. Um, as I said, we are already, as the Deputy Lord Mayor said, very car centric, very car centric. Much to Helen's disappointment, not one inch of dedicated park bikeway has been done. Um, she was well and truly hoodwinked um, by Team Adelaide on that one, and it won't in the rest of the term, and it won't next term either, until normal people get on this council. For the Deputy Lord Mayor to describe himself <laughs> as representing the normal people when he's very young, rents a little room, Thank and has you, no Murray, that's got nothing to do with so, the motion before us. He, he opened that door, Lord Mayor, no, by I, talking about my um, life experience. And I'm saying that he so that door so was, let us that door was can open. Talk to he has no life us. experience and cannot speak for the average Thank person. You. I'm a mother of three, have worked all my life, have lived in the suburbs and now live in the city, own a business and work hard. I can tell you I represent the average person a lot better than that young man does. And I can tell you this is a dumb idea. It'll, people will take the mickey out of us. We already have enough bad publicity for our very bad decisions. Uh, don't make another one. I know that you are very collegiate team Adelaide and support each other, and that's sort of a noble thing in a funny way, but this time, cut him loose. I now rent three little rooms that I have added a dog. <laughs> I have added a dog to my household. Thank Much you. Love. Thank you, definitely. Yeah. Um, I also uh, raised an extra minute to Councillor Moran's time. I hope I don't get penalised for having given her extra time just then. Um, now, Councillor Sims, you had a question. Yes, just some, some questions because the mover wasn't able to um, elaborate. Just wondering, the proposed promotional street sign interior. Does anyone who works um, in that area of the council able to give any clarity in terms of what that would mean for existing street signage and in particular safety of drivers and pedestrians? So is that a question to the administration? Yes. Would like to answer? yes CEO? Well, through you, Lord Mayor, it's not actually defined exactly what it would mean as far as the material and our marketing media team would be challenged to come up with the, the options. Um, but there are a couple of things that are quite often used within the community at the moment and they they relate to decals on footpaths they to relate to what sorry decal um, oh, adhesive stickers on footpaths uh, they would relate to um, signage in our u parks for example and, and we also have our council business windows that could also display material if we wanted to for any kind of promotional material and, and is the interpretation of um, the administration that that would have messages Related to driving on it, or um, you know, drive on, or come on down. Bring your car, yeah, bring your car, or yeah. Team Adelaide's behind the wheel, or some other <laughs> sort of suggestion. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I think that's uh, sufficient for, well, well, for now. I am I'm keen to understand. All jokes aside, I am keen to understand the interpretation because it is so vague um, in its uh, construction. I'm very keen to understand how the administration would interpret this because they're going to be executing the motion. What would the decals say? Um, CEO, did you want to answer that? I think I think in the administration comment it does say the report would be coming can back. I, and can I make a point of clarification? Can I make a point of clarification about Councillor Simpson's question? Is it so <laughs> blatantly rhetorical? Um, 
I don't see why the administration should be answering this now. Uh, clearly, uh, there is time uh, and the motion provides for the administration to I'm deliberate and come, come up with these ideas down the track and the course of implementation. I'm happy to move on uh, because it's clear the mover doesn't Thank you. have any idea either. So but that was Lord the question. A second question. Um, the reference to requesting the state government implement a uniform 60 kilometre per hour speed limit on all parklands roads. Can we get some information on what the existing speed limit is on parklands roads? Is what we what is being proposed here an increase in the um, speed limit? No, I think uh, what is being requested is that, that it's uniform. So it, it, different roads are 50 and 60. So if it, it, they're all different. So it's a matter of as you actually come off uh, the ring route, uh, what that uh, speed limit would be. So there's no average in terms of comparing the different areas? No, they're all different. Uh, that's part of the problem. And the as Councillor Moran said, that's, some, that's something that we've been trying to address for yes, years. Yes, I recall that. I, I guess the reason why I'm raising it, Lord Mayor, was I thought what had been uh, proposed previously was, um, in effect, a, a decrease in the um, maximum speed limit around I the I think parklands. we've actually done several, um, and in answer to your question, Councillor Sins, because you've already spoken to this, um, yes, there have been several attempts to get different speed limits in the roads that actually enter the city. And yet what's been proposed here is probably an increase. Uh, no, not necessarily. It's a uniform. So it may be one or two uniform, roads that would increase. Yeah, uniform increase. Okay. It's Thank not you. a uniform increase, Councillor Sims. A lot of the roads are 60, but they're not consistent. So, um, Councillor Koros, I know you have your hand up, Deputy Lord Mayor, but I think the, if it's a question. It was clarity. Um, well, I think that everything's been clarified oh, by the administration. <laughs> Not the mover, sorry, uh, no, the mover's there. <laughs> <laughs> we want the mover. Oh, well, I think I think the mover. I think Councillor uh, Kira was going to clarify it when he was summing up. Is what he said to me before. So. I don't know if he can because my suggestion. Okay, I okay. will allow you thirty seconds, Deputy Lord Mayor, because you've already spoken. Uh, just, just just quickly, um, there are two there are two kinds of promotional material that come to mind. One, uh, I recall when we do consultation for parklands, sometimes there are core blue sort of signs about yay big placed on, placed on roads. Um, two, whenever we upgrade uh, uh, streets, uh, we put out a little core blue sign on our own poles. These are such things that could be considered in addition to the final matters that I said earlier. Thank you. Councillor Kouros, and I'll come back to you, Councillor Moran. Um, it's very easy to actually ridicule someone as a council. It's oh, very easy oh, to take away what the intention is of the mover. And I think um, taking what Councillor Kira is trying to achieve here and what everyone's missing the point is that we, the businesses are having a hard time. And if you speak to businesses and if you run a business, you would know the one thing that they keep asking for is more car parking or uh, cars to you know be uh, easily accessible into the city because they are in competition with Westfield, Burnside, or people going out of the city rather than coming into the city. So this is the, the I believe the intent of the motion is to encourage people to come in and spend the money. I do take into account what um, uh, Councillor Donovan said. She is right. There are studies that do say that over the long term, and I do agree. But he's asking for it for, for a short period of time. And he's asking for what he wants for me. Drive a month. It's over for a month, I would say. It's one month. One month of saying that come in and you, if you use the app, the Park Adelaide app, you could win a, a, a lottery prize or something. So encouraging what, what the uh, administra administration has said to us in the previous committee meeting is that regarding the app is that people weren't using it. So maybe we can have a marketing to focus for, for people that are coming into the city to come and use this app. That's number one. Number two, I'm kind of a little bit not conf confused about the promotional street side material. I actually don't understand that and I do agree that that is not very clear but if you're using that promotional to the U parts to promote the park Adelaide app I will agree with that okay 
Um, incentives to park and drive in CBD, well, that will come under the Park Adelaide app and using the incentives to drive people to use that app. So I guess if you're, if you're wanting to, for people to come and have easy accessibility, to come into the city and promote parking into the city, we have a device that we, we have something that we can use for people to come in and easily park, find a park, come in and spend money and, and spend money in businesses in the city. It is a facility there. We've often talked about the speed limit around the parklands. It's not an increase, it's a uniform. And from small due respect, councillor seems if you do drive, it is quite frustrating when it goes 60 to 50, 50 to 60, it's frustrating. So I do get that. Um, any other measures that would directly improve easy access drives of the city? Well, that one too, I don't, I don't know what that means to be really honest, but um, if I could have clarity on that. Marketing publicity measures approved to the above. Well, isn't that going back to the park and later? So if you just break it down, the intent here is to drive people to the app that we do have by creating promotional material to it to bring, tell drivers that it's easily to come into the city. We're not taking away the fact that, yes, we would want our bikers have easily accessibility to the city. I'm not taking away the studies in that it, what it drives to the businesses in that way. I'm not taking away the use of the public transport. That is important. We're just calling it Drivers Month in the sense of promotional material, and maybe we can narrow it down for people to use it for Park Adelaide app. Members, I will remind you that when the bell goes, that means your time is finished. And if you want to continue speaking, you need leave of the meeting. Now, I am actually going to Councillor Canol and then Councillor Moran had her hand up as well. Uh, yes, we have, a bit of, have had a bit of fun with it overall, the, the actual motion, but I suppose uh, let's take, let's go to one to the, uh, a few points. And first, as, as uh, somewhat uh, um, disjointed it may be, uh, the, the point here is that I expect that the administration will take a mature uh, view and an you know, interpretation of what we're trying to achieve. Um, you know, we have things in place here in the city, uh, like the parking app and things like that, and, and I think uh, we need to be able to use those better. I think we've got to talk about this, and, and, and we are not talking about not encouraging other forms of transport, so that's not the point at this moment. We are a, a, a vehicle-centric city, We've, it, it's just a historical fact. And, and in this uh, time where we've had this major crisis, where people have avoided the city, we, don't, we can't forget that half of our workers are still not here. You know, there's a lot of people still avoiding the city. The buses are empty, so they're not, uh, you know, in the main, they're not, not trusting it or, you know, they're not needing them. So we do have a very big gap. We do not have any international visitors. Uh, you know, so even interstate visitors is very limited. Um, so there is a whole, a, a lot of, uh, you know, spare capacity within the city, and all the restaurants, etc., are all suffering. So if we take this as a, as a, as a thought, um, this is just one of the, the groups or one of the major groups that we can encourage. Uh, and one of the things that everybody uses as, a, as an off-the-cuff uh, remark, the parking. And uh, so if we're able to, at least in this instance, and it is coming towards a busy time of the year where we wish to cement uh, a consumer's mind or even doing uh, uh, you know, functions, events and things like that that the administration can, can assist with, is that we're encouraging people to use the city and this is just a, me a means for that. And, uh, you know, and we need to be able to engage with the community to do that. So this is just again a mechanism, and if we're using the parking app, which certainly has been underutilised, and if it's now a way to do uh, to deliver discounts and all sorts of other things, then those are the sorts of things that uh, will partially, in, 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 with you put it together with other purposes, encourage people to use our city better. So rather than looking at a, in this in a normal context, because we don't have that now, I mean uh, most businesses are suffering. Uh, so this is just a way to deliver that. And let's not forget, we keep talking and then carbon neutral and I have a great interest in all of those sort of things. We have a, we have a city of 15.57 square kilometres in a, in a greater Adelaide of 3,228 square kilometres. And if they're not coming in here with our small footprint, they're travelling around in circles trying to achieve things. It is our job to concentrate their, 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 their idea, their, their uh, you know, view on this city so that we can take away the need for all the other vehicles as we create the critical mass uh, of the need and, and also for our businesses, etc. 
that they're able to sustain themselves and deliver the diversity. So it's not just about whether you drive or not drive. It is very much around, uh, this is a means to sort of encourage people. November is great because it leads into Christmas. Um, and this is now just a way to help bring people in and uh, use at least some sort of mechanism that we reconnect with them and that's our biggest problem because they stopped coming and I can show you numbers about how much they've been stopping coming over the last number of years. Uh, and this time is just exacerbated of all the places that are suffering is this CBD. And, and it is re requires customers and not $30 off your rates. It requires uh, you know, a concerted effort from all, including the, uh, you know, the, uh, the owners, and this is just part of that mechanism to do that. And uh, it, I'm sure that between all of us, we'll come up with uh, with the good ideas and with the administration can use it. And, and uh, we'll hope that uh, we, we take $1 of spend and make $5 of, of financial benefit for the city. Yeah, Councillor Moran, did you have a question? I did, but I can't. Okay. Um, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Yes, look briefly, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I actually do thank uh, the Councillor for raising this. It brought a wave of nostalgia to me. Um, I am almost certain, and I've been Googling, but I can't find it, that the bank manager, Mr Hathaway, in an episode of the Beverly Hillbillies, sponsored a Happy Driver of the Month competition. I am sure. I, I, I'll keep Googling. Did you until say I the Beverly Hillbillies? Beverly Hillbillies, oh. yeah. Yeah, would you like me to have a tune for you? It's a memorable theme. So um, it brought back warm, fuzzy feelings. And particularly, I remember my mug in the 70s, which had a smiley face on it, which said, have a happy day. So there was a flood of nostalgia about it. But look, I'm also grateful um, to the, uh, the member for raising this because it's helped me to write another newsletter. Um, it is, in fact, writing itself as we speak. Um, <laughs> I, I am just flabbergasted that on an evening where uh, the majority team voted down a rate reduction that would have put $14 million into the pockets of ratepayers, they are spending more time debating a... Oh, please, just keep quiet. They are debating... Councillor, excuse me. And Councillor Kouros, thank you. For the clarification, I mean, he's uh, he's referencing to Team Adelaide to a vote that only he and Councillor Moran voted for. So, thank you, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Mann. Thank you very much, Lord If we much, can stick Lord to Mayor. the, the uh, motion in front of us, that would be great. Are there any other interruptions? Because we can deal with them all at once rather than interspersed through when I'm speaking. Any more? Okay, that's great. Um, now, now the uh, the Councillor Kouros. This bully, it's driving me nuts. Um, Lord Mayor, um, the, the problem for this council is that it has spent more time debating happy drivers of the month than debating a rate cut for ratepayers. And I can see the headline in the newspaper. Uh, I really can. It'll write itself too. It'll say, City rejects rate cut, goes for happy driver month. Is it any wonder that we get bad publicity? They, they churn it out on a daily basis. And worst of all is that it is so off the cuff. Immediately there's a motion to put decals and award a $100 Woolies voucher to one driver a month as a means of rescuing the city from the uh, pandemic effects. Immediately that comes up, somebody stands up and says, let's also ask the government to increase, and I, I'm not sure how it's related even, let's increase to a uniform 60 kilometres an hour the speed limit around parklands. Let's increase it to 60 kilometres an hour. And immediately I think of my rate players, Montefiore Road. How does that work? 50, 60, 50, 60? How does it work on Bundy's Road? 50, oh Lord Mayor, I, I spent a good minute dealing with the interruptions from Councillor Kouros. I'm allowed at least time to respond. With leave of the Chamber, members. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, this is, this is off the cuff, off the fly, off the wall stuff, for which the city gets relentless bad publicity. It doesn't work. It's not considered. It's not informed by any administration comment. Uh, comment. It's not even something that Apple has considered, as you would expect. 
It is just another thought bubble. And indeed, I think we ought to seriously consider changing the name of this council to the thought bubble. I really do. The thought bubble would sum it up well. So thank you uh, to Councillor Kira. I have enjoyed this immensely, and I have no doubt the people of the City of Adelaide and wider South Australia will have a good eagle as well. Thank you. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, for the sake of time, I'll, I'll keep it brief. There are just three things that I uh, um, that I want to uh, highlight to, uh, to to members, if I can. Um, over the past uh, uh, week or two, I've uh, I've been in discussions with uh, uh, with a few businesses uh, in in the South Ward, and these businesses um, uh, highlighted uh, their concern around uh, 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 on-street car parking, but uh, but also. Um, Ways that we can, um, uh, I guess, um, provide uh, free on-street car parking or discounted uh, on-street car parking, or, 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 or uh, you know, whatever the, the suggestion might be. So, uh, um, uh, you know, these businesses are struggling, uh, and these businesses want us, as their local government authority, to do more. Uh, I've, I've, I've come up to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, the Central Business District and I've, uh, I've been speaking to uh, um, a few local businesses here and one of them actually made a comment and it was around our, uh, our UPI package and they said, oh, I've, uh, I've, I've noticed that uh, you know, there's been a slight increase in the, in the UPI um, uh, price. Uh, I, I was really enjoying it. That's what they were saying. I was really enjoying that low price, uh, but also I noticed that uh, uh, the U parks were uh, were full. I was noticing more customers. Uh, there, there were more people coming into my business. So um, th that was a, that was a really good initiative, and I would like to, that, that to, um, uh, to to continue or, or for that low rate to, to come back uh, uh, to, to come back up again at, at some stage. That's the second scenario, and the third scenario. Um, happened today uh, as a result of some media, um, or I had a friend of mine who uh, is a real estate agent. He sells uh, uh, and, and does a lot of rental properties here in the city. Uh, he called me up and he wanted to catch up after, uh, after the council meeting. So I said, unless we can catch up at 2 a.m., I'm not sure whether if we are able to see one another. But he made the point and he said, listen, I come into the city for work, especially on weekends. I come into the city for work. I go from one corner of the city to another, going from east to west to north. Um, and at the end of my, my working day, um, you know, I go down to the shops, I grab a few things, and then I'll go back home. And uh, for, uh, for, for the cars to be taken into account, because that still is, whether if we like it or not, that still is a major form of transport. For that to be taken into account, is, is important because you guys, and he pointed to me and he said, you, you guys do have a bit of a, a, a perception issue. You guys do, do have an issue with, with, with cars coming in and uh, uh, you know, for, for those drivers not being able to find a car park or, uh, uh, you know, or, or whatever the issue might be. So he said, you guys do have, a, do have an issue. And so uh, uh, as a result of the media, he said, well, you better support this motion that's, that's coming in, into your chamber. I said, okay, leave that with me. Um, and, and the last thing, Lord Mayor, the last thing, Lord Mayor, and, I, and I'll wrap it up. 30 seconds, please, members. Thank you. Um, and the last thing is, some might look at that and say, well, taking the car, using the car is lazy. Uh, you should be you know, out there and you know, walking or cycling and all the rest of it. To that, I have this to say, uh, Lord Mayor, there's only one thing that's lazy on the car, and that's the wheels. Because they're always tired. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside, uh, I do support this motion. Uh, okay, um, Councillor Kira, would you like to sum up? Thanks, thanks. I'm forward. Uh, I could certainly drink a glass of Texas tea right now. That's uh, Beverly Hillbilly's reference. Um, can I just ask the administration, the CEO, uh, can I ask for uh, well, just a, an acknowledgement and, uh, and, and an undertaking uh, to recognise that uh, were this motion to be passed, the will of the Chamber uh, is that this is a specific uh, initiative uh, titled Drivers Month and not something uh, to be subsumed uh, into existing uh, initiatives or existing programs or to be reported back uh, on. Sorry, Lord Mayor, that's very clear.
Thank you. Uh, and can I make also, uh, can I just ask for acknowledgement of it, that, that we be clear? It says that this is delivered by November. Uh, it doesn't exclude the month being October, for example, although it doesn't have to be yet November. Um, all right, well, look, in, in summing up, I, I'd like to really uh, thank Councillors Kuros, uh, Councillor Canole, uh, Councillor Abrahamsaday, and, and the DLN uh, for demonstrating that they actually have some connection uh, to what is going on out there. Um, when you hear the mocking, when you hear the guffaws, when you hear the belittling about something like this, let's be very clear. The people who are being mocked, the people who are being belittled and laughed at are the ordinary decent folk out there who right now are facing a calamity, uh, a calamity of their livelihoods of unprecedented proportions. It's quite incredible that the naysayers, the naysayers, it's like COVID never happened. It's like, you know, it, it, it never happened. It's like the brothers, it's like brothers Karamazov, you know, it, it, it never actually happened. Um, it, it is, it, I cannot muster, I cannot muster the sufficient anger uh, with which I should respond to the kind of flippant uh, dismissal of this sort of stuff as if it is occurring in some kind of vacuum. It is a fact that we have had week after week after week of bad press about Adelaide as a place to park and drive. It is a fact that if you go into Rundle Street on a Sunday, it looks like Christmas Day. Uh, it is a fact that the vast majority of people who come into the city, this is about people, the vast majority of people who come in and spend money. That money is the entire lifeblood of people's livelihoods. Uh, it, is a, it is a fact that a vast majority of them drive. Those are facts of life. I do not know why this is uh, so uh, 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 belittled. I do not know why something like this is so controversial. I can guarantee you that if you go up there and speak to ordinary people, they will cheer and say, hey, that's a great idea. Good on you for, for actually standing up. This is what we need. And you can sneer and laugh when you've got a sinecure and you actually don't have any skin in the game out there. Sneer and laugh all the way back to your Mercedes, back to your, your, your homes and your sinecures. Do, do that, uh, but you're not impressing. Yeah, there's one councillor you're not impressing. <laughs> Members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Council Members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing to all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerra, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Canole, and Deputy Lord Mayor. Members. Uh, that takes us to 17.7. Uh, Council Sims, job seeker. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as printed, standing in my name and seek a seconder. I have Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thanks, uh, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, we've talked a lot um, tonight about the implications of the um, coronavirus pandemic, and uh, in particular, We've talked a bit about the impact of that on the most vulnerable people in our community. And I think where the, the impact of this pandemic is mo most felt is on those who have lost their jobs. And we've seen uh, 40,000 South Australians who have lost their jobs during this pandemic so far. And I don't think we're um, really even at the start of this recession. We're going to see more job losses in the days and months ahead. And at the moment, um, the federal government has been providing an increase in the rate of job seeker. They doubled the payment um, from the woefully inadequate um, payment of $40 a week to around uh, just over $1,000 a fortnight. Um, but they've said that they're going to be um, reviewing that in September and at this stage they've given no commitment to increasing the rate of job seeker. And the concern there of course Lord Mayor is that the thousands of South Australians that have lost their jobs thus far and the hundreds of thousands of Australians that have lost their jobs thus far will be plunged into poverty if job seeker returns to um, its previous rate. You cannot live on $40 a day. You cannot live of um, $40 a day and um, anyone who claims that you can is not living in the real world. Um, this is not something that is being pushed by any particular political or sectional interest, um, Lord Mayor. It's a campaign that has broad support across the political spectrum. Indeed, it's been supported by the Business Council of Australia that recognise that an increase in the rate of job seeker 
would um, result in people having more disposable income and that would in turn support local business. It's been supported by the Council of Small Business Organisations, the Australian Council of Social Service, the Australian Medical Association, the Australian Council of Trade Unions, the Australian Local Government Association, the SA Local Government Association and more than 40 local governments across the country. Now, Lord Mayor, the City of Adelaide does have a proud tradition of being a, a strong uh, advocate for social justice. And back in 2017, this council supported a motion in favour of increasing the rate of the job seeker payment, which was at that time formerly New Start. It is only appropriate as we confront this recession that we support that principle once again and that we advocate strongly through you, Lord Mayor, for the federal government to make the increase in job seeker permanent so that we can ensure that the vulnerable people in our community get the support they desperately need. I think this is a really, really important motion and I encourage all members to get behind it. Yeah. Councillor Abraham Stein. Members. members. Um, I will just make a few comments. Um, I do actually support the increase in the job seeker payment, um, as I did when New Start came through in 2017. I think it's really important, and I'd be very uh, happy to write to the Prime Minister to express our support should this motion get through. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Thanks very much, uh, Lord Mayor. With that summed up. Members to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. Um, could we let that be shown as a unanimous vote? Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, members, that takes us to uh, 17.8, which is Councillor Kerra, um, the Heritage Incentives. Uh, moves printed, CK seconder. Um, I look for a seconder. Uh, Lord Mayor, I'd like to declare a potential conflict of interest as I sit on CAP uh, and I'm aware that um, there is a possibility that uh, this property may uh, be on our agenda at some stage. Would you like any clarification through governance on that one? I have had some clarification okay. and I'm going to play it safe and call a perceived conflict okay. of interest. Thank you, Councillor Abraham, today. Your second. Okay. Uh, um, thank you, Councillor Moran. So, Councillor Kerra. Uh, thanks. Look, this is, uh, I think um, it's fairly self explanatory, it's fairly straightforward. Um, please note the $50,000 is from the existing um, budget for the Heritage Incentive Scheme. Uh, this, this is a concrete and direct means by which we can uh, encourage the preservation of this building. Uh, it, uh, as you can see from the, uh, from the motion and from the administration comment, uh, is entirely keeping with protocol. Uh, it, uh, it says contingent on the um, on an LMA uh, and uh, the criteria for heritage listing to be uh, to be listed. So, um, uh, bearing any reservations expressed by the councillors, I'll, I'll stop it there and address those and summing up. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Did you wish to speak to it? Uh, yes. Look, uh, I think this is a quick sausage um, gesture. Um, I'm happy to second it. Um, I think the likelihood of uh, any owner or potential buyer. Uh, doing this for $50,000. It's an enormous block. It's a lovely house. It's not listed. Um, and, but I'm happy, as I said, to do this virtual, virtue signalling. Members, if not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Councillor Kerra. I'll sum up. Thank you. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to 17.9, uh, Councillor Sims, two down under. Thanks very much, Lord Mayor. I move the motion is printed. I'm thinking, what? 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 Come back. I'm so sorry. Uh, Councillor Sims, my apologies. Uh, I'll uh, look for a seconder. Thanks, Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, the the motion that I'm putting forward, um, I think, is a straightforward one. 
Um, members uh, would know that I'm uh, supportive of uh, continuing with the tour down under for next year under the existing arrangements, and I think it's a very important festival um, for our city. But going forward, I think it's really important that um, Events SA be encouraged to find an alternative sponsor. And one of the reasons for that, of course, is the Tour Down Under is not only one of Adelaide's biggest events, it is in fact the biggest cycling event in the Southern Hemisphere. It has a focus on uh, promoting green living, promoting healthy living, and of course on uh, promoting cycling as a, a healthy lifestyle. And it is really absurd, therefore, that it is being associated with a fossil fuel company. And not just any um, fossil fuel company, Lord Mayor, but indeed the most visible fossil fuel company in South Australia with its headquarters based here in Adelaide. Its business model is about extracting, developing and exporting gas and oil, and it's been associated with a number of controversial, uh, controversial fracking projects, those that potentially compromise um, the uh, natural, uh, natural lands of um, local farming communities, compromise uh, water supply and expose uh, those communities to um, threat of environmental uh, damage. They've also been very active in terms of operations in uh, the Timor Sea and um, Papua New Guinea. And it is clear that the fossil fuel extraction and its use must be phased out if we're going to end the practice of um, global warming, if we're going to deal with um, this climate crisis. Now, you know, the City of Adelaide may well just have voted for, for a driver's month, but we are in the middle of a climate crisis. And one of the key clean green events that we have in our city is the Santos Tour Down Under. We should not be providing that event with a social license by now allowing it to engage in what is in effect an act of greenwashing, where it gets some uh, respectability and uh, credibility on the environment by associating itself um, with an event like the Tour Down Under. I think it uh, really undermines our city's credentials as a carbon neutral city and the work that we have done in terms of, of taking action on climate change, being 100% renewable in terms of our own operations, declaring a climate emergency. How on earth can we then, therefore have this premier event happening in our city that is being so closely associated with fossil fuels? It's a naming right sponsorship and, and it involves the promotion of this business to a global audience. It's totally out of step with our usual mayor, and we should be advocating to change. Thank you, uh, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Members? If. Not to me. No, it's fine. That council, consistent with last year's recognition of the climate emergency, notes that extreme climate alarmists represent a significant threat to events in the city of Adelaide, including the Tour Down Under. Notes fossil fuel company Santos is the naming rights sponsor of the Tour Down Under, extends its warm and heartfelt thanks to Santos for their continuing philanthropic efforts and support for this event in the city of Adelaide. Requests the Lord Mayor's right to Santos to convey these sentiments, rejects Councillor Sim's public commentary on Santos' sponsorship as irresponsible fear-mongering, attacking a South Australian icon and the only ASX 200 business headquartered in Adelaide and attacking the jobs of hard-working South Australians in the nation's first recession in almost three decades. Yeah. I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Kerra, I will just ask. The total direct negative. There's nothing direct about it. Vote against us. The sentiments on this. <laughs> Through Lord Mayor, it's a judgment call, but there are certain elements to it that present an opposite. Um, other elements are new, so um, I'm voting 
down. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to accept the amendment tonight. Um, if you want to bring that back as a motion on notice, then we'll accept that and we'll oh, go back to fine. the original. And if you don't support that, and then you can actually put that one down. That's fine. I'll speak to this the original then. Um, I think the sentiment was fairly clear. Uh, the fact that Santos has had to issue a statement uh, and no, was, sorry, just a point of clarification, it was the Tour Down Under that oh, issued the same statement, yes, not Santos. Yes. The fact that the Tour Down Under has issued a statement, having to defend its naming rights sponsor, um, is an absolute shame. Councillor Sim's commentary was uh, political opportunism, uh, almost at its worst, <laughs> almost at its worst, political opportunism, uh, timed, I assume, uh, to coincide uh, with the looming Greens pre-selection battle for the Legislative Council, but um, and potentially timed alongside the Extinction Rebellion um, protest that was last night as well. I don't think there's a link to those two, um, Deputy Lord Mayor. But, uh, but nevertheless, Lord Mayor, the irresponsibility of the statements um, uh, speak for themselves. Uh, it is an absolute shame that uh, the Tour Down Under, which is one of only two World Circuit sporting events we have uh, in the city of Adelaide. Uh, one of them uh, is the Horse Trials, which Councillor Sims probably takes issue with as well. The other one is the Tour Down Under. Um, uh, one of only two World Circuit events is now seeing an attack from, from, from the city of Adelaide or an attempted attack from the city of Adelaide. It's an absolute disgrace. And to try and say that Santos uh, some sort of big a gas guzzling evil business is entirely deranged, Lord Mayor. It is the only ASX 200 business left headquartered in South Australia. The only one. There were others. There were others, but of course, uh, left of centre politics saw that we uh, that we saw them out of the state, and they're the only one that's left. Um, so to to attack that South Australian icon, when also at the same time to attack another South Australian icon in the tour down under um, is completely inappropriate. Uh, if this meeting wasn't dragging on, I would put that as a motion um, uh, without notice or request you accept it as a motion without notice. Um, uh, but I think councillors need to vote this down. It's irresponsible. It's attacking regular people, uh, regular people that go to this event. The idea that it's somehow greenwashing I think is entirely offensive. It is not a green event. Yes, cycling is a low uh, carbon uh, uh, sort of form of transport. It was never envisaged as that. People weren't hopping on their penny farthings saying, oh, I'm really saving the environment today. I mean, what ridiculous commentary. It's not greenwashing. It's a sporting event. It's a sporting event. The, the carbon neutrality mode of transport stuff, all that fluff and, and malarkey has come later, has come later. And so to attack Sam, for sponsoring a sporting event that brings people to South Australia who consequently uh, come and support our businesses here as well during what's a very tough time is just is just absolutely irresponsible, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I would be ashamed um, if anyone other than Councillor Sims votes for this motion. Members, Councillor Martin. Oh, Lord Mayor, I wasn't even going to speak or vote on this, but after having, having listened to that tirade, um, that that extraordinarily offensive and divisive attack by the Deputy Lord Mayor on Councillor Sims for not attacking the event, as he claimed, as he misrepresented, but for asking that the name of the sponsor be removed and that an alternative uh, sponsor, which is not associated with fossil fuels, be found. That is all he was asking for. He was not uh, denigrating the event or Santos simply asking for an alternative. And you know, as is always the case with the Deputy Lord Mayor, there are misrepresentations galore. There is only one fossil fuel company in South Australia that is ASX registered. Well, Beach Petroleum's been here for years. It is headquartered. It is a South Australian company founded in South Australia. It has existed for many, many years and done extremely well based in South Australia. ASX. It's an ASX listed uh, company, and my belief is it's an ASX 200, but let me just see, Lord Mayor. Yeah. Deputy but, Lord Mayor, would you mind just sorry. allowing oh. Councillor Martin to finish his yeah. oh, no, speaking? Mayor, no, please, thank you. This, I'm used to the heckling from the Deputy Lord Mayor. 
and the offensive remarks and the heckling from Councillor Kouros. This is standard procedure at council meetings. And indeed, what they do is they complain about heckling when they are, in fact, the greatest hecklers that we have. It is just the pot calling the kettle black. It really is. Mm -hmm. Lord Mayor, this is just a, a simple motion from a councillor who has a belief that fossil fuel companies in a city that is committed to carbon neutrality should reconsider it. I, I, I see now every reason to support this where I was going to vote against it. And you know, that's a special talent that the Deputy Lord Mayor has. Councillor Moran. I too was going to vote against it because uh, I um, think that any sponsor you can get is a, is a good sponsor. But yeah. however, listening to the Deputy Lord Mayor, who's dragged debate to the lowest possible denominator. I don't know whether Lord Mayor you tapped into his little email, email sprays today. I don't know why you why you are so lenient with him. I don't know what the, the story is, but I've never heard somebody so disgustingly disparaging and yet calling everybody else bullies. Wanted to have wanted to have sin bin so that presumably I can because they've been discussing code of conduct here. Are we talking to the motion councillor? Well he did it. I no, think he was trying. No, you didn't. You spent the whole time you saying that right. Councillor Sims was running for the Green pre-selection, and that's what he was doing. He was grandstanding. Not only one five percent of his debate was that, and yet as soon as I respond, I'm told off. Zero of yours is related. Deputy Lord Mayor, Sorry. could you please? He is so offensive. He makes this so unpleasant. These two groups of people will never, ever get together while he's here. If he wasn't here, this council Councilor would Moran, make friendships, would make allegiances, and would get on. He is the worst councillor I've ever seen for being divisive and rude, and you let him get away with it, and he's damaged your brand. He's well, already Councillor Moran, please talk to the motion okay, or I'll sit down because this, we are not talking about anything to do with the motion before no, us. Well, Chief well, Mandate, if you do not want to speak to the motion, say so sit down. The suggestion that if you don't, if you don't support this motion of Rob Sims, that you are left left green. Well, Lord Mayor, I would suggest you're in that camp. So I'd be horrified by what you're being tarnished with. Councillor Kerra. Um, I'll be super brief. I'd like to. Sorry, I thought my chair was falling over. It's just me. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Stephanie Lord Mayor for, uh, for his. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, sincerely Deputy Lord Mayor uh, for his proposed amendment and his words along the same lines. I really, I can't again muster the 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 ire, the wrath on behalf of ordinary folk. Uh, they should be mustered, um, but but I can express it against uh, against this motion. Uh, I think it is highly well. You know, this uh, contradictory doesn't begin. Uh, to sum up uh, positions taken where on the one hand you advocate, you, you, you want to be seen to be advocating on behalf of the un unemployed and at the same time you try and beat up and try and denigrate one of the biggest employers in the state. You know, it is, well shall we just say, passing strange. Uh, no wonder the advocacy of the unemployed is always, you know, about government assistance. It's never about active things that will actually help uh, employment and reduce the number of unemployed. Councillor Kerrick, can we talk you know, to the motion um, before well, us, Well, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just tired of this sort of this. this talk about virtue signalling. Uh, this is this is highly disingenuous virtue signal of the lowest order. This should be absolutely rejected by every uh, principled councillor. Members, Councillor Kouros. Sorry, Lord Mayor, I just wanted to talk about my position on this one because I will be voting against it and only because, um, as what Councillor Moran said, we take the spots and we can for this event. It's a very important event. I don't want to get involved in the, the politics of it, but as a city council, I don't want to be meddling in anything that could compromise on an event that does um, service the city, in, in, especially during these times. I just want to flag that because I will vote against it and I don't want to end up it being about anything anything other than what, what it is. Members, no, I'll go back to Council. Oh, sorry, Council Canal. In, uh, in all this conversation, I just want to uh, say that Santos is a great corporate citizen here and they have no need to sponsor things like this because they're not a public facing business. 
uh, you know, it is one of these things they do as a community uh, and, and giving back to the community. So uh, you can take whatever you like in, in that. But uh, I will certainly stand up for a business that does, you know, is a good corporate citizen. It is certainly one of the greater, greatest exporters we have. Uh, it is delivering gas and, 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 uh, and oil and things like that to the world, and that is still uh, allowed. I mean, uh, Tour Down Under brings, brings cyclists all around the world <laughs> with planes and whatever else. I mean, this is a sporting event. I mean, let's get this in, in context, and it's quite simple. We are transitioning to other forms of, of uh, in a, uh, travel, etc. It is coming. Um, and in the meantime, we still need businesses delivering these things. And gas is one of their exports. It is one of those things that now they're using it as an alternative to, you know, the, uh, to petrol, etc. I mean, I mean, all of these businesses are finding ways to get, uh, you know, changing their business models. We have to allow them to do that. But in the meantime, these businesses are delivering things that the, the world does need, and that we also uh, benefit from because the world that you know enable the state to do things and I will not have a denigration of a, of a good corporate citizen uh, in a conversation um, just because they sponsor a, a bike race that really doesn't benefit them other than you know it's it's a way that they, they signal to the, the community that they are part of it and willing to sponsor things and be part of uh, you know the benefit for our, our city and state. Councillor Martin, is that a question? That's a point of clarity, uh, Lord Mayor. Uh, Beach Petroleum is a South Australian headquartered ASX 200. Um, it has a capitalisation of $3.3 billion and its closing share price today was $1.43. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I will go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks uh, very much, Lord Mayor. Look, just to respond, to put to bed this myth about Santos being this incredible charity organisation, this amazing corporate citizen that are doing all this good work. Lord Mayor, guess how much um, the uh, Santos paid in income tax from 2014 to 2018? Guess how much they paid? $10. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That's according to the tax company tax point of clarification Lord Mayor councillors councillors point of clarification companies pay company tax they don't pay income tax I think that's a highly misleading figure can I actually um, respond Lord Mayor I've endured the um, assaults verbal assaults from councillor Hyde and councillor Kira I have the floor so let me respond to the statements that you have made now this idea that Santos is some amazing corporate citizen is a myth they pay no income tax they are using this opportunity um, fund, uh, of uh, funding this um, event as an advertising strategy for their corporation as a way of gaining social license to pollute and uh, to continue to denigrate our environment. Now, I understand um, Councillor Hyde would not be of that view because he's a member of the political party that is the parliamentary arm of the fossil fuel industry and aspires to be its vice president. So, of course, he would seek to use this forum to try to sanction me. And I don't think I'm aware of any precedent whereby a member of this council, democratically elected, has put forward an idea and has not just been met with resistance, but has actually been met with a threat of sanction in the form of an alternative motion condemning them for their advocacy. It is very, very clear to the residents and ratepayers in the city of Adelaide on a night when we voted for this ridiculous idea of um, you know, driver's month, um, which side this council is on when it comes to standing up for the environment. It is clear that some members of this council are on the side of big polluters, and that is very clear from the political crusade that Councillor Hyde is mounting against the Extinction Rebellion, good people who are seeking to protest against the destruction of this planet. So, you know, I make no apologies for standing up for the environment and for trying to stand up against vested interests, Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde can threaten to sanction me for doing my job. I know he doesn't like dissent, Lord Mayor. First he tries to gag councillors, then he's trying to gag protesters on our streets. He's going after the Hutt Street Centre. You know, people talk about... People okay, talk councillor about Sims, I think I...
have allowed enough leeway Just in response. Board, we are talking to the motion. You are people summing up on about, the motion. People talk about hair brain ideas. I understand this isn't quite in the same league as, you know, driver's month or port <laughs> port 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 park lands or mayor. But this is an important way issue way for me. So your time has finished, oh, Councillor Sims. Time. And I did give you a lot of leeway in that response because oh, the summing up this is an important issue for many people in our community, Lord Mayor. It's not a Robert Sims initiative. It's being supported by Fossil Fuel Free SA and a number of other people who have been campaigning on this in the community. And I urge members to take a stance on this. Okay. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those Division. against? Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing to all names have been called. Very. Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims, yeah. Councillor Moran. Um, members, 17.10 was withdrawn by Councillor Kouros. So that takes us to 17.11. Oh, Councillor Kouros, 17.11. And you're looking for a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Kouros, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, okay, for that. Um, I was uh, advised of this concept um, uh, by someone outside of council and by, by the administration comment, um, they have already received this information and um, are already making arrangements in place to discuss it further with the City of Darwin. So. Um, Basically, uh, this is a web application that's currently being used by uh, the Darwin City Council to stimulate the economy through some uh, digital um, discounts. So the community member can uh, browse through different uh, traders um, that the business, uh, the business owner can redeem the voucher and receive rebates, uh, creating more of a circular economy. I really like this idea, and if you have uh, had a chance to um, download uh, the information from the um, City of Darwin's website. It, 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 uh, it details how it works um, and it, it provides the opportunity for people to um, connect with businesses within the city um, and by way of um, offering them something in return by vouchers, we can apply this the same way with um, car parking um, by offering discounts there. We can we, the app can be extended by um, getting users to and maybe even paying their rates um, online um, or uh, signaling. Sign I've got my words out. Um, events that um, are happening in the city, um, or even uh, what's uh, you know news. They can grab e news from there. So to knowing that uh, you know um, it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm asking the um, the administration to investigate further for this to be used to be able to stimulate the local economy um, within our within our city um, through innovative and um, economic uh, activity and to uh, create growth over the long term. Thank you, Councillor Cross, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran. Oh, yes, I think this is a very good idea. Um, some time ago, we uh, investigated the circular economies and it was shot down by the, the then Team Adelaide. Um, so I think anything, before your time, Mary, um, so I think anything that sets up uh, a circular economy sounds like a good thing. And okay. I think it's very good that we look at other capital cities um, and learn from uh, uh, learn from what they're doing rather than reinvent the wheel as we always try to do. So good motion. Members? Um, and uh, just a few words before I go back to Councillor Cross to summon. Um, this uh, and Councillor Cross had, and I had a conversation about this because this was also presented to um, the Capital City Council of Lord Mayors by the uh, Darwin Lord Mayor. Um, and Con had talked about how they'd put it into motion. So they invested uh, a small amount of money to begin with, uh, which was done in discount vouchers or discount offers. Um, it, it Two weeks and it went through the roof in terms of everybody taking it up. Then they put a second amount of money and now the state government has come in behind it with a million dollars, um, which they believe will return about $7 million to the local businesses. Um, in Darwin. So um, thank you very much for bringing it into the chamber um, and uh, I would actually uh, support the investigation in terms of what we can do here in Adelaide. Um, Councillor Kouros, 
sum up? Just basically to say um, uh, that uh, I really hope this is really taken on board and really as, um, the technology is, really, is there and it's something that we could implement as quick as we can. That would be great. Um, but of course, you know, providing them costings and things like that. So um, I really hope that everyone supports it and um, get behind the uh, small business and the local economy. Uh, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Um, if we can have that recorded as unanimous, that would be great. Thank you very much. That takes us to item 17.12, Deputy Lord Mayor, City Safety. Who are you going to call, Lord Mayor? If you I wake think, up. I, I think I might actually ask for a seconder, is oh, what I might call right. for Deputy first. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Who are you going to call? When you get up in the morning, you get a number of missed calls on your phone from people saying, oh, Lord Mayor, some idiot has glued themselves to King William Street, or someone's chained themselves to a tram um, on North Terrace. Who are you going to call? I'm not sure. I could think of a few, I could think of a few names, certainly. But when, uh, when it's peak hour um, and every minute that traffic is gridlocked within the city of Adelaide um, is another minute that literally tens of thousands of people are late to work, they're late taking the, the kids to school, uh, they're late going to the shops, they're late going to doctor's appointments and all those sorts of things. Uh, what this motion does and what it seeks to do is ensure that our administration um, are entirely up to date alongside our emergency services when it comes to management of incidents um, uh, where uh, acts of civil disobedience, which are disruptive and illegal and unsanctioned and unplanned and unsafe, take place within our city. Um, we've seen similar things take place uh, as to what may happen here uh, in Brisbane, where their entire CBD was ground to a halt um, by only a few irresponsible people. Only a few irresponsible people. Um, rather strangely, last night we saw what was a relatively minor act of trespass um, against Santos uh, by the group Extinction Rebellion. Um, uh, but it just goes to show their training, they're running sessions. They've been running training sessions for marshals um, who assist people, uh, other, other participants in, in acts of civil disobedience and the like. Um, uh, and it was it was because I saw those training sessions that I brought this motion. It was a coincidence that they just happened to do something last night. Um, but it just speaks to the the escalating um, uh, issues that we may face as a city. And like I said, look, our emergency services, SAPOL, MFS, um, they could deal with with such an issue. And look, in in Brisbane, it took a number of hours to deal with it. Um, I suppose because they were scratching their head in the first instance, thinking, "What on earth is going on? What are these people doing?" Um, uh, but I, I hope we can learn from that and I hope we can put in place uh, some measures so that um, uh, whether it's perhaps people in our public realm team or people at the council, um, uh, if they see it, they know exactly who to call, who to talk to at SAPOL, so that SAPOL as well, if they haven't turned their mind to it um, already, because it is a rather unusual thing to encounter, if they haven't already turned their mind to it and they know who to talk to at council if they require our assistance, if someone is attached to our infrastructure or disrupting something that we have carriage over. Um, and so by having a proper policy in place um, and a strategy in place to manage this, uh, we can actually, uh, hopefully, instead of it taking three hours to unglue someone from the road, it can take one hour and in doing so, save 100,000 people uh, many hours and many minutes. Thank you. Councillor Kerry, do you wish to speak? I do, Lord Mayor. Just, uh so that uh, this this is this is actually important and timely. Um, what's happening at the moment is that you're seeing uh, on the, on you, you, we've all seen on in the media uh, uh, something that's going on around the world, which is which is really quite disturbing, uh, and that is a, a seeming uh, a seeming sort of acceptance uh, and almost encouragement of um, of uh, damaging, disruptive, lawless behaviour, uh, where people in city centres are being effectively terrorised. Uh, and there's a seeming kind of you'll hear from some councillors. Basically, you will hear from councillors saying this is a terrible idea. 
Why? Because they like the flavour of politics that is being used as the excuse for the behaviour that's going on. They sort of agree with, 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 the, with the general flavour of politics. And I say to those councillors, like I say to the rest of us, be very careful uh, about accepting these kind of precedents uh, because what happens when it's a flavour of politics down the track that you don't like? And to that end, just consider, uh, take a look at history, take a look at some of the things that were going on in Europe just prior to the start of the Second World War. Okay, there was street activism by a flavour by a, it was street activism by a flavour of politics you may not like so much. So when you kind of say, oh look, this is not needed because I think it's a sexy cause at the moment, or the causes de jure are all sexy, think about the precedents that you're set you're setting. It is important that our uh, uh, every level of government sends a clear message to everyone that law and order is paramount, and that if you want to make change, you do it democratically. You do it through parliament, through government. You don't go and disrupt people going about ordinary, uh, uh, their ordinary lives, especially not after an absolute calamity to the economy as we've just experienced. So it's a great motion and it is actually very timely. Councillor Moran. Yes, well, I realise that uh, this motion will get up because they will block vote, but I, I don't think in my whole time I've seen a more shocking motion. Uh, I wasn't going to bring up Europe or totalitarian governments or what actually happens in the street. What actually happens, Mr Carer, before you go into Nazi Germany is that all dissent and debate is stifled. If you go and walk down, say for instance, uh, communist China or communist in the old days, not now, don't get upset, Simon. Um, still the case, yes. <laughs> uh, if you dared to dissent in Russia, communist Russia or China now, or indeed the streets of Hong Kong, you are bundled into a black car and locked up. That is what this motion's coming. This is coming from a far right, crazy part of politics. This is, we are the state of dissent. We are proud of that. We're proud of our demonstrations. Sandy, you remember the moratoriums where we took on the government and actually pulled our boys out of Vietnam. That is something we are proud of. I don't understand these new councillors that were recruited to come here, that they don't seem to understand that this is a political arena. We are supposed to disagree. We're not supposed to sort it out with ourselves before. We're supposed to be rough and tumble. We are a society that values and, and honours resistance and dissent. That not, not that we'll get the place out. Who do you call this flip little, little thing next to me who's got no life experience and no understanding of history, says, who do I call, who do I call, who do I call? You call the police. We haven't had any trouble that we're dealing with with this, this group. And if they do, we'll deal with it. Because people know who to call. They call the police. So this is a completely, my husband read this this morning and I, I've never seen such a shocked reaction from a fairly conservative person. This is the thin edge of the wedge. This leads to totalitarian governments. This leads to police states. This leads to demonstrations and Position being, I don't like the flavour of politics now particularly, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop people dissenting and marching down our streets. Quite the opposite. It is irrelevant whether you dislike the type of politics, but I reserve the right to, attempt to demonstrate when I like. I was going to, I thought this motion was sensible when I first had a quick glance at it, because I thought he was saying that no demonstrations during the COVID virus. Then I'm horrified to see that he doesn't want any demonstrations at all. This is what happens. For clarification, Lord Mayor, that is absolutely incorrect. Or he doesn't want the extinction rebellion. If if you do that to this, you do. You, you can actually civil disobedience summer. is illegal. You that's the whole nature of it. You are going out there breaking the rules to make your point. You're not allowed to murder somebody and so forth. But sticking yourself to a building is pretty cool and uh, chaining yourself to a fence, also cool. I think this is the most dangerously insidious motion and this is what you're dealing with. <laughs> Councillor Sims. Oh, sorry, Lord Mayor, just one other thing. This meeting's only advertised for Tuesday. It works three minutes to 12. This meeting ceases to become legal after 12 o'clock. 
It's not so incorrect. Start time that. I'll keep it short. No, I, I, I'll no, keep it short. We, we advertised on a previous council meeting, we said it went to, to Wednesday, and we actually advertised the two days. And I'm that was legal. This, if it goes past 12, is not legal. Councillor Sims. Thanks, um, Lord Mayor. You know, I feel like I've found myself in some sort of right-wing um, horror movie. It's um, sort of a disaster where I, I hear sort of Trumpian uh, comments being made and bizarre, um, inappropriate uh, references to things that have happened in history that show no understanding of history. Um, it's clear to me that some people on this council don't actually understand what civil disobedience is or what its history is, Lord Mayor. You know, when Rosa Parks said, I'm not going to sit at the back of the bus, that was civil disobedience. When Martin Luther King said, you know, I have a dream and I want to get a better outcome for people, that was civil disobedience. Mahatma Gandhi, civil disobedience. Throughout history, good outcomes have been achieved through civil disobedience. That is how social change happens. Look at the gay rights movement. It started with a riot, Lord Mayor, through Stonewall. It started with the riot, civil disobedience. And, you know, if people hadn't done that, then I probably wouldn't be able to uh, be here in this council and be elected to, um, to an office. In fact, many of us here would not be able to be elected representatives if not for the work of those in the past. I mean, let's not forget the suffragettes and the amazing work that they did to ensure that women actually had the opportunity to vote. Civil disobedience, Lord Mayor. Now, when we attack climate activists for acts of civil disobedience, what Councillor Hyde is doing is attacking good people who are trying to change our world for the better and who are trying to protect our planet for future generations. These are people that say the political system isn't working, playing by the rules isn't working, and so civil disobedience, let's try and make a positive change. And this idea that you know, um, disrupting traffic is somehow the end of the world as we know it is absolute nonsense. If people think that is disruptive, wait and see what happens with climate change in the years ahead. Wait and see what happens when the consequences of climate change are felt by our city. And we know, Lord Mayor, that we're going to feel those consequences quite acutely. We've had uh, representations from uh, experts in this field to us previously as a council. We know that South Australia and Adelaide is going to be uniquely affected. These people are doing us a great service by fighting for us and pushing lawmakers to do better and to get better outcomes for our environment because business as usual is simply not working. I urge members to reject this motion. It is fear-mongering, it is demonising people who are activists and who are fighting to make the world a better place. It is about trying to stifle dissent and I think Adelaide is better than that. As Councillor Moran said, we have a proud history of dissent what would people like Don Dunstan think of what Adelaide is becoming under the leadership of some on this council? It is deeply embarrassing, Lord Mayor. We are better than this, and I urge members to reject this appalling attack on climate activists. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I too am embarrassed by this and some of the interjections which have been occurring. And indeed, as Council Moran was uh, responding to arguments that somehow this is part of a historical cycle that leads to fascism, uh, I heard uh, one of the elected members interjecting the Nazi party was democratically elected. The Nazi party was democratically elected. That comes from one of the members of this chamber interjecting. Oh my God, that Jesse said it. Is it incorrect? The member says to me, oh is, it is it incorrect or is it correct? The Nazi party was apparently democratically elected. That is, that is the nature of the debate that is being put by your Deputy Lord Mayor and your Councillor Kira, members of your faction, Lord Mayor. It, it is, it is... It, it is, it is provocative, unnecessarily divisive, 
and it's born of pol political opportunism, naivety, or might I suggest just plain stupidity. This is the sort of thing that creates division in the community. And, and I will vote against it. I know all of you are going to support it. Uh, do support it by all means. If you're happy to support a motion that's been put forward by a group of people who think the Nazi party was democratically elected in Germany, go for it. Councillor Kuros. I cannot believe this, this. I cannot believe where we have got to with this motion. When I first read it, I looked at it as a duty that I have as a councillor to make sure that our city is safe. I did not read anything into it other than that. It didn't say anything in there about not protesting. It doesn't say anything about, about there about reprimanding people for protesting. It doesn't say anything in there about uh, you know climate change. I didn't even mention even climate change in there. It doesn't say anything whatsoever. It's just saying request. Uh, administration engage with SA police and other emergency services to devise an action plan. Isn't that our job as a council to have action plans in place? Isn't it our job to make sure that this city is safe? Isn't it our job to make sure that we have policies in place? I mean, I don't understand how we've gone from Nazis to left to right wing, whatever, in this discussion when we just should just look at the motion. People, look at the motion. That's all you have to do. If you want to make it political, make it outside the community. Make it in your newsletters. It is it's not not in the he is noting what is happening out there today. We that is all. Maybe you don't like his language. Fair enough. I understand that. I completely get it. But he's looking at devising an action plan in the event that illegal acts. That's all. That's and, illegal acts. and I don't. I'm, I'm actually have a floor here. So yeah. So quite frankly, the, the way that this has been uh, argued is actually really embarrassing. It's really embarrassing to see everybody turn this into their own, their own political agenda. I'm not affiliated with any political party. I do not declare that I'm going to run for any other uh, uh, well, parliament. Yeah, I, I am sorry, I just can't. I'm going to be clarifying this. I just think that we should just look at this motion for what it is. And just everybody calm down. It's gone beyond a joke. And if you don't like it, don't vote for it. That's it. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. The fact that we've now have got senior councillors walking out because they've been challenged on how they've been debated, really, really, I have to question this council. I really do. I have to question why are you here? Are you here because you want to look like a winner and then you can write newsletters to people, put their names on it and shame them? Or are you here to make this a safer, better place for the city? What are you here for? I do not get it. Beyond a joke. That's all you have to do is vote against it, not criticise someone as being as, as, as a left wing, right wing. I don't even get this language because I'm over it. So at the end of the day, just look at it what it is. If you don't like it, move on. That's Councilor all you have Kouros, to do. Councillor thank you um, very much. I have to make a point of clarification for the record. Uh, there was a there was an insinuation by Councillor Martin. Um, uh, there was an insinuation by Councillor Martin that I was somehow justifying or condoning uh, the fascist party in World War II. That is absolutely not the case. The point I was making was a warning about history and how protest groups uh, can become something very ugly and turn into uh, totalitarian uh, I, regimes I, I uh, when they are allowed to break the law. That's the point I'm making, and it is in no way what is insinuated by Councillor Martin, who has not even the decency to stay to the remaining of the term after casting uh, that slur. So I'd like that to stand on the record. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, would you like to sum up? Not really. <laughs> um, thank you, Lord Mayor. It is, it is, it is very, and thank you, Councillor Kerr, for that clarification. I, I 
had connected those dots, and I appreciate that. Um, yeah. It's a great shame how debate in this chamber just just degenerates sometimes, uh -huh. Lord Mayor. Just degenerates. I there was there is nothing in this motion about stopping protests. Um, uh, yes, I made public comments against the um, BLM protest. That was due to the coronavirus um, and nothing else. Um, but there's nothing in here about legal acts of, of civil disobedience. There's nothing here about that at all. This is about what do we do if someone does something silly and is disrupting the lives of ordinary people? That's all. It's not, it's not really political. It's really not. It's really not. It's pragmatic. It's pragmatic is, is what it is. I just want people to go about their lives and not and not disrupt the lives of others, not visit harm upon other people. And for councillors to stand up in this chamber and and openly say that they are happy to throw the rule of law out of the window just goes to show how far off uh, uh, off the cliff they're really jumping. I mean, it's completely absurd. Um, and of course, you've seen juvenile activity from councillors Moran and Martin here who have stormed out, I assume, in an attempt uh, to try and uh, tie some confected disgust uh, to, to their misinterpretation of Councillor Kira's comments. That's what they do. They, they storm out and then they text journalists and say, oh, look, okay, I just thank you. Out. We, are, um, we are summing up no, on the well, motion, it, Deputy it, Lord it's Mayor. Summing up, oh, it, it, look, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let their behaviour sum up for, for themselves. But um, uh, it's, it's a great shame, Lord Mayor, if, if people don't want, as Councillor Kuros said, if people don't want to support the rule of law, then just say that you don't support the rule of law and vote against it. Don't don't drag all these ridiculous things. We're not talking about um, Rosa Parks. We're not talking about Martin Luther King. I mean, goodness sake, you're a councillor in a municipality, in a middle power in Australia. Get a grip of yourself. We just want people to get to, to get to school, to get to the shops, to do what they need to do, and to not be disrupted, to not be disrupted by illegal acts of stupidity. That's all. It's very common sense. And if you don't want to support that, vote against it. But you can answer to the ratepayers at the end of the day, and you can answer to the hundreds of thousands of other people who are disrupted by these activities, which are being encouraged by leaders in the community who incite illegal behaviour. That's a concern, Lord Mayor. Members. To the vote. Those in favour, those against, division. that is carried. Mm. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand until all names have been called. Thanks. Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Canole, and Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, members, I have the next item on the agenda is motions without notice. I have got two motions without notice. Um, so I see your hand up, but I was actually going to do Councillor Abrahams at his first, no, if that's all right, because no, no. that was the first one that I had. Um, so Councillor Abrahams today, your motion without notice is there. Thank you, Lord second Mayor. Vote, Deputy uh, Lord move Mayor. the motion as printed and seek a seconder. We have Deputy Lord Mayor, you seconded. Thank you, DLM. Uh, Lord Mayor, I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, at a time like this, we know that uh, businesses are struggling. Uh, I, uh, um, I, I do know that by having an event such as the AFL Grand Final here in Adelaide, it will uh, uh, deliver a, uh, a, a big boost to, uh, to the economy, but also to our spirits as well, which is uh, well needed. Uh, and it's not just for our precinct and the city of Adelaide, but it is for, uh, for our state. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I'll um, uh, recommend this motion to the Chamber uh, and hope everyone wants for it. Deputy Lord Mayor. South Australia, who would want to go there? I remember someone said that and now it doesn't look like they can have any large gatherings in Victoria. Um, and of course our hearts go out to them for the issues that they're dealing with. Um, uh, but of course, uh, one thing that brings people together across, South Aust uh, across Australia, yeah, indeed, indeed, um, uh, is football. Um, uh, my career was very short lived, I must say, but I do still watch from time to time. Um, uh, and I think this is a fantastic initiative. I think uh, we do have uh, obviously hard border closures still in place with Victoria. Um, 
uh, and restrictions in place from, uh, from New South Wales and elsewhere. But um, I actually think, uh, given Adelaide Oval's capacity is uh, smaller, um, uh, we would actually still see a substantial number of people come uh, from WA and Queensland, and possibly even Northern Territory, to watch this. Um, it would obviously absolutely be a sellout match. There would be people everywhere in the city, within the city of Adelaide. All of our pubs, which have been struggling lately, would be brimming um, with appropriately distanced measures in place, but brimming with as many people as possible. Our restaurants would be full. Our city would really come to life um, uh, in, a, in a way that perhaps hasn't been seen um, definitely in some months and possibly this year at all, notwithstanding the festival season. This is a wonderful idea. We should do whatever we can to help. Members, Councillor Kerr. Uh, look, I'll just briefly commend Councillor Abraham today for this. This is an excellent motion. It's exactly the kind of proactive thing uh, that we as a city, a capital city council, uh, should be doing in conjunction with the state government. Wholeheartedly endorse this great idea. Members, not Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Uh, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Uh, I should just mention, as a Port Adelaide football uh, club fan, um, we, we are number one. Hey, we are number one on the on, on the ladder. So I hope that we can uh, uh, keep that position and go all the way to the uh, to the grand final. Uh, uh, thank you, members, for your uh, comments and uh, calm the power. Um, members, to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. That is carried. Um, there is one further motion without notice that has been received. Um, I hope members can actually read that. If you want to quickly read that out, perhaps. I don't know if that would help. That will assist at this late hour. Um, that council prepares a framework for a cash injection to be provided to small and medium-sized businesses within the City of Adelaide, whereby businesses could apply for a cash injection that is equivalent to 50% of the commercial rates payable for Q2 of the 2020-21 financial year on the property their business occupies. Pursuant to the above, administration produces clear uh, guidelines uh, which an application for which cash rebate may be assessed, including but not limited to size of the business, proof of address, pays you go tax records, business activity statements. Requests that the framework, uh, the number of businesses the cash injection will apply to, the costs and the application form and process come back to council for approval at a special meeting to be held by the end of August at a time determined by the CEO. Sorry, Lord Mayor, but this is a motion without notice that has significant financial implications. I think it should be put on notice for it, the next meeting it, so that all councillors have an opportunity to consider it. it uh, my understanding, and I did actually check that this afternoon, is that it's time sensitive and that it would be brought back uh, to a special meeting for deliberation by the entire council. I think this is very unsatisfactory, Lord Mayor, for this to be put forward as a motion without notice. I'm wondering why Councillor Hyde didn't raise it when Councillor Martin had proposed his motion earlier, and it was, why it has been raised It now was seen as notice. being uh, too far or too different from that particular motion to be accepted as an amendment. Um, so therefore it's been brought through as a council with a motion without notice. Question of clarification for the move, and I'd like to know whether this was sent to any other members of council before this meeting, because this is the first that I've seen of it. It was sent to the Lord Mayor. And any other councillors? Not before the meeting. So it's a surprise to everybody here? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Knock yourselves out. Um, so I did actually take advice, Councillor Sims, um, and the advice was because it came through as an amendment to the rates relief motion that we did earlier. Um, it was seen as being too different from that, so it's accepted as motion without notice so that we could do it within the budget um, period. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, I'm looking for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Ho, if you'd like to speak to it. Yes. Sorry, it's Councillor Sims leaving. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, I was just waiting. Things moving in my periphery is a distraction. But um, uh, this, uh, well, by virtue of uh, why it wasn't accepted as an amendment is because it varies. Um, not necessarily in intent, but in, in the practical operation. 
um, to what was put to the meeting earlier, insofar as it is not a rebate to a property owner or a landlord. Um, uh, it is actually ensuring that money goes to their tenant, goes to their business, the business that employs people, the business that is suffering from a huge downturn um, uh, in their revenue, uh, the business that doesn't you know if they're going to open again when JobKeeper ends, uh, the businesses um, uh, who are suffering because JobKeeper only applies uh, to one of the uh, mother and father that run the business, for example, and doesn't apply to both. Uh, businesses as well, potentially in Chinatown, um, uh, where they might not be, may not be run by permanent residents, don't have any JobKeeper. Um, uh, businesses that employ uh, international students who are doing it tough in this environment with no a substantial federal government support, no Department of Human Services or Centrelink payments um, uh, to help top them up, uh, but their employment's still been pulled from under the rug. This is a measure that assists them in continuing, uh, continuing to operate um, uh, and continuing to bring prosperity to the city. This is this uh, hopefully uh, will present us with a workable way forward that doesn't just line the pockets of landlords in a, in a recession. Hopefully it is a way forward that business can actually benefit from. Not something that's thrown out there as a potential benefit, but something that is an actual tangible benefit. Um, uh, there is a room in this motion for the administration to consider different uh, different classifications for small and medium sizes. Um, I know there are some uh, government departments uh, and agencies that use different measures, whether it's a, an aggregated turnover test uh, or a number of employees test or things like that. Um, I think the administration can look at what the mix of businesses in the city is um, and ensure that it gets it right. Because while we may, while small uh, family businesses are the ones that probably need the most help, I was reminded that um, small and family businesses uh, may not mean that hotels are covered by this, for example. Uh, and hotels are obviously incredibly hard hit um, in the pandemic. So. Uh, this is attempting to put in place a broad principles-based approach, uh, but one that benefits uh, as many businesses as possible. Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak? Yes. Thanks, Lomé. Well, I have been saving my energy for whole night and get ready for this, but it looks like I don't need to, I, I don't need to do the fight and uh, I'll keep it brief. We as a council, we only have limited resource and we could only help the people that really need help. We can't just offer a blank check and give money away to everyone. Over the last two weeks, I have been contacting people from my community. Their business in the city. And I have received literally over 280 people reply to me in writing. One third of them stays in quite clear that they don't need any rate cut, they don't need any rate rebate. All right? They just want the council to, make, to deal with that farm and try to bring more people back to the city that could help them with their business. In terms of, I mean, and, and, and the other 66% the other of the people making the statement that yes, they would like to receive some support from the council, all right? Because some of them, some of them are unable to get any support from JobKeeper. And their employee, for whatever reason, are unable to, unable to get access to, to the job seeker. So what, what we try to say is, what I try to say is the council, we don't know their business. It should, we, should have a, we should have a plan, have something in place, framework for the people who believe they need help to write application to us. And we, we assess those applications and provide support to the, to the right people. If people don't even bother to write application to us, or people don't believe they need help from us, then we don't have to write a blank check and give them the free lunch. Well, look, like I said, I keep it brief. No, 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 need to, no need to do the fight. And I wish my members could support this and uh, really give, I mean, show some support to our ratepayers, especially to our business ratepayers, because only if we can keep them survive,
they are able to employ the people in the city as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to ask a question of the CEO, given it is already the middle of August, whether that is going to give us enough time to bring back uh, what is a reasonable amount of work. Yeah, through the lobby. I was going to make a couple of other comments as well, if I could. Can I just start with, unlike the previous motion on notice, I do have a level of comfort with this, this approach because it is seeking the development of a framework. It is seeking a report back to council for consideration. And within that, we will be able to include the financial implications. But I do have equally the concerns that you've just mentioned about the time frame required to do that good body of work and look to Claire to, to respond to that, that component. Thanks, Claire. Um, I'm actually going on leave next week, so... Um, <laughs> so, it's so, over to you. <laughs> if, we, if we work um, really hard, we might be able to get something together, but um, we'll work through that. Um, I can't really tell, um, looking at it, um, how long it's actually going to take to come up with a framework that's, uh, you know, that provides the principles and the robustness, I think, that I've heard you ask for tonight. I'd need to just get back to council. Um, today, uh, tomorrow, once I've had a yep. chance to chat to the team to see how feasible um, some of this is. So I'd probably just need to talk to the team and get their, their feedback. Just if we've got any hiccups with this, it might have to come in through the September cycle committee and council. So um, uh, given that's two weeks, it, the end of August is in sort of just over two weeks' time. So um, I, I'm just mindful that there's a lot going on at the moment um, in council, and so it's just a matter of whether we could actually turn this, whether admin can turn this around in two weeks. I don't know if I can bury it myself, but can we put in their best endeavours by the end of August? Uh, come back to camp, where? I'm just trying to see what you put in. to be held, uh, come back to council approve a special council meeting. As soon, why don't we just say to be held as soon as possible? Is that? And perhaps we can come back and advise yeah. when that will be. As, yeah, as yeah. soon as you, yeah. 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 Well, and we're in, I mean, when is your, sorry, through you, Lord Mayor, when are the rates? notices going out here. Although I suppose it's not tethered to that, actually. No, no it's not. Oh, um, it's beauty of oh, put together a So, thing. Councillor Hoyle, are you I happy did. to accept Thank that you. variation? Um, members, I would anybody else like to speak? If not, I'm going to go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Lord Mayor, sum up. Uh, I thank members for what I, I hope is their support. Um, it's a pleasure working with such fierce advocates um, uh, for the City of Adelaide. Uh, I, I think I can say with great confidence that this chamber um, here with us uh, work very hard day to day, have been putting in extra long hours throughout the pandemic. Um, uh, and hopefully we're going to see the, the fruits of, of that labour. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, yeah, that is division. carried. Division. Um, no, it just gets recorded as you know. Well, it's because it's unanimous in terms of the members that are here in the meeting. Unless you actually want it to be division, which actually then names each councillor that's here to vote. If that's what you, if that's what you want, we can do that. All right, please, councillor members who vote in favour, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> councillor Abraham today, councillor Ho, councillor Kerr, councillor Kuros, councillor Canole, and deputy Lord Mayor. And members, uh, that brings us to a close at 12.25. Um, thank you for your attendance this evening, and we shall see you on Thursday.